Bel Air is going around the world, and now you're going to... Air is going around the world, and now you're going everybody welcome to the weekend it is 5 11 a.m vegas time and we are here we're here ready to fly some airplanes hello everybody who normally never sees the beginning of stream i'm shocked there's more than two people here right now Maybe VOD Squad is going to make an appearance today? It's possible. Maybe you're already here, I don't know. This is the- this is not a joke. First time I have woken up, intentionally, at or before 5 a.m. Well, I can't remember. I, I- I'd love to just pull a number out and be like, Yeah, it's been over like three years! I don't know. So I, I don't want to lie, but it's it's been long enough that I can't physically even assign a number to it. And I did it to fly airplanes with arbitrary restrictions, such as no changing the time or weather on a flight around the world. But mostly, I did it so that from now on, no one in the entire community can ever accuse me 
of being unable to wake up before noon. I wanted to squish that so hard that it couldn't even come back in any form. Oh, I can't wake up before noon. What about the 5 a.m. stream? Huh? <laughs> That's a checkmate right there. Every single time. Consider it squished. Hey, everybody. I, uh... I slept. I did. But my, my body woke up, like, 45 minutes to an hour before I even wanted to. It was just like, I'm ready to go, dude. I'm ready to fly airplanes. And so we will. I've got, uh, a non-traditional breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's actually pretty good. I know it just looks like scraps now because I was eating it during the intro, but uh, chicken salad sandwich, it's pretty good. Not a normal breakfast, but it's still good. You slept 27 hours, not quite. It was a weird day yesterday. I had to go on the couch to watch so I <laughs> wake up Yul Carps. That's my biggest, like, source of guilt right now, Ace Tech, is... You, you guys didn't have to wake up. You could have just stayed in bed. You know? I wouldn't mind. <laughs> she asked where I was going, and I couldn't stand to tell her I was getting up to watch an e stream. Why wouldn't you brag about that? Okay? You're involved in this personally. Are you telling me, Ace Tech, that you uh, deny the input that you have given to make this project run smoother? Hmm? Not just me, but yourself you deny as well. Hey, Tal, I'm about to go to sleep, but I'm proud you stuck to your word on 5 a.m. stream. Me too. <laughs> Pilots raiding the catering truck. Hi, guys. Uh, it's gonna be a big marathon today. I'm predicting over a 10-hour stream. Um, it's gonna be a lot of flying, obviously, so no rush. Actually, there is a little rush, because uh, if we get in there fast enough, even if we're just in the cockpit, we can see the sunrise in Mexico. But I think it's 7.25, so we got about 10 minutes. I don't know if that's enough time. But we've got a couple of asides planned. Um, there will be in excess of one, maybe two, in-flight meals. So that's gonna be a whole shtick later on. We're gonna do, I'm gonna try and figure out how to do a community flight. So those of you, that's gonna be really later though. So that's not gonna happen early. We're gonna jump into a community flight for at least one leg of this trip. Try to get some people in. What is our meal? You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> Slim Jim and a Bud Light. <laughs> no, it's gonna be an actual asterisk meal. Unfortunately. Oh yeah, this is us. That's me right now. Thank you for beginning of stream subs. Captain Squirrel says, howdy partners. This is a godsend stream for Europeans. Hello, Eastern Hemisphere. And... Alan Jaina. For 11 months. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, but I thank you for subscribing. 22 months and 11. Now we need a 33-monther, a 44, a 55, and we can count all the way to 99. That'd be great. There we are. Mmm. That's the sound I want to hear at 5 o'clock in the morning. Relaxing. Get a nice preview of all the things to come. So yes, today's today's specialty is the in-flight meal. We're gonna have some other uh, specialty flights, including again, I'll remind you guys later in art stream. So there is going to be at least one art showcase during one of the plane streams. So those of you artists out there, I know some of you are already hard at work making some stuff. I don't know. I'll try to give you more details when I know them. Because it's going to be based on one particular leg of the, the trip, and I don't want to spoil stuff, but... Um, I'm thinking it'll be in the next 
I know I said the next month last time. It's pretty much about the same estimate. It really just depends on how far we get. <laughs> That's what's funny about today. We're going to be flying a lot, but we're really not going very far. It's just going to be... Well, you'll see. Hey, everyone. What's up, Gul'dex? Sim wave in the chat. Better be croissants. I, I'm not saying I'm not going to eat a croissant, but I, I would not um, even slightly hype up the same thing that we've already been kind of doing, sort of, on many of these streams. Etal Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. That's true, you are. You're all here for some reason. Wow, this is really early. I miss it. Dana Kano says, E, you friendly streamer, smiley face. Honestly, I am in such a good mood right now. That smiley face is just indicative of how I feel. I thought I was going to be, like, grumpy or grouchy. But the thing is, like, I operate off of sheer force of will alone. That's my gasoline. Like, as soon as I determined I was going to do a 5 a.m. stream, the fulfillment of that goal is, like, the uplifting energy that brightens my day, seeing all of your beautiful smiling faces in the chat. You know what I mean? Syntax Squid, Australia represented. Liuda is here. Sawdust Bunnies. Hello, Casey. What's up, Crumbly Cakes? Evanito. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. Before we go any further, I need a show of hands. Let's do this. Don't show me your hand. I know that's what you're going to do. I should have said that. There they are. Yep, there they are. Hi, Zocker. <laughs> All these peepo chats. All right. I need a show of emojis, okay? If you are in the morning, as in you slept more recently than you've been awake, give me a sunrise in the chat. And if you are at the end of your day, give me a moon. If you've just been awake and you're just catching this towards the end. And I'm curious to see... What side... I'm assuming the morning crew is more heavily weighted. But there's gotta be some psychos out there that just haven't gone to sleep yet, even though it's 520. There's a few moons. Okay, they took a little while to come up. There's a handful now. I would say it's probably like 75-80% weighted in favor of morning. Maybe more. I got a coffee. We got some uh, Guatemala beans. I guess Rip Vegas Nights, but... Got some Huehue Tenango Guatemala beans. Very good. I probably should have made more coffee. In fact, I could do that if I wanted to. I might just make a second coffee in like three hours, okay? I think you'll understand if I need to take an aside to go do that. There's the sun, dude. Look at this. Okay. Go ahead and make sure it's actually live, and we can at least get on the runway. I've already made a flight plan, so we're going to load that in now. I don't remember which one it is, though. Let's just try one and see if it works. Chat, I don't remember. I think it's this one. Nope. Spoilers. Spoilers, chat. Did you know that we're going into South America? Who could have guessed such a thing? Uh, it's gotta be this one, then. But this is how far I'm planning ahead. No, ruined! Yeah, we were just- at first you guys thought we were just gonna dive into, like, the Gulf of Mexico. And just call it a day. Right? Like, well, we went- we tried to go around the world, that's gotta be enough. What about this one? Hey, there it is. Okay, I found it. We're going MMJC to MHTG. That is Mexico City, Mexico. We're gonna spend a few minutes, uh, just flying around, looking at the city. Go low, cause it is a very big city. And there's a lot to look at, and a lot of really cool geography there as well. And then we're heading into Honduras. 
So we're going into, I don't know specifically how to say this, but I've said it, Tonkantin. I know it's not Tonkantin. Tonkantin. It's got to be like Tonkantin. Tonkantin. Tonkantin? How do you say this? Well, why don't we learn? This is a learning stream, right? Because I know how to say Tegucigalpa. Well, the first suggestion is how to pronounce it in Italian, which is not exactly what I'm looking for. All right, this is a pronunciation from a random person. Okay, <laughs> I have no choice but to trust them. Don't contin. Don't contin. Don't contin. Don't contin. Okay, I was pretty close. That sounds right to me. And uh, we're going to be flying in... I can't actually remember the plane that I chose. That's really cool. There was one bad thing, though. I already broke the game. Hold on. <laughs> there was a patch since the last time we played. Uh, it fixed some things and it broke some other things. So this is going to be interesting. Try loading this in again. There we go. So this time it didn't remember the plane that I chose. It remembers the livery. Chat, do you recognize this livery that we're going to be flying with today? Can you see that up close and personal? Let's take a closer look. Yeah. He's bringing it back. The Animal Crossing streamer has returned. We're flying Dodo Airlines today. Uh, they have made a livery skin. Uh, this is from the jumbo pack that I downloaded. And it's beautiful, actually. I like this color blue a lot. Where's Wilbur? <laughs> it's a, it, it's basically the same plane, except this one's not a seaplane variant. Obviously, I don't think this plane is a seaplane. But, you know, it looks similar. To the untrained eye. I'm the new Wilbur. Okay, so we're flying Dodo Airlines. And we're gonna double check flight conditions because that's what I thought was gonna happen. Should just now be sunrise. So let's try and load in so we can kind of see it. I just need to check weight and balance. Um, we're gonna need more fuel. I'm just figuring out if I wanna Get fuel on the run. I think we just start with more fuel. Maybe like 80%. Change. Pilot weight. Let's say there's 25 pounds of rear package. That's like a reasonable amount to take for luggage. Flight conditions look cloudy today. We can get some real weather here. Uh, failure wise, everything should be off. There is one thing I need to do before we go, and that is change difficulty options. Because I had them tweaked all the way down for some testing purposes. Tail number. This is... Uh, day... What what around the world is this? Four or five? Five, I think, right? Call sign Midas. Flight number... Let's just say that it's... um. What flight number is this total? I think it's nine. Chat, nobody knows what day it is. I think it's day five, flight one. How many flights have we done? One, two, three, four, five. No, it's only day four. We've only done this four days. I feel like we've been doing it forever. All right, day four, flight one, flight one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this is only flight eight. All right, we're good to go, but first... Oh, yeah, I said difficulty. Options. Assistance. Oh, pet the people. Take off. Auto rudder off. Yoke off. Assisted checklist off. Okay, I just need to make sure this is all back to normal. Gyro drift auto calibration is the one thing that I still have no idea what to do. So I leave that one on assist. Taxi ribbon on is fine. 
So we're going to turn POI and city markers and leaf fauna markers on. I think that's the only one. Notifications all off. User experience, I think, is the same. Okay. Oh, they did add some new ATC voices. That's going to be interesting, among other things. I think that's good. Apply and save, and let's go ahead and load in. Double, triple check, because it likes to reset the weather time. I guess the only thing I need to do is change our parking. So are we going to be flying uh, VFR? I guess we are, because I'm going to go fly around Mexico City. Yeah, we'll just fly VFR. Let's not get let's not get overly complicated. So we're flying the Dar Dahir? Dahir? The Dar TBM 930. This plane is pretty fast and pretty strong. It's probably the most I think it's the most used plane in the entire game, and we have not flown it yet. So that's kind of cool. Cruise speed of 330 knots, true airspeed. It is a fast turboprop, can go really high, 31,000 feet. Uh, five hour endurance as well. Let's load in and uh, see the sunrise in Mexico City. It's already up. I think the sun is just barely up. So for me, it's 5.30 a.m. In Mexico City, it's 7.30 a.m. So <laughs> the sun hasn't even risen here. I'm gonna see my video game sunrise. Like some people wake up for photography purposes, they get the camera out and they go, oh, it's gonna be beautiful today. I'm gonna get to see the sun come up behind the clouds over the mountains. Me, a gamer, doesn't go see the Las Vegas desert sunrise over, you know, the canyons and the mountains here. I get up to see it in virtual reality in a video game in a different country. That makes total sense, come on. Real gamer hours here. Oh, it is foggy. Is it? Oh, no, we're good. It's still a little cloudy. Here we are. My friend who's trained to be a pilot has no interest in this game because she already knows how to do this. I feel like that would make them more interested. If you already know how to do it, then you get to do it from the comfort of your own home. That seems like a, a pro, not a con. Sleepy Mad Lads. Hello, Mostly Moisten. Elizabeth, the Dork Cube is here. Dandy Kitten, welcome. Hello, Cucumber Pickle. Ben Elnor. It's good to see all your beautiful faces. Antagonist with 500 bits says, Twitch gave me free bits because he screwed up when I renewed my sub, so I'm sending it your way. Were you the person? I actually got an email about that. It was like an apology from Twitch. It was like, sorry, we screwed up a sub. My bad. I think it was like they were going to cover it anyways or something, but it, it was, it was, I've never got an email like that before. Maybe it was you, antagonist. From Daddy Jeff himself. But I appreciate it. Sorry it got messed up. I don't know how it happened. What's for breakfast, chat? Um, I'm eating the the remainder. Actually, I may as well just finish it now. Like, there's two bites left. You guys want these? Two? Do you want the crust? A little chicken salad sandwich and some coffee for me. Who? What? I just came back. Antagonist. We were talking about you for the last 30 minutes. You weren't even here for any of it? Right, chat? And we said only nice things. Well, good morning, James W. and everybody else. Just people arriving. All right, I said two bites, I meant three. <laughs> I was talking shit, says Leota. How do I remove a VIP badge? Syntax Squid, do you have any advice on that? Okay. We're here. We're in a new airplane. And uh, we're here in Mexico City. And we're going to... <sighs> Chad, it's going to be about a 12-hour stream, I'm guessing. The first flight is pretty normal, by all accounts, as you can see from the flight plan. Um, but what comes next is something else entirely. 
So let's just enjoy our normal flight, and then it goes off the rails. However, I'm really excited to fly this plane. So even though it's a normal flight, I'm really looking forward to seeing why this is like the num this is the number one. They released like a like a visual, like a post launch stat page. And this was by far I don't know can anybody find that? Why do I ask chat to do something when you could just do it yourself? Faster and more efficient and better. <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator post-launch stats graphic. That's got to come up with it, right? Actually, no. That did not come up with it. Uh, I think they released it in a blog, or they tweeted it, or something. Dude, chat, if you can find this, I will do absolutely nothing for you. You know what I mean? So, like, big stakes here. Now... Let's make sure this works. Okay, it does, and it's time. Uh, you know what I love more than anything? It's getting up at 3.30 in the morning, taking a shower, uh, getting all dressed for work, and then ruining my hair immediately with uh, a headband because it has taken the place of a hat in order to allow me to look with the power of technology around the cockpit of a virtual airplane. For the rest of the entire day, I'm screwed up now. Side note, uh, here's the application I'm looking for. Sorry for disorienting you, but I think we're good to go now. I'm only missing one thing, close and open DX Tori. The legend is true. Italics is now an EU streamer. I am. I've come to join your ranks. I'm not usually up this early. Hey, me neither, Vakiadia. Hi, Sajoko, what's up? Uh, oh, did he? Oh, yeah. I gotta add, like, where we're flying, huh? That's a good idea. Okay, Mexico City to Tegucigalpa. I will add that to the title. Kyra Toby is here in spirit. And thus, the flight plan command can only be edited by Grugenvids. No pressure, Grugenvids. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to edit it either. <laughs> so, if you can't, that's totally fine, because I don't even know the command. Anyway, how long is this leg? This flight is not going to be very long at all. This is going to be normally an hour and a half, and we're going to make it longer because I'm going to fly around Mexico City and just kind of go low and check out the sites in the area. Uh, to, this Mexico City is a massive place, as we saw on the way in, and as we learned while we were flying into it. Absolutely huge. I think it's the fourth biggest city in the world. It's got close to like 10 million residents or something like that. It's got like 8 million or something insane. Giant place. So, this is... Oh, dude, this is the most flown plane. Look at this checklist. This is like one of two planes in the game that's got this many pages for a checklist. So half of this stuff's going to be redundant for us, but let's get started. Exterior lights off. Okay, interior lights off. Got both of those. This is just inside inspection. I don't even know what a... I'm going to have to click eyeball on most of this stuff because I just don't know where it is. Why did Twitch just reconnect me to the chat? Twitch, you good, dude. This is a crash lever. Chat, do you just throw this lever if you're bored or something? Like, you just up, flying for two and a half hours. You want a little excitement in your life. You want things to get a little spicy, so you just throw the crash bar down. And then it's just like, what, what happens? Is this the, like, just crash the airplane bar? Okay. Well, it's down. <laughs> Starter off. I'm assuming the start is off, considering I don't hear anything. Hello, Ready Freddy. Dude, plane pogs already online? It's a good sign. Hey, found the parking brake. Uh, what else are we looking for? The starter... Some of this stuff has got to be... Ooh, we got a select. Fuel tank selector. Interesting. Throttle cut. There's the trim. 
All right, the starter, if I had to just take a guess based on where everything is located. I see pressurization, landing gear, ice systems. It's got to be like top. It's not. Where is the starter? Oh, I was literally just looking at it and I didn't even realize. By the way, I do have plain cam as normal. There just wasn't really a need for it as of yet. However, before that, I am going to uh, blow my nose because allergies hopefully will not annoy me today. But we're off to an interesting start. One sec. The camera's going crazy. Dude, I've gotten really good at, like, left-handed trash can uh, basketball shots. You know what I'm saying? That's another swoosh. Okay. That should buy me some time. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have already taken my allergy medicine. There's not much else I can do. It did smell like smoke outside. So that's probably why. So, you know, if somebody could just, I don't know, hit the switch and turn off wildfires, that would be pretty cool. I think a lot of people would like that. That would not be a controversial decision. How big is your trash can? Not that big. I would say like... <laughs> like that big? <laughs> is that a good visual? Alright, uh, starters up here. Sure. Turn... Well, we want it to be off. Yeah. Ignition on auto. It is. Ox boost pump off. Correct. Fuel selector should be set to manual. I believe it is it's on the bottom. AP trim, I think that's off. DI system, all off. 100% because I just looked at it. Inert separator. Inertial separator. I have no idea what that is. Well, we're going to be learning a lot today. Parking brake is absolutely on. Landing gear lever. Okay, is down. Bleed should be off. That should be... Remember I just said I saw bleed? Okay, off. Throttles on the cutoff, which is here. Chat, did I just shift gears? What is this? This is low idle? How do I get it back over to that side without... I don't know. Open left and right. Uh, this is just selector. That doesn't necessarily open them. Open and L or right. Well, this is off. Oh, that closes. Okay, so that should be open. I don't know if it's better to do... Left or right first, next page, before starting the engine. Now we want the crash lever up. Source should be battery. Set the electric current source to battery or ground power unit if you're connected to one. So it should be battery right now. Get the battery online. Uh, I'm going to guess that's also up here above me. Taxi lights. Okay, good to know where that is. Panel lights. Going to be using those in a moment. Generators. So many buttons, dude. I love it. And they all, a lot of them seem to work. Okay, AP off, trim on. Is, the autopi is that autopilot in this circumstance? I can't look at chat, so I'm asking rhetorical questions. So, hold on. Okay, that's not... I don't think there's a battery button over there. 
All right, it's my first time flying. Let's just find out where it is. It is up there. It's right there. Oh, the big source one. Gotcha. Okay. I looked right past it. Let there be audio and video now. Look at me. No. Ding, ding, ding. So now generator should be set to main. Okay. De-ice system light test. Hmm. These are lights, but not ice related. And this is ice. Oh, there we go. Turn on or off ice lights. Hang on. So how, what does this actually look like? Chad, what, is, what do de-ice lights look like? Is that this? Or is that totally unrelated? How do you even see that? Who's on right now? Who's this? What are you doing here? Chad, is this you? You can't even see over the dash. <laughs> oh, I think they can't figure out how to go. <laughs> they keep moving up like one inch and then like turning on and off their lights. See, that's like me. I'm just pushing all these different buttons trying to figure out how to get uh, everything going the way it's supposed to. So it's good to know that the AI is learning just as much as I am right now. They're just trying to reach the gas pedal. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, the DI system lights are on for I don't know how to double, triple check. Landing gear lights check. Okay, that's them. Fuel on board. Yo, uh, that's a good thing to learn. How do you tell if I've got gas? I assume the screen, it looks like fuel is at 80%, correct? Yep. Okay, engine start. Now, this is the hard part. Motoring, if residual internal turbine temperature is above 150 C. I don't know what that means. Okay, so it's like if you had the engine on recently and the engine's already hot. So this is a cold start and this is a hot start. I think. So we can skip this? Ignition auto. Okay. Is this, does this help you guys? Can you guys see better like this when I turn the headlamp on? I guess we have battery now. I could just turn the internal lights on, huh? All right, well, internal lights would look like... There you go. Now you can see a little better. Okay. Ignition on auto. Already is. Correct. Aux boost pump on. I can hear it. Propeller area clear. It's kind of not, though. All right, forget the boost pump for now. Let's actually just talk to ATC and go ahead and get pushback uh, before this becomes a thing. We're going to, I guess, announce taxi because we're not going to have to get permission because we're just Julia, flying Charlie VFR. Traffic minus eight is taxiing to runway four. Okay, I need ground. Actually, can the grounds crew even help me right now? Runway, do I want runway 4 or runway 22? I don't know which way the wind is currently going, so I can't make an educated, um... How do you tune to, like, the wind thing? Because I know 4 will be kind of northeast and 22 will be southwest. So, I think let's just go northeast.
Okay. Uh, I could just do shift... Is it shift P to, like, hotkey these people? There he goes. He woke up. He's like, that is my keybind function. I just got an alert that someone somewhere requested pushback. Even though I was facing the other way, I can tell. Okay, we're going to release the parking brake. So that he can actually push. He's going to push us back into the grass. But that's fine. <laughs> How did, um, people clap? Oh, I see. Grugan, I think you're like one step away from succeeding. Excuse me. I and then I says to him, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> hey, hang on, how come I can hear myself now? I have a very intimate relationship with uh, the grounds crew here. They just like to check in on me and make sure that I'm doing all right. Look how cool he is. Yeah, we're gonna have to go out and to the right, so just push me onto the grass. Actually, we have a little bit of uh, concrete behind us. This is good. Okay. So, tell him that's enough. And then, once he is clear of the propeller area, we can go ahead and do the starter. I need to turn the boost pump back on. Okay, boost pump is on. Starter on two seconds. Do I have to hold it? So we're looking for set low idle when NG is 13%. I don't know where NG is on this. Okay, it's 22%. Uh, I, they were supposed to have the propeller area clear. There was no reason for any more grounds crew personnel to be approaching the craft during startup at... Really just like to live life on the edge, huh? I have a dash cam for insurance fraud, okay? Take a look up here. It's been recording the whole time. I'm not giving you a dime. All right, low idle on ITT max 870 for 20 seconds. Okay, there's the internal turbine temperature way above 800 and... Is that because I have the fuel booster still on chat? <laughs> Uh, we're going up to a 1,200 degrees <laughs> Celsius. All right, what did I do? Uh, what, what did I leave on? Okay, you can't pause. Just solve the problem. Solve it. Is it the starter? Why are we at 1,400 degrees Celsius? Is it the... Okay, it's starting to go down now. <laughs> Nuclear core meltdown. Maybe it's because, like, the turbine's working, but it wasn't actually applying itself to spin the, the rotor, and now it is. Because I, I throttled up. By the way, can you guys see feet cam? Yeah, you can. Okay. We're good, chat. We're, we brought it back down under 750. <gasps> My parking brake wasn't on! It is now. Okay, it's fine. We got it, chat. I got it. Parking brake is definitely on now. We're doing fantastic on this first flight today. I just want to... Okay, she just emerged from the propeller. <sighs> NG, 30% before 30 seconds? What, did the, what does the rest of this say? 50% before one minute. Okay, so it's at 72% right now. Oil pressure and temperature, check. Well, that's back to normal. In the green. Well, we're having some difficulties here. Okay. Automatic starter off when NG is 52%. Ah. It was at the bottom of the list. So, do I just leave it... How do I go to off? Do I turn off ignition? Let me just click this. You stole the camera, but you didn't show me anything. 
Okay, yeah, I see I see that. That's not what I'm looking for. Thank you, game. I'm looking for which Chad, is it the ignition or the starter? It's got to be the starter, but it's already not on. Yeah, it's off, not abort. Okay. After engine start, throttle low idle to flight idle. Check oil pressure, aux boost. Pump should be set to automatic. Okay. Fuel selectors should be on auto. Oh, I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Fuel selector shift button should be tested. This is shift fuel tank selected. I don't know what to look for in this. I'll do, let's just get going and then Chad can tell me how I screwed up later. Turn on oxygens. Hmm, turn on passenger oxygen. Okay, so turn on oxygen for me, leave yours off, got it. Um, AP trims should be on. Generator main. <laughs> uh, I saw generator up here. This is going to take a few flights before I really understand what's going on in this, and that's fine. We don't have to know everything that's going on on literally the first flight, you know? It's all good. Set no, set standby. It should be on main. Bleed should be on auto or max differential. Oh, hold on. I'm like, I need to reset my camera. Bleed should be on auto or max differential. Wasn't bleed down below? I'm just gonna go auto because that's the first one that it suggests. Okay, before taxi. I don't know what inertial separator is. It just needs to be on. Check your flight controls. Basically just push, pull, turn left and right. Flaps up. Okay. Throttle feather twice. Switch throttle to low idle, then back to flight idle twice. So this is flight idle, and that's low idle, right? Taxi lights should be on. Okay, I can do this. Taxi lights are up. I assume your pulse, or your, which one, pulse or strobe? Or all? Okay, before your lineup, now I think we can taxi. We can taxi and then check this stuff when we get to where we're supposed to be taxiing to. Is Midas confused by the early stream? Probably. Uh, he got some food already, so he's probably just confused because his eating schedule's off, but he was pretty happy to sleep. He didn't seem to, to mind too much. Good morning, everyone. What's up, Death and Cremation? This is a more complex startup process than most of the other planes that we fly so there's quite a lot to uh to figure out here so thanks for being patient with me chat because i've literally this is part of the thing though 30 planes around the world we'll be flying this again and each time we fly we'll know a little bit more about it so gotta start somewhere and i think that's the main thing is you don't have to know <laughs> she's really living life on the edge you don't have to know everything to still have fun you can kind of like Pick up a bunch of stuff as you go. So let's just see why we're blinking here. Parking brake. Inertial sep on, but I thought it told me to do that. It might tell me to turn it off. Aural warning, okay. Okay, I know what's going on. Ignition, I'm not sure what it wants me to do about it. Pito, no heat left right, is... that so parking brake is just gonna be a thing ignition though I think it's still relevant <laughs> uh, 
I have become death, destroyer of turbines. She just needs a little more excitement to feel. You know? This is one of my favorite planes. Is it epic? This I've never flown it before, so this is going to be interesting. We're going to go ahead and parking brake off. And uh, I guess we got to taxi through this guy. I could just choose the, the other... Um, the other runway. But I don't I don't think it's gonna taxi me any different way anyway. So we're facing currently four. Cal Air is going around the world. And now you're going to. So we'll just stay on four. Uh announce taxi. Mike Mike Julia, Charlie traffic minus eight is taxiing to runway four. Okay, we have to do one of two bad things. Either we're going to go on the runway to taxi. Or we've got to go uh, off-roading here because this plane has been unable to pathfind the entire time. I guess we'll just go around. <laughs> <laughs> Having some difficulties, I see. Maybe you were waiting for me? I don't know, but uh, don't worry. We got this. All right, I freed up the tiny little drive. This is... As a premium member, you are highly valued and will be used as a flotation device in the event of an emergency water landing. So this is not obviously the normal Mexico City airport. This is one of the regional airports. And it was a pretty fun one to land in. I assume it'll be the same to take off as well. You know what? It feels great starting at 5.30 or whatever we're starting at. It's almost 6 now, I know, but... It's just nice to know that we got the whole day ahead of us on a big adventure chat. We got all the time in the world. See, this would be a really cool place to take off from right here. Let's just swing around. And then do a little U-turn at the end. And we are going to announce that we're going to be departing from the north, basically. Mike, Mike, Julia, Charlie, traffic minus eight, taking off runway for north departure. Okay, so we got like a few things to do on this checklist. Like, quite a few. I'm just going to try and like, hit the brakes. Make a really tight turn. And, uh... I don't know if you would normally line up. It's kind of got the yellow line pointing in a roundabout way right here. We don't need that much space to take off, but I'm just going to go ahead and park, like, right here. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and minimize this. Parking brake on. Good idea. Landing lights, nav lights, and strobe lights on. I don't know if Pulse is supposed to be on right now, or you wait until you get up in the air for this. Maybe it'll tell me. I'll just do the ones it tells me to do right now. Ignition, auto or on, as required. I don't know why you would do one over the other. Auto sounds better. Fuel pump's already on auto. Fuel selector on auto. Check. D-Ice as required, Pito currently on, already did. Inert Sep is on, and that's one of the things it doesn't like. Trims and flaps, go ahead and fix those. In fact, we're going to get flaps to take off right now. I don't know how to do trims to take off position. I've never, um, never done that before. Bleed, I believe, is already on automatic. Wait, bleed is right there. Okay, check. Altimeter setting, double check. 30.05. We're actually like two kilometers above sea level. Mexico City is insane. It's built into the mountains. When we were on the way in here, it was like we were fighting and climbing uh, the entire way, it felt like. Where are we flying to? We're going to Tegucigalpa, Honduras. 
Uh, I also updated the title. Hello, Mostly Lost. Alt selector, set your altitude and squawk code, which is the game takes care of that. Okay, app before takeoff, prop RPM should be in the green. This is just for takeoff. Okay, prop RPM, we're just gonna max it. Uh, we got, there's a turbo prop, so your fuel mix doesn't matter, but we're gonna leave it on full rich, just to have this slider up there. And we've already fixed our flaps. Brakes released, torque at 100%. Rotation speed, pitch up 10 degrees, okay? So 10 degrees will be, like this is five degrees um, below. Yeah, so we need to go just 10 degrees up. You'll see it. Positive vertical speed. So basically when you're accelerating and going up, that's when you take your landing gear. And then when you're going above 115 knots, that's when your flaps can come up. Okay, I really like that these are here because these are things I struggle with. So 10 degrees is what we're aiming for. When you're going faster and up, then your landing gear can come up and then flaps up at 115. Okay, let's see if we can remember that. And then after takeoff, you just check some stuff and we'll go from there. Okay, we are, I believe, ready to go, chat. For the first flight of the day. The beeping will stop after the brakes are off. Yo, hello, hi, little bee. Take a look around. It is a cloudy day, but you can see the sun is back there somewhere. Very overcast in Mexico City. Uh, good morning, everyone. It is 8.04 a.m. as we are preparing for takeoff here on Dodo Airlines, heading for Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Uh, the weather today, let's take a look. Obviously, you can see that it's overcast. But besides that, it is 57 degrees right now, Fahrenheit in Mexico City. Expectation of rain today, and in fact, for the next seven straight days, we have uh, showers and thunderstorms predicted for this region, especially as we go closer to Honduras. Um, looks like... I don't know why it's still showing me Saturday weather. Oh, it is Saturday. <laughs> I thought today was Sunday for a second. What day is it, Chad? I'm not used to waking up at 5 a.m. Uh, I've lost all track of time. Okay. I knew it was Saturday because that's what I've been saying, but I just, like, forgot it all of a sudden. Normally, I'm still awake right now. You have to remember, Chad, I, I was only awake for eight hours yesterday. I, I deleted an entire day from my timeline and schedule. But yes... It is also expecting rain and clouds in Honduras today. Humidity of 97% in Honduras, where we are approaching. And um, precipitation, not that high, 10%, so mostly just cloudy. Looks good. Okay. I made it. Hi, Kairotobi, you did, yeah. We had a longer than expected setup time because this plane is extremely detailed. It looks very comfortable back there for you all. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn cabin lights down. I don't know what uh, dimming is for. Probably for flying at night, but I think we're good to go. Take a deep breath, everybody. Remember, flaps, fuel mix, landing gear, and we're ready to party. Your seatbelts are buckled and in the upright position back there, chat, because we are doing baby's first ever takeoff in new airplane. And this runway isn't the longest. We're at about 60 knots right now already. Weaving a little bit right and left. 75, 80. Let's go ahead. Eagle Air is going around the world. And now you're going to. This runway's not as long as I thought it was. But we are absolutely going to clear those trees. We'll go ahead and get the landing gear up. Trying to maintain the 10 degrees uh, incline that it mentioned. And then it said once we're at 115 knots, we can fix the, um, the flaps. Okay, so we're at about 115. Etal Air is going around the world. Now you're going to... 
Okay, flaps are up. Landing gear is up. We're just gonna take a look around now, chat. Welcome to Mexico City. What is that beeping? Turbine temperature. Maybe we're just running the engines a little hot. Okay. Turn that down a little bit. Big city! As we were talking about kind of at the beginning of the stream, there's, I think, feel free to get more specific, but I was reading that there's like 8 million people in Mexico City. It's the fourth largest city in the world. And also one of the most ancient, especially for the Americas as well. This is the former capital of the Aztec Empire. <laughs> um, right, Tenochtitlan. And also features some of the oldest buildings. I believe it is the home of the only royal castle in the Americas, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to remember, I don't remember exactly what it's called. But, uh, they had Mexican royalty that lived here. It's also, um, I'm trying to remember some of the other little things that I was reading about it. Because there's just, there's so much history here. It's built on top of, like, a bunch of archaeological sites. They, they dig out subways and they accidentally stumble upon ancient ruins. <laughs> it's just crazy to think about, you know what I mean? Like, Aztec ruins are just here. Choo-choo, sorry, uh, I gotta get to work. Bro, I came for the plane, stayed for the history lesson. We'll look up some more stuff once we get on autopilot. I kinda just want to, uh, to fly around. I'm just gonna open up the VFR map and kinda zoom out. Cause I wanna make sure that we're gonna be, yeah, we're gonna be covering quite a bit of the city. So I'm just gonna kinda stay on this direction. Like a little bit southeast slow down and then fly low because that's the kind of before we get on our flight I kind of just want to fly around the city and check it out it's got some interesting architecture and the sprawl is just insane the Aztecs had a really good Civ game still going strong this is like downtown <laughs> also yeah <laughs> I want to play as the Aztecs and Crusader Kings that would be fun so since we're on like a nose down I'm gonna be throttling down as well to get a little bit lower we're at about Chat, we climbed to 10,000 feet so fast. Uh, the city itself is, is over two kilometers above sea level anyway, so it's already really high up there. This plane seems nice. Yeah, the plane seems really nice. It's got some power, it's got speed. Um, easy to fly so far. It's not really fighting me in terms of trim. Like, I'm hands off. I haven't even touched trim. And I'm just tilting a little bit to the right, so it's, it's fairly gentle, it feels like. Uh, I believe Mexico City, I don't know, I couldn't tell you where it is on a map, so I'm not trying to pretend to be an expert here, but I believe it has uh, one of, if not the largest square in the entire world, okay? That's right, one of our mods lives there, the biggest square in the entire world, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, mods. You didn't believe, you didn't deserve that, but, uh... <laughs> I had to do it to you anyway. <laughs> no, like the largest city square. <laughs> then they built it on top of like where it was central to the Aztecs as well. I believe in like 1850s. Yeah, this is the downtown area. In the 1850s, they had like a competition, the Mexican president, or whatever the leader's title was, had a competition and the winner was going to get to design, like, a monument to Mexican independence. They ended up only building, like, the foundation of it. And then never building anything else. So they ended up just naming the entire square after the foundation of their monument, I guess. What's, what's the chat? What's the name of it? It's just, it's just the word. It's not like a, a proper, it's not like a pronoun. Somebody just look up what, like, the Mexican square name is called. For Mexico City. I'm pretty sure it's just, like, a regular word. But it's, like, the largest in the entire world. 
Oh no, I still got like taxi, taxi waypoints still here for some reason. <laughs> Google search for big Mexican square. Zacalo, yes, Zacalo. And translated, that means What? It's just like a regular word, but we don't use it very frequently. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on. I got to pause anyway, because I got to turn this off or it's going to be on for the entire flight. It just means plinth. P-L-I-N-T-H. A heavy base supporting a statue or vase, because they were going to build this, like, magnificent statue. Um, here we go. It's been a gathering place for Mexicans since Aztec times, having been the, the place of ceremonies, swearing in of viceroys, royal pro proclamations, and military parades. It is 57,000 meters squared. Since I'm already paused and I already am looking it up, this is what it looks like in panorama. It big. So, uh... <laughs> they also have one of the largest, I think, um, parks in the Americas around here. Big square. Alright, did I turn off or no? Let's turn Navade and... Uh, where's Taxi Ribbon? Off. There we go. Okay, now we don't have to look at that anymore. How do I zoom out on this guy? Probably one of these buttons down here. I have no idea. Alex, it's too early. It's never too early to fly airplanes. So this looks like a major thoroughfare of some kind. It looks like a train yard, actually. Yeah, that's definitely a train yard that runs the entire stretch. Around downtown. I saw that uh, people are already making mods. I don't know how this is gonna work, but they're making mods for different points of interest in different cities. Like I saw, the one I saw yesterday was like a Sydney pack. Now some of them are gonna be for sale, and I'm sure that they'll be a little bit more expensive. I think it really depends on where they're getting their assets from. Some of them are just grabbing them off of Google and then pasting, <laughs> Pasting a Google Maps building in and then releasing that as a mod. The problem is they're so high poly and high res that if you fly around them, you end up draining all your frames, basically. Uh, but some of them are making custom assets, and I think those are going to go on sale. So if you have a particular city that you like to fly around, then they're going to do... Um, just keep your eyes peeled, because they're doing like a whole big overhaul pack for a lot of these. Isn't there a volcano right here, chat? One of these mountains is like a volcano, right? I mean, it's the former home of the Aztecs. There's got to be like 17 volcanoes right here. That flag is truly gigantic IRL. The one from the, uh, the photo? Oh yeah, I don't doubt that for a second. Dude, I think that's a thing. Chat, somebody in chat tell me what that is. I saw a picture of it. That's like that that round uh, teal building. What is that? Don't mind me. Just uh, gonna correct it. Isn't that a, a point of significance in the city? Somebody has to be from Mexico City around here. I know it's the morning there. I think Smart Chat doesn't come online for another couple hours. That's okay. We can wait for them. Hey, Talix, didn't know you were in the flight sims. Well, I am now. Well, I'm glad you like the setup. This is actually my first flight sim. And also, uh, welcome to our journey around the world. You could probably honestly just look up Mexico City Big Round Blue Building. <laughs> and it would come up. Hey, 
Ace Tech, why are you just saying hey in my chat? Oh, did you say because smart chat's not coming online for a minute? Ecal Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. That's true, you are going to. Once we get autopilot and stuff set up, I'll take a look at subs, but I thank you guys for the early morning support. But hey, Ace Tech, how are you? Hey, Papagar. Striker City Mafia. Hey. Oh. Hey, Roof. Tux, do you log your different flight path on a world map? I do, actually. Thank you for asking, Stealth Knife, who's definitely not a plant in the audience. If you guys do exclamation plane, we have two fantastic resources for you, uh, which may take some time to get updated. However, there are uh, multiple options to select. We've got the plane log, which is going to show you not only um, every plane that we've used so far with a screenshot and a clip of both takeoff and landing, if you'd like to see the flights that we've already done. Some of them are more exciting than others. Some of them are more exciting than you think they would be. But also where they were flying to and from. And then we've got the Google Earth flight log as well, which will show you just kind of on a map. We started in Vegas, uh, where I currently live, and are in our on our way now down, we went through Texas, obviously we went through Arizona and New Mexico first, and we actually flew over California a little bit, but hit up San Antonio and Texas, and then down across Mexico to what we learned last time was Mexican Alcatraz. <laughs> And I didn't know that when I selected it as a location. I was like, wow, these islands sure are really cool down here. The Isla Maria Madre, right? Did I, did I remember the name or no? And then I took chat to Jeff Jail, left them there, and we went to Guadalajara. And then from Guadalajara to Mexico City, and that's where we ended last time. And now we just took off from Mexico City, enjoyed a little flyby, gonna get on the flight path now and head on our way to Honduras, going to Tegucigalpa, which is a really cool airport. I'm really looking forward to landing there. Um, it's actually one of the challenge landings in the game for the A320. So passenger jets in particular have difficulty landing here. So for us, since we're in a turboprop, it's not gonna be that hard because you know, we have a lot more maneuverability than a large passenger airliner, right? So I'm gonna fly high because I really don't know... We're not gonna be able to see too much anyways. And, um... We may as well gain some speed if it's gonna be extremely cloudy like this. That's an actual flight that was probably in the air a little earlier. SLI-152 if you guys wanna look it up. You just type that in, it should come up with the flight. What's up, Dormuth? Yeah, real overcast conditions. It looks like the, uh, Central America in general, where we are on our way to and through, is going to be encountering a lot of, you know, potentially nasty conditions over the next week. Looks like a lot of thunderstorms going on. I don't know what's going on with the weather. Are there any more, like, hurricanes or tropical storms coming, or is it just, just really nasty weather for some reason? Because a couple of these places, chat, have thunderstorms queued up for an entire week. Place with tropical seas and storms. What? Are you serious? Once you get above all that, there are some really pretty views. Okay, I need to figure out how to zoom out my, uh... my map on the center screen. I'm sure it's one of these buttons. I'll just try and fix trim. For now, in the meantime, do it the old-fashioned way, and then I'll figure out autopilot. New plane autopilot's gonna be its own interesting thing. We got some nice sights, though. Cool cloud formations, you know? As we get higher and higher up here. So what I'm doing as I fly through these clouds, luckily this, um, this plane and others like it have a lot of fantastic instruments. So I can really just kind of watch this, trying, you know, not to ascend past about the 10 degrees that we just kind of clipped past. Trying not to go too much higher than that, staying between 5 and 10. The wind conditions are a little choppier than they used to be, kind of taking manual control. They added an update in a recent patch 
that changes the frame rate um, so you can do a variable whatever you decide frame rate for your screens and stuff so this is not updating as fast as it was you could probably see it's a little slower but it also since it doesn't update or refresh as fast you can get a couple more frames per second out of it so I think we're getting at least two to four FPS just by lowering the refresh rate of these screens and monitors because there are three of them and you can turn that even lower than this maybe get a couple more frames as well so a little bit more customization there and in general um, I did notice a frame rate increase from I think I, I, I talked about on the discord a little bit but I, I, would, I don't know what percentage it was I would say like 25% better frames in cockpit maybe 20 at least 20% I would say for sure so pretty good It, it also varies based on the plane as well. Like, it was a little bit more noticeable. I went into the cockpit of one of the passenger planes, which were notoriously slow, and they still aren't super brisk. Like, I think I still get, like, uh, my, my testing ground was the A320 cockpit outside of Heathrow, and I was getting, like, 23, 24 FPS, <laughs> you know, like, three weeks ago, and now I'm getting 30 FPS. So, like, seven to eight more frames. Which doesn't sound like much, but the difference between 23 FPS and 31 FPS is a pretty big chasm, you know? Like, that's not insignificant. If you, like, as long as I can get to 30 frames per second, then I'm doing fine. And also, of course, keep in mind I'm being very greedy. I have most of my settings on high and ultra. So, I could crank those down to medium or low. And I could also change my resolution scaling, and that would give me some frames too. So, I, I'm being very greedy here. Double X, my lord. People arrive and everybody else that just hopped in. Uh, we're just doing like a controlled climb right now. We're only at about five degrees, going about a thousand feet. Actually, we're going like two thousand feet per minute. So it's a pretty fast climb, I guess. But we're the only person on board, so I think it. I think it's all right. Just lowered that down to about fifteen hundred feet per minute. Hello, Italics and chat. Good morning, Sax. As we climb above the clouds, we got like a nice little split in between these two giant ones right here. I mean, we can do some maneuvers, chat. I'm the only guy on board this plane. We can go wherever we want to go. Within reason. I just got to figure out um, how to zoom out my central screen here a little bit. I don't know how to do it. It's probably like, if I had to guess, it'd be one of these buttons up here or one of these buttons down here. Hey, if I had to guess, I think it would be a button. What do you guys think? Does anybody know how to change the zoom? Maybe check the flight checklist. You'll get a bit more power. Uh, I will once I get ready to get on autopilot. For now, I'm happy. I'm not really in the mood for... I don't need to go max speed yet. Nice view. It is Constipated Llama. The game is gorgeous. We're just coasting above the clouds. It's the knob on the bottom right of the bottom screen. The bottom right... Okay. Gotcha. Did you just lie? Maybe you're talking about a different one. Need to be on PFD mode. Okay, hold on. I got some bad trim right now. And we're just Newman off course. The plane sounds like I am mowing my lawn. Rugenviz, that's one thing I have really enjoyed about um, Vegas. No need for silly things like mowing lawns. Alright, let me hide this real quick. Let's make sure that, uh, do we want to be on Nav 1 anyways? Probably. So we got angle of attack, wind, comm channels. So let's go to PFD. God, it really wants to go right, huh? Okay, let's just chill out for a second. Forget about the zoom, who cares? Let's, let's fix our, our plane before we fix our screen, shall we? This is a cool approach, though. 
I feel like I'm cutting through the clouds intentionally. And there's the sun. I was wondering where you are. All right, 25,000 feet's about where I want to kind of level out. And we're basically there. So why don't we just hang tight right there? The wind is changing direction up here and kind of causing a little bit of disruption until we get autopilot set. Right above the clouds. Like little puffy marshmallows. Okay, fix and trim. Do a nose down. Nose down. Nose up. Nose up a little. Okay. That looks pretty good. Little trim right. This feels kind of surreal, seeing the cloud, like the top layer of clouds come in like this. We're so close to just being right on top of them. A little bit more trim right, a little bit more trim nose down. So calming and relaxing. Okay, so let's check uh, some internals. Prop RPM is probably just going to stay there. Torque is something that we can probably manipulate. Heading back towards our target. We're just flying VFR right now, GPS. We don't have to worry about air traffic control chirping in our ear, which makes us even more relaxing. Still got chat chirping in your ear though, but you don't have to listen to them. You can do whatever you want. Trying to figure out what's a good angle to get here. As we get ready to kind of intersect with our path. Lion Dodo, baby. Maybe one of these would be good for the plane log. I'm trying to get a better angle. We'll have plenty of opportunities, though. Okay. Let's get, uh, go ahead and get autopilot set up. Which is going to be interesting as usual. So I'm going to do nav mode. I'm going to set the PFD. To FMS. Should see this line up. Okay, good. Then we're going to grab uh, altitude hold mode on where we currently are at 25.8 is perfect. Let's check this, that the green confirms that we're at 25.8. Okay. So we shouldn't nosedive. And then we should just be able to turn autopilot on now. And since we're on the correct FMS um, nav source and we have nav mode on, we should gently course correct until we are back lined up with that pink waypoint. Okay, and then if I want to kind of change altitude to like just right, honestly right here is fine, but if you want a round number just for fun, go to 26,000 feet. Turn vertical speed mode on. Just do a small climb, like 200 feet per second would be good. And then we can kind of take a look at the checklist and see what the post takeoff things were. Now that we've kind of got a nice feel for the plane. 
Is the passenger oxygen still off? Yeah, but you guys are still talking for some reason. Is there, is there a way to delete oxygen? Is that like one of the settings on the plane? Because it seems like you guys have too much back there. I'm glad I don't have to Jeff this plane. It's so common everyone knows how to do it. Are you delegating your Jeff powers, Ace Tech? I think I've got pretty much everything uh, down the way I want, except, obviously, fixing this. So, the mouse wheel doesn't do anything. Clicking this doesn't do anything. Neither of those do anything. Do I have to be in a different... I mean, I've already clicked PFD, which should be this. But neither of them work, unless I'm doing the wrong one. Elizabeth, um, we've already got memes about the thing on my head. We've got Teletubby memes. We've got alien memes. We've got um, Liuta memes. I don't know. There's probably there's more. There's uh, I forget what the other ones even are. MFD is the middle screen. Maybe that's the problem. So this is my PF, okay, what is P, I guess, I don't know what PFD and MFD stand for. Middle something display? Because I have PFD selected. Tox, do you know anything about the multiplayer future of this game? I just want to be able to fly planes together with my butts. Yeah, you can already do that. Okay, now that we got MFD selected correctly, we can... Okay, there we go. See? Had the wrong one down. It's all good, though. So we were on the right, uh, on the right knob, just the wrong setting. So PFD would be this. Middle, dis middle primary flight and multifunction display. Gotcha. So we have MFD selected. We can also do a little weather. We can see horizontally, passing through mostly green. Here's our vertical radar. Change between map and weather. You can also configure a destination in here and uh, change your flight plan. I still want to practice that, but I just haven't have been comfortable. We got like a whole, <laughs> we have a whole uh, flight plan around the entire world. I think it'll be fine. Some of the things I want to kind of check that we haven't done, like I got plenty of time. We could turn these lights off. I guess I could have pulse on. I just had strobe. I honestly don't know the difference between pulse and strobe. These lights are where they're supposed to be. Okay. Ice-wise, we are... Are we negative 36 degrees? This is outside air temperature is negative 3. So I would say... Propeller de-ice on might be nice. Wing light probably should be on. Airframe de-ice. Don't know if that should be on or not. I guess so. The prop is probably the most important bit right now. The pitot heater has already been on this entire time, and I don't I don't see any ice on the windshield. That doesn't mean there's no ice, though, I guess. Okay. Then I kind of want to just check the... Uh, checklist. This is the first time I've seen a sunset from home IRL outside in a while. <laughs> it's, um... A real sunrise? You mean a sunrise, right? Ace Tech, are you going to bed or going or waking up? Are we flying by the books or being free birds? We are uh, flying free of ATC right now, but we're still flying like on a normal booked route. 
with, you know, 26,000 feet. I think we could go, what, what's the max height for this plane? Isn't it like 31,000 or something? But yeah, G is random. We can do whatever we want here. Hey, look, another plane. VIV 3045. Viv 3045. Let's see. Viva Aerobus. It is en route, arriving in one hour and three minutes, heading from Veracruz, Mexico to Guadalajara. And it is in the air, currently five minutes early. Took off at 8.15. It is now 8.38. Wow, that's that's very current. <laughs> so, passenger jet on the way. Ital Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. We turn on the D ice. Look on the leading edge of the wingtip. Leading edge of the wingtip. The only light that I saw when I, I test this light in parking, and it was over here. Is this not it? Because I can't see this from the cockpit. This was the light that came on, though. What's up, Feistel? Sir Butt Shuffle is just waking up. What plane do we have today? We are flying um, a new plane. You can actually use, is it flight plan or FP command? To see the, the make model and also where we are going to and from. Still feeling sleepy? I'm actually pretty wide awake, Sir Bud Shuffle. This is gonna be a pretty gentle first flight of the day here. Let's go ahead and uh, try and checklist ourselves. We definitely already have la <laughs> landing gear flaps. Torque should be maxed at 100%, but that's before the climb. And go to the next page. We've already got all this. Oh, I should I should change the altimeter. That's a good idea. I gotta remember to do that. Fuel gauges check. Fuel is evenly dispersed and is doing great, 98, 97. De-ice as required. I don't know what inertial separator must be set according to weather condition. Well, I don't have the guidebook on me. So cruising, altimeter setting, check, autopilot check, fuel gauge check, de-ice just did that. Again, inertial separator, landing lights off, actually did that. Before descent, altimeter setting check. Okay, so really there's no indicator on how to maximize the efficiency of this particular craft. But I assume if we wanted to speed up, we could. I just need to watch the torque. Because prop RPM looks like it's automatically governed. And we'll never go into the red. But if we want to gain speed, we kind of just need to carefully... I can hear the wind around the craft. Because we are exceeding... Um, we're approaching 300 knots true airspeed right now. You probably wouldn't want to go with the torque at 95, but it did say, um, it doesn't say anything about torque, actually. How long is this flight? Only an hour and a half. So we've already been uh, airborne for probably like 30 minutes. I see a lot of farmland down there. So we are leaving Mexico, chat. And we're going to Honduras. I like that trim and flaps display. I'm gonna have to go back in and look at it now that you said something about it. Let's 
get some uh, of the cinematic camera angles. Dodo Airlines! Speaking of Dodo Airlines, uh, I'm really excited because my mother uh, just got Animal Crossing for the first time. I don't know if you guys remember a while back, but I told you she was playing on her phone. And, uh, I was, talk I was talking about Animal Crossing when it first came out to my mom on the phone. I was like, you'd love this game. You'd, I, I think you'd really enjoy it because I'm having a ton of fun. And, like, I didn't find out until weeks later. I guess she didn't put two and two together uh, that, like, Animal Crossing on Switch and the game that she was playing on her phone were related. <laughs> so I found out, like, a month after the fact, in passing, she just casually mentioned that she was playing, like, Animal Crossing... Uh, what's the one on the phone called? I think she knew it by the other name. And I was like, wait a second, you've been playing this the whole time? She's like, yeah. I was like, how much time... Oh, yeah, Pocket Camp. I think she just knew it as Pocket Camp. I was like, you've been playing Pocket Camp the whole time? And I never even knew this? I didn't know you were a gamer, Mom, that you were playing uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. And then it was really sad because she told me that she, was, she had put all this time into it and gotten to, like, level 32 or something. And she tried to log in one day, and all of her data got reset, and she got back, pushed back to zero. Whole game got erased, and it was very sad. But now, now she's got Animal Crossing Switch. So I'm, I'm helping, kind of get that. Ecal Air is going around the world. Now you're going to help and get that set up so that she can see why it's so much fun. Listen, I hope hopefully mom's not watching my stream right now, mom. But if you are, I love you. And also, I have to say it was pretty funny. Um, she didn't know that she could make her um, customize her character. So she clicked through the game and was like, hang on, how come my person looks like this? <laughs> and I was like, uh, go, you have to, now you actually do have to delete all your data again and reset it to go back to zero so that you can customize your character because that's the first screen in the game. I th she was just very excited to, uh, to just keep like confirming and pressing <laughs> A to go forward. <laughs> So I thought that was cute. Hey, what's up, Avic? How's it going, dude? I will pour out a cold one of tea, obviously. Thank you. You also said earlier, this is going to be the last sunrise we ever see, chat. Make your peace with this now so you can just enjoy it later and not miss anything. This is probably the only time we are going to see a video game sunrise. We're also going to see the sunset today, though. Because we got about two hours ahead of me. So the sun will be setting, I guess, at like 5 something p.m. my time. So it's like an 11 hours. Speed is up to 323 knots true airspeed. We could get it going faster if we wanted to climb a little bit more. I forget what the max height in altitude for this plane is, but the higher you go, uh, the faster we'll ultimately go. So we're only going 212 knots indicated airspeed, but we are human right now. So let's just go ahead and put that into perspective if you want to know how fast we're going in this. We are going... Uh, 371 miles per hour. If you are not a user of miles per hour, do your own conversion, okay? I'm not here to uh, solve all your problems. You know what I'm saying? So we're going pretty fast. You can go even faster by pointing your plane down a bit more. 
how much sleep did you get last night? I mean, I got like close to six hours. But you have to remember, I woke up at noon. So if you really, if you really just take all of yesterday into consideration, uh, I probably, because I went to sleep at like 4 a.m. yesterday. Woke up at noon, so that's eight hours. And then went back to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> so in total, I got like uh, 14 out of 24 hours were sleep. If you think about it like that, that's kind of a lot. Right? Hold on, I gotta change my... I guess I can feel this sliding off my head. So let's take a look at the map map and kind of see where we're going to kind of visualize this and put this in perspective. We started in Mexico City, and we are going to be just crossing land only. We are not going to be seeing either the Gulf of Mexico or the Pacific in this particular flight. So obviously we're way above the clouds now, but we're going to be flying over Guatemala. And you can look out your window to see Belize to the driver's side and El Salvador to the passenger side as we cross into Honduras, into the Guzcapa. So, uh, on the way out, of course, we passed over the mountains. We're probably right around here at this point. And we got the Sierra de Madre, the Chiapas Mountains. Probably saying that wrong, but I did my best. Is this Tuxtla or Tuxtla? No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. A city in southern Mexico which is the capital of the Chiapas state and a regional transport hub. They got some like major cities just all throughout this place. The city and municipality of Oaxaca de Juarez. Oaxaca? It's whatever you want it to be, but you'll still be wrong. Mexico is full of huge cities. It really is, yeah. But you can see how much distance we're kind of covering. So this is the longest flight, I think, in terms of just sheer mileage, right? Because San Antonio, here was the Isla, de, Isla Maria Madre and Isla Maria Magdalena. That was the prison tour that we did. <laughs> that was the previous longest in terms of just distance. But I'm pretty sure that Mexico City to Tegucigalpa is much, much further. And then, obviously, from here, we're going to be continuing around into South America. So we will be... We probably won't make it into South America today, necessarily. But we're going to see a lot of really cool sights once we get here. Passing over some mountain ranges. Like Cerro Raxon. It's not a range, but that's a mountain. You know what I mean. Parque Nacional Sierra de las Minas. De la minas. Smells like psychos in here. Good morning or good night, Simcopter. I don't know which. Both for my sake and for yours. <laughs> uh, uh, my, my sense of time is all gone. But good morning and welcome to our Dodo Airlines flight to Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Hope you're having a good one. How are the crash physics in this game? Non-existent, unless you turn off crash damage. It's not a crash simulator. This isn't uh, Beam NG Drive or Fly. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I hope you enjoyed your day off yesterday, Sim. Glad to have you. And I've enjoyed hanging out in your streams recently doing your own tours of the world via another another great game that I really refuse to play <laughs> because of how embarrassed I would be um, upon playing it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> not Among Us. I'm talking about... Uh, that's not a tourist game. I'm talking about GeoGuessr. 
Like, I, I honestly don't think I could even get the country correct for a majority of those. I'm building up my sense of geography in this video game. And it's actually been so helpful. Like, uh, unironically, Chad, I know where so many things are that I had no idea just because, like, the th that, that's what I've really enjoyed about the flight around the world at this stage is I am actually absorbing so much knowledge. And I might not remember all the small little factoids that we've been kind of talking about mid-flight, but just in terms of location and geography, being able to see what the world looks like, where it looks like it does, and where that's located on a map, I've been able to combine that beautiful knowledge sandwich. Just little things, like I, I didn't, for some reason in my mind, I thought Area 51 and Roswell were like right next to each other. I don't know why, I just thought that. Now I know that Roswell's in New Mexico and Area 51's in, in Nevada. That should be an obvious thing, but it's just something I didn't need to know because I wasn't going to uh, put on my ninja costume and take out my kendo stick and go raid Area 51, so I didn't need to know where it was, right? Or Google Maps would have just taken me there. But things like that, things like what the lay of the land looks like in different parts of New Mexico and Arizona, and uh, the oil fields of Texas. Like, I know Texas has got a lot of oil, but I didn't know it looked like a circuit board. Yeah, that plus Paradox Games, Atom. I've been learning a ton of geography. Hell yeah, this is the best way to learn geography through context that is fun and meaningful to you, like Microsoft Flight Sim. And uh, it is a lot of fun. We learned about... My, some of my personal favorite little tidbits of random information are, like... For, we, we already talked about this earlier, but when we flew into Isla Maria Madre, I didn't know that that was a penal colony that only closed last year. I had no idea that there was still a modern-day penal colony, and that actually, apparently, closing it down is a bad thing. <laughs> would, like, there's so many layers to that. They shrunk it from, like thousands of people down to wasn't it like 80 people or something like that and because some of the inmates had to be moved to regular prisons that's why it was bad because the, the actual penal colony itself was considered one of the nicest and, and cleanest and safest in the world or something so it was actually like a decent place for serving time and rehabilitation and whatnot. That's what, that's what we read, anyway. Maybe it was propaganda. I don't know, but it, it made sense because it was like a tropical paradise. Um, and then, the what was the guy that was sponsored by Howard Hughes in... Uh, was it Arizona? I remember Ace Tech shared it, where aliens from Venus contacted this guy and he ended up building like a, a dome that was supposed to be able to cure cancer <laughs> and also travel through time inside of it. It was called the Integration or Integraton or something like that, if I remember correctly. So actually, I do remember some of these things. Integratron. Okay, it was close. What plane are we flying? This is the dollar TBM. Uh, what, what are the numbers? TBM 930, I think. I'll, you can take a look at the outside here. Really sharp looking aircraft. Never flown this one before today. Um, it's a turboprop, single engine, extremely fast. Got a lot of power, got a lot of speed. So it may not look like it, but we are going almost 400 miles an hour. We're going like 380 miles an hour right now. Oh, yeah, don't forget about Elephant Butt. <laughs> and tr Truth and Consequences, New Mexico. Learned about that. The uh, great chili pepper con hatch chili contests. Learned about the pageant. They have a beauty pageant there and interviews and stuff. Flew around Elephant Butte. Hypocube, what up? Alien, yo. Yeah, the chill. Exactly, Kieran Kylo. I did not forget. I did not forget. 
All right, let's zoom out a little bit, and you guys can kind of see where we're at in relation to everything. And we can kind of take a look and find out where we actually are. Uh, and also, I, I can see maybe a little bit of information about these particular locales. So, we're next to a pretty large body of water, it looks like. And this is kind of like my own version of GeoGuessr. I get a big help from my in-game map, and then I try and find out specifically where we are here. So based on that knowledge, I would say this is exactly where we are. So we should be passing by Berio Zabal. Berio Zabal. Very soon, if not imminently. This is Malpazo, which has a very Aztec name before the parentheses. So let's just take a look at that. There's a dam here. They have the Malpazo Dam. Located in the central region of Chiapas, Mexico, near the border with Tabasco and Veracruz. Hmm, Tabasco. The first of several major dams built on the Grijalva River to generate hydroelectric energy in the second largest reservoir in Mexico. There you go. They also have a big ecotourism push. Restaurants next to the reservoir at the bridge. There you go. Just a little picture of what it looks like on the ground. And it ain't loading. There you go. Uh, the creation of the dam and later infrastructure projects allowed for the development of an ecotourism industry in the area. This is uh, some rainforest growth. This is one of the most important in southern Mexico due to its size and biological diversity. There is an ecotourism center which offers boat tours, hiking, horseback riding, camping, along with a number of restaurants for passerby featuring fish from the area. So they got a whole thing going on here, huh? That's pretty cool. Big spot. See, like... Just looking at this on the map, I would not ever have guessed that there is a big ecotourism drive going on with, like, this big tourist dam attraction. It just kind of puts into perspective all these different, like, areas of the world, you know? We could fly lower and take a look at the ground, but that would make us the flight take a little bit longer, but it would be fun. So if it would be fun, then let's do it, right? That looks like a uh, storm formation over there, huh? Remember how I told you guys there's a lot, there's a lot of storms going on in this region for the next week. That absolutely looks like a storm formation. A front, just moving on. Big high clouds, those are like, those clouds are over 30,000 feet. It's like 35, 40,000 feet tall clouds. Because we are already 25,000 feet up, 26,000 feet up. Okay, let's uh, let's just control this. How about decrease the altitude? How low do you guys want to go? The ground's about 2,500. Twenty feet. Two. How low can we go? We can go as low as we want. It's just going to extend the duration of the trip, but it'll give us a lot to look at. Looks like we're crossing a major river uh, coming up here soon. We go down to 9,000 feet. I would say 9,000 to 10. Doesn't look like there's any mountains. Looks like a pretty flat area compared to where we're at. All right, now that we've selected the altitude, I'm going to turn on vertical speed mode. And this is going to control our descent. So you can see this my designated altitude right there. Here's our current altitude, and this is our feet per minute. So by scrolling, by turning on uh, vertical speed, and then scrolling up, 
we go into the negative. And as we go into the negative, that's just how fast do you want to go up or down. So negative would be go down until you hit your designated altitude. So that's how these systems kind of work together. So right now we're just going down 500, which is pretty slow. So this is my designated feet per minute at negative 1,000. So 1,000 will be pretty fast. we got to watch out for the overspeed candy cane here. Uh, as we decline, we're going to be probably picking up speed. And there's not going to be as much a need to keep the uh, throttle maxed, you know? Yeah, we are pretty high up there right now, though, looks my lord. Let's go to the jungle. Apparently there are some rainforests down here. All right, while we're up, um, and before I forget, thanks everybody for the subs that I skipped earlier. Let me see if I can catch it now. I am mostly moistened, got gifted a sub from Wink. Good morning to both of you. Congratulations, Moisten. Welcome back for an eighth month. Hope you have a good one. And thank you, Wink, for sharing that beautiful sun. Chubby Penguin with the e -tow plane in chat for a big 3-0. Hello, Chubby Penguin. Hope you're having a good morning. Surfaceside Squids is fasten your seatbelts, chat. With a tier 2, thanks for the double sub, other squid. We've got... Squid and Squid 2. You guys can fight over who gets to be which one, okay? Karen says, I didn't sleep through takeoff pog. You did not, Karen. Um, the, the best is yet to come today, even though this plane is really fun. And just, I'm really excited to land in Tegucigalpa because I think the airport is fascinating. Fruity Rudy, sharing four months. What's up, Rudy? Dormu says, what is the menu today, Captain? We are going to have in-flight meals provided. Uh, however, I'm going to have to actually eat them. So as much as I like to tell you when and what the in-flight meal will consist of, I kind of just need to wait until I'm actually going to eat because we're actually going to have in-flight meals. <laughs> this is going to be like a 12-hour stream day. So that's the feature of today's stream, as you will see. Probably in a couple hours. We'll probably have two. We're probably going to do two in-flight meals. We could do more, and I've got an idea for that. We'll see, uh... We'll see, okay? We'll see how we feel. There's a couple ways we can do this. Australian Dan says, When do I get my complimentary drink tray? Well, I got some leftover coffee in here. I'm going to go ahead and drain it, though, so... You have to find your own, Australian Dan. Altajur says, around world people chat for 16 months. Howdy, Altajur. Thanks for sharing. And then Ready Freddy with the Shamrock bits. No crashes today. I hope not. But who can say? I don't think I committed any errors. Did I? Do we have the Wheel of Disaster yet? I don't think the Wheel of Disaster has um, factored in. What's up, Poachfest? Howdy, Alistra. Howdy, everybody. Guess I missed takeoff. You did, but that's all right. There will be... Listen. There will be plenty more takeoffs. I promise. And I don't just mean in general. Specifically today. <laughs> just wait until you see the next flight's flight plan, okay? That's the only teaser that I'll give you. It's going to be a doozy. Which island are we going to? We're not going to an island. We're actually flying uh, through Mexico now and coming out the other side into Honduras. We can take a look at the map again, and you can see that. We should be coming up on it imminently, because we just passed uh, Malpaso. And we got San Fernando... And a, a bunch of other cities down here that I just don't know a single thing about. So it looks like we're flying directly over. Uh, this is a large, large city area with airport baked into the middle. Let's see if we can find some interesting POIs. Uh, here's a wooden door with some signs on it. Okay, that's a good start. Some kind of university. 
Secretary of Education, that's what it is. Some kind of ballot box? What is this? Local government office? Oh, that was the other thing. Um, in Mexico City, where we departed from, is it UNAM? What's, what's the acronym? UNAM is like one of the large, it's like the largest university in the world or something like that? What is it? In terms of just area? Uh, UNAM has the 22nd highest capacity of undergrads in the entire world with about 324,000 students. They have more than, I think they have more than three bands. This is not this city. This isn't from Mexico City. Which is where we started over here. Uh, where is it, actually? All the way in the southwest. University City! National Autonomous University of Mexico. Uni <laughs> University City. 324,000. They have, like, multiple locations. <laughs> it's not all 324,000 here. They have other, like, properties in, in... I think they have one in America, too. Uh, but they have, like, their own soccer teams. They have multiple bands. They have theater. Like, uh, like theaters. Plural. And, uh, stages and, and productions and stuff that go on here. This, some of these look like... Dude, they have an archaeological zone built in? That would be such a fun class to go to. For university. You go to, like, an actual dig site that's on your campus. That is, like, an ancient Aztec ruin. That's pretty cool. This looks like an important building. Faculty building. See, like, what's this? Where are all these, like, rocks in a big circle? General activities. Cafe Azul. There, <laughs> see? There's a little move. They have a uh, university movie theater. Um, what else we got? Shopping built in, looks like. Like a mall. There's their track. Miguel Hidalgo. Olympic Villa. Really, really cool. Anyway, 300 some odd thousand students is just kind of insane. It's a, also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Designed by some of Mexico's best known architects of the 20th century. Founded in 1910. Old dudes there. Big history. Um. <laughs> this was the university's first rector. That could be a Crusader Kings character. Mexico or Honduras? We were talking about Mexico City because that's where we departed, but we're heading into Tegucigalpa. And in fact, these double yellow lines are of interest. We might be, let's just see if we're crossing in now. We might have just crossed in, possibly. I got a little distracted by the university. I want to say that we are just right there. Let's 
So we're flying over Guatemala first. We're gonna see Guatemala City um, out the passenger side. And then Honduras, and we'll see El Salvador and Belize. We'll kind of pass right through both of them. So Guatemala, I don't really know too much about. Other than... Uh, have I been to Guatemala? No, I don't think so. I've been to the... I was on a cruise one time. It wasn't to Cozumel. It was somewhere else. Maybe it was Cozumel. I don't remember. But I have actually been to... Where am I, chat? I've never been to South America, but that would be awesome. Never been to the Bahamas. Never been to Cuba. Never been to Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I've been down I've been down here. I've been really close to South America. I have been to Guadeloupe, I've been to Dominica. I've been to Dude, I'd actually like to fly over this. Been to Marigot and Portsmouth. Been to both of these. It's so crazy to navigate here, though, and the drive. That, that, that's the scariest driving I have ever seen in my entire life. Bar none. Absolute most terrifying I've has ever been. You pronounced it right? I just love the word. Yeah, it's Guadalupe. Not Guadalupe. Right? You think it's Guadalupe. Because that's what... Some, there's, there's another Guadalupe. But it's Guadalupe. For the Caribbean island, if I'm not mistaken. Those islands are pretty dope. <laughs> what empire is trying to take them... Darth Panzer, are you playing Crusader Kings? Uh, I've also been to San Juan only briefly. Uh, the, to get to get to here, you have to fly in an intense approach. I think it was like flew into Dallas, and then from Dallas to well, you can't see. So from Dallas to San Juan, from San Juan to Guadalupe. And from Guadalupe to Dominica. And also, not only the scariest driving I've ever seen in my entire life, also the scariest airplane flights I've ever been on in my entire life. Uh, both of them were terrifying. Landing in San Juan is pretty normal, but once you go... Once you get to Guadalupe and from Guadalupe to Dominica... Whew, uh, that, that was like a dual armrest grab type of flight. We're talking like actually doing the meme of like, and on this side, if you look down, that is the mountain. Because we're at a 45 degree angle as we crest around uh, the island mountains to find the airport. We're still descending to 9,000 feet. This whole time, we've just been, like, going 1,000 feet a minute. But we're way lower to the ground now. We already crossed that river that I didn't even get the name of. Don't worry, there's plenty of rivers. Yeah, it looks like we could probably go even lower. We could just make a quick descent down to 5,000 feet. Increase our rate of descent by 50%. Wish I could go to Dominica. It looks so beautiful. It is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. They have some fantastic waterfalls there as well. A um, lot of just growth on the island in terms of, you know, farms and trees and stuff that are just shroud everything. I, I took some photos when I was there. I was like 18. Um, somewhere around there. I have to find some old pictures.
but I, I actually got lost one time. That was scary. Me and somebody else that I was with, we couldn't remember, because you pretty much walk 80% of the time, and you really just don't drive. Like, one person in the group rented a car, and everything, not only is everything backwards in terms of driving, but everybody's got, like, unwritten rules of the road, where you just honk a lot. <laughs> you just honk a lot, and if you can find an opening, you take it. And at one point I got lost, and we couldn't figure out which way to walk back home was. And the person I was with was also way older than me, so they were very embarrassed because they were kind of like, if, if you're 18 and you're with somebody who's like 30, you know, it's kind of their responsibility to make sure, because they're, they're the, if you're older, you're the responsible party. And so when you're 18 and you're with someone that's older, you really unfairly burden whoever you're with with things that you're really old enough to take care of yourself. Like, I, I was old enough to probably be a, a little bit more aware. But you just take that for granted and you're like, yeah, what, I do whatever I want. I'm like a teenager. I'm with a real adult. That's your problem. And so then when you realize that uh, they don't know where they are either, <laughs> that's when the panic starts to set in. And we ended up, like, hailing a taxi, which in and of itself is scary. Because taxis there aren't taxis, they're just people with cars. So effectively it was a total stranger. And it was like, uh, I'm trying to get here. Please don't just take me somewhere else. You know, like I really want to go here and I'm happy to pay you for that. But like, since I don't know where I am, my life is kind of in your hands right now, total stranger. So uh, we ended up just overpaying on purpose just because we were just like it's better to lose some money in the short term and just give them a very generous payment that's like three times what it would normally be because if you don't know where you're going you you just want to make sure you get to where you want to go you know what i mean aren't all drivers strangers with cars yeah but i'm talking about like unmarked cars you know what i'm saying like person who apparent like ostensibly claims to be a, a taxi but who could just be somebody that has a car look at the wind bouncing us back and forth Aren't most taxis cars? Retrograde, I assume you're just making fun of other people in chat for basically being the person who's like, But why? Hey, look, the sun is beautiful today. How come? Well, it's up in the sky, and it's really just lighting up the ground and reflecting off the water beautifully and just skipping over the trees. Why? Well, because of the way that the atmosphere reflects the light and uh, turns the sky blue. Why? That's the feeling I had while taking cabs in Rio, but it was an official taxi, though. People would still take you to the slums and try to kill you. What? That took a turn, Redwoodian. I don't think you actually experienced that. I think you just said that to be dramatic. All right, we reached 5,000 feet, and we're just going straight through these clouds. I guess. We could probably go even lower then. I could also just take manual control for a little bit. That would be fine, too. Let's fly, chat. You ready? I'm gonna zoom in on this map first. So we can kind of just see the map a little better. Disengage autopilot. I know how you guys are. And I know whenever we're flying Ital Air is going around the world. A new plane. And now you're going to. That you always say, hey, uh, do a stunt. Hey, do a barrel roll. Okay then. So be it. This is if this is how it's gonna be. We gotta test out the new plane's capabilities, right? You ready, chat? Oh yeah. Smooth. 
All right, you know what? That just reminded me I should make a save. <laughs> that was pretty smooth. We lost somebody. Hey, you guys okay back there? Dude, it looks so comfortable back here. Who said this? This is like a $2 million plane. Somebody definitely said this is like a $2 million plane. <laughs> I passed out. <laughs> All right, let me save. Just in case something bad happens. We wouldn't want to reset the entire flight, you know? Okay, around the world. This one. All good. Comfy. We've never done a loop. You guys want to do a loop? I like the, the lay of the land this way. That looks awesome. All right, stall incoming. Wow, so negative. You guys are so negative. Ready? Three, two, one. Rate. Sink rate. Easy. Easy. That was pretty smooth, chat. We lived. We're flying into Dominica right now, it looks like. <laughs> That's exactly what my flight looked like. <laughs> How did I overstress the aircraft? I, uh, we, didn't even, we weren't even going that fast. What happened? I wasn't even pulling up that hard. Was I going too fast? What was my speed? I want to see a clip. Good thing we saved, huh? Clutch save. My bad. Listen, I may have gotten a little excited. But that, that's why I did that, so I could have so I could do some zany antics. Ooh. <laughs> I forgot to change uh flight conditions. I think I think you can do it just in the game though. There was so much beeping and warning lights. You hit 88 and went into the future. <laughs> Restart from Vegas. No. Kieran Kylo says loving the morning plane stream. Going to keep you on in the background and get some homework done today. Well, you didn't expect that, did you, Kieran Kylo? You didn't think uh Um Is this is this lost? JJ Abrams, is that you? I thought it was going to start me like in the air. Why is it? Why am I? <laughs> why am I on the ground? I'm gonna crash immediately. Hold on. There is a. I, I think I have to turn off damage to get out of this. Because I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna hit a tree and then die. Yeah, that's uh, what I thought was gonna happen. That one doesn't count. Okay, the first one. Fine, I'll accept it, but this, this doesn't count. Around the world, flight. Ow. 
Engage VTOL. <laughs> you live here now. Apparently I do. You know what? I like my new home, though. Xenophanes asked, any predictions on wheel outcomes today? Well, it's fitting that I read this now. By the way, Etal plane Neum Petamidus. I guess I have to spin the wheel now. Next flight. Here, watch this. Magical. How can he do it? What is up with the map on the, uh... Um... Hmm... Hmm... This is fine, right, guys? Anyway, why? No. No landing gear. Oh, I had flaps all the way down instead of takeoff, but it's fine. We're good now, chat. And I can I can turn damage back on. <laughs> New tree trimming service. At least we're not stuck. All right. So why did I die the first time? Aside from the obvious. How fast was I actually going? Also, second question. I guess I'm going 200 knots. It just doesn't feel like I'm going that fast. Second question. Where is weather? Um, can you not change weather? I don't know if it's on real time. I thought you could change weather during a flight. Why is that the only one that's blanked out? You went a little bit into overspeed and the aircraft gave up. For some reason you can't change weather time when you load a save. Well that's kind of like the whole reason that we're doing this. So, why don't I just try making another save and see if this one actually works, because I really need to get back on real time. Alright, uh, in prog 2. Let's make a different save. Main menu this real quick. If you ever find out, I'd like to know too. Yeah, I think it- someone's, someone just said it's from loading a save. Altajur said that. It is definitely not 2.31 p.m. where we are. Um, should be fine once we load back in. Day four in proc two. Like disables them. It's like a little bug where the menu gets disabled. Is that not a bug? Is that just supposed to happen? No, it's definitely not supposed to happen because now I can't click anything except fly. I can't even back out. I've been in lurk mode this entire time. What were you thinking, Irik? Let's just do a quick reset just to make sure everything's working properly. I think that would be the safest bet. Even if it takes an extra minute, it's worth, uh, it's worth getting right. Shouldn't have crashed, chat. Why was I trying to impress you? <laughs> Who, what do I care if you're impressed or not? Hello, Rizzy. 
I don't have the weather button on new games either. Doesn't matter if it's a save. Um, it, you might just reset the game. I think because it's a flight, not a plan, so you can't change stuff. Maybe. But I think the back out menu is still supposed to be there. Luckily, uh, they improved loading times with the last patch. So that's good. It does get to main menu faster now. Not gonna lie, I kind of laughed when I saw your headband, but then I realized it's a very smart idea instead of using a hat. The hat will probably work better, Killa, because this is not supposed to be all the way back on my head. It's supposed to be more like here, but there literally is not a hat that fits my head. Unless I get one custom made. So this is the next best thing. And also, I don't like wearing hats in general. Maybe I'm just biased. Did it crash? In a manner of speaking, Elizabeth. That is one way to put it. Uh, does anybody have the clip? Because <laughs> I want to see it again. It wasn't really a crash so much as it was... You know... Uh, the screen went dark. That's all. I hope someone clipped it. I mean, it kind of has to be clipped because it's going to go in the plane log. This is exactly... Here we go. All right, well, that's booting up. It's actually booting up way fast. Hey, look, we're flying into Dominica right now, it looks like. <laughs> that's exactly what my flight looked like. <laughs> hey, okay, but why? Hang on. Oh, yeah, we are over looks speed. like... That's exactly what my flight looked like. <laughs> Did I? Hang on. I can't. I'm trying to watch, um, like, did I pull back on the controls too hard? My flight looked like. <laughs> no, real? Not really. <laughs> I didn't even move. <laughs> oh! Whoa! Hang on. <laughs> Enhanced. <laughs> New sub sound. Now, uh, what we were luck luckily we literally just saved, so almost no progress. Just a little time lost, chat. But I got, listen, it's seven thirty in the morning. I got plenty of time. All right, in progress. Load it up. Okay, can't change the flight conditions, but I change. I don't know. Just, just go. I did my best. Ready, Freddy? Thank you for the hundo bits. It says, "Here's to our first death day." So early, too. Just a little bit of overspeed. Just a little teeny bit of overspeed. I need to turn damage back on. Or crash ability. So we'll do that once we're flying. Hey! Airborne this time, so that's good. It should still be, like, real time. Or at least it'll be real time what the... Because the, the flight that I saved was real time real weather, so maybe that's why I can't change it. But it looks... Basically like it did. Full. Oh, exactly like it looks like in Dominic. Okay, now we want to get uh, turned around here. Is it just me, or does it feel like I'm turning faster IRL than my virtual guy is turning on the map itself? You know? 
Also, we are getting some big push to the side. Like, if I don't do anything, I'm just straight up turning. I'm having to fight this. I don't know if it's wind. What is the wind right now? Well, I'll be able to find... How come... When I'm turning left, it's turning right? Chad, is that... That doesn't look right. Oh, autopilot's on? Oh, well, what are you doing, autopilot? No wonder. How do, how do I see that? Okay, it was on because that was on the screen. Gotcha. Wow. That makes a lot more sense. Oh my god, turning that off though is miserable. Alright, just... Some low-hanging marshmallow clouds. No. 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 No landing gear. <laughs> I can do this myself. So are we in Guatemala yet? I guess if I don't know, you probably don't know. We're coming up on a huge body of water. All right, I can get uh, autopilot set up normally. Let's turn on nav mode. Let's turn on altitude hold mode. And then we're already on the correct nav FMS. So if we just turn autopilot on, it should do its thing without... This is good. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, you know what just saved me right there? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna do this thing real quick. Let me just go into assistance in. <clears throat> Listen, aircraft stress damage was on. This is ground collision. It technically could have given me a game over screen right there. Okay, right now what I'm doing is just manual adjusting the trim. And I'm gonna bring us... Dude, I am spooling that wheel. Is it? Is autopilot on still? No. Like, I have been spooling trim for like five straight seconds. Do we even have, um, roll trim? Like, aileron trim? But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and manual line up here. Not a big problem. Turn the throttle down a little bit. It seems like it's kind of blazing the engine. There is no in-between. Five and ten degrees is just... No sweet spot. Stop climbing. Cut it out. Okay. Let's go there. Might help to use heading select. It works for me when autopilot freaks out. Oh, I just crossed over the thing reading chat. Ooh, this looks nice. I 
like this. Okay, we're climbing back to 9,000 feet now. Huge body of water here that I want to learn more about. So let's do... Altitude hold mode at 95 hundo. Let's set it for 9,000 roughly. And then... Okay, here we go, chat. Uh, nav mode is currently on. I'm... I'm gonna try and turn autopilot back on. Hopefully we don't die. Okay, I think it's doing the thing. Why is it taking me off course? Like, it's not even following... So you have chosen death. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> Turn autopilot on. Okay. Are we good? Are we good now? Trumbo Ninja flaps? Fuel mix? Did you just pick one of those three at random? Okay, it's not freaking out anymore, so that's good. Look at that little island. Ooh, oh, this is the one we were looking at, right? This has got to be the city we were looking at. Look at these little marshmallow puffs. We might be getting better weather than we're supposed to be, <laughs> just due to the stupid crash. But oh well, it's not a long flight anyway. It is after I crashed. I live there, dude, chat, you live there? All right, let's see where you live. Ooh, big bridge. This would be fun to drive over. Gorgeous area. Okay, let's take a look. We are where? Is it is it this? It's gotta be. Belisario Dominguez. Dominguez. La Concordia. And San Francisco. Pujiltic. No, don't talk to me. Where's the city that's like on the water though? That may not be it. Alright, what? I didn't I wasn't even contacting anybody. This looks crazy. Okay, let's change our altimeter, and then once we get past this area, climb back up. Altimeter is already correct. Let's go to MFD. Yeah, we are... We are... Let's 
somewhere, yeah, we must have just passed. Yeah, we just passed Malpaso. Okay, we were looking at that earlier. So this is kind of, we're kind of like coming in through towards San Fernando and Osumacinta. I think we could probably just follow this river down here. And Chiapas is going to be coming up on the side as well. It's a nice... Chai, you want to go through the mountain? <laughs> hey, you guys want to go hands-on here? No, he just got autopilot fixed! I did. I did just get autopilot fixed. You're right. Here we go again. The canyon run. Okay, I gotta try hard not to die this time. Hello, hey, I'm Franco. Thank you for the six months. Much appreciated. And uh, welcome to Etal does dumb thing and has to reload save again. This time I'm actually watching my speed though. <laughs> Don't worry, the speed's fine. The landing gear is not. We're still going like 262 knots. Alright, chat, can you guys be the tour guide? I'm gonna fly through here. You guys uh, talk about some fun facts of this little mountain range area, okay? That's not like a good plan. And educate myself and the rest of chat, okay? Uh oh, we might be uh, might be in for some bumps here. I made a ham sandwich. Thank you for that fun fact, Syntax Squid. It's a nice mountain range. It's pointy. <laughs> to the left, death. <laughs> to the right, also death. Don't worry. We're good. It's very steep. The water here is very steep as well. It the, the AI does its best to figure out where the rivers are. And honestly, it does a pretty damn good job. Basically, they just detected that there was a river and the AI said, yep. That's where the water goes. Right up there. There might be a waterfall there IRL. Possibly. Waterfalls don't really exist in the game so much. It'd be something cool to add in the future. I think that they could do it. Maybe if just there was a decline steep enough, they could just generate like a waterfall graphic. I'm getting anxiety from this. Is it the, the knowledge that we could actually crash and have to reload our save that's giving you anxiety? That there's actual stakes in this uh, mountain mountain pass right here. Is it the knowledge that uh, this river exists in real life in some capacity? Obviously, it wouldn't look exactly like this, but it's a real thing. Crash joke incoming. Already did that on accident. It's so much fun though, just take manual control. And uh, the flying in general just feels so good. Like, the Newman through these narrow passes. And we're out the other side. We did it. Thing's got some speed. Watch the trees, though. They, it ain't over yet. All right, how low can I get? 
<laughs> Don't say that. About this low. It's about how low I'm willing to go to not sacrifice the entire flight again. <laughs> Listen, I gotta keep you guys on the edge of your seat a little bit. Before we go back and put it into autopilot to go the rest of the way. I'm gonna run out of gas. Somewhere, Ace Tech is just laughing. Find out what uh, city this is, chat. There's a little town here. Isn't that cool? Somewhere Ace Tech's laughing. He's like, wait till he realizes he's gonna run out of fuel. Doing all these stupid maneuvers. Annoy the locals <laughs> with low flybys. All right, let's get back on course. That was fun though. Oh, that's definitely not what the... <laughs> hey, somebody in Mexico can confirm that this is... Why would you build a city in here like this? Huh? This is an affront to God. Hubris of man. Yes, I choose the lake and the dry land in the immediate vicinity around it. I challenge you to bring the rain clouds to me. And I will show you what human ingenuity is capable of. <laughs> 30 minutes of rain and they're all dead. The largest man-made dam ever. Artificial reservoirs. Why did nobody build right in the middle of it? Hmm? This is a perfect spot for a secret civilization. <laughs> okay, for anybody that ever watches this clip at Microsoft, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see exactly where this is. Those indicators should be enough to triangulate our position. Because this is the only time we've played this game for... Chat like 150 hours. This is the first time I've ever seen the AI algorithm invert a body of water and land in the whole world that we've flown over. This is like the only time I've seen this, so it's kind of an anomaly. And you can see because it stops right there. So it's clear that the AI knew that there was supposed to be water there. It was just unsure how to, um... Whether to go up or down. I'm not saying it's the only one in the game. I'm just saying it's the only one we've seen. Yeah, it must be... That, that's probably what it is. Mostly lost. Different sources for land elevation and water level. Honestly, I find the bugs like that very endearing. They don't ruin the experience or like make me feel bad. It, it's kind of just like, oh, technology is so cute, you know? It's it's still imperfect, and we can look at it and just like pet the people for the technology. Who lives up here? That's kind of crazy, too. Okay, let's get back on autopilot and let's start our ascent uh, back up into the clouds. Not too fast. 10 degrees is good. We gotta clear this mountain, though. Okay, so let's do... Honestly, I should be okay to just turn on autopilot right now. Should be is the key word. And then we're going to do vertical speed mode. Like 1,500 feet. Back up to... Probably just like 25,000. Sounds like a good plan. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> I'll always remember this time before our robot overlords take us into their thrall. <laughs> oh, back when we knew better than them. Video games are cool, you know? I love this hot rod plane. Look at those heat waves. Blue really pops on that craft. Yeah, I like the livery a lot. found the perfect ratio of speed to zoom. side change our altimeter we're still climbing and we'll continue to climb so torque is high I guess I could just throttle down slightly and that would be fine yeah we're good to go okay back on track we got about 61 to 60 gallons of fuel left Fuel may become an issue. We'll see. Once we get back to cruising and we get the speed that we're looking for, it'll go a little easier. It's going to be a little harder just because I decided to go down and fly through the canyon, which I do not regret. That was fun. That was better than the <laughs> crash that we had. We're going to talk about that. Okay. We might be getting a little bit better view than we normally would because I don't know if real-time weather is here or if this is actually what it would look like anyway. We cannot tweak the weather because of the reload. What crash? Exactly. We don't talk about that. Hey, Parkside. How am I supposed to finish CK3 Vaughn? You had all day yesterday, Parkside. What were you doing yesterday? Uh, speaking of CK3, we might play that again tomorrow. Ooh, that's a big city. Or, Chad, do you guys want to play Crusader Kings 3 tomorrow? Or do you want to play a uh, new first-person medieval game that everybody's playing? That looks kind of... I, 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 can, I can already tell you it looks like a 6.5 out of 10. But I don't know. What's it even called? It's called like... Medieval Dynasty. <laughs> but, listen... Oh, the first review is a thumbs down that says this might actually be my new favorite game. With less than an hour played. And it's a thumbs down. A developer responded. 30, 2,400 people found this review helpful. 34 found it funny. Wow, it's a big discrepancy there. Uh, this might actually be my new favorite game. However, each season lasts three in-game days. In-game days are short. Go hunting, go to a different town. That's pretty much your day in 33% of your season. You 
constantly have to be on the go, thinking five steps ahead to get ready for winter. Please implement longer seasons, or at least the option to extend them. I think 15 would be perfect until then. I can't really recommend it. Developer responded and said, Hello, we're on day one of the early access, so <laughs> you can safely assume we'll do one or another balance pass. This will likely include day season cycles, so stay tuned. We'll try to make the game worthwhile to you. <laughs> we're on day one of early access. <laughs> All the other reviews are thumbs up, except for the ones on the side. Do you guys... Okay, this is true. Do you guys do the same thing? Do you guys value these reviews more than these reviews? I don't know why. The fact that these are smaller, even though they're functionally identical to these, are, like, not as important for some reason. Bigger is, it, bigger is better here, I think. I don't value Steam reviews at all. I don't value Steam reviews individually. I value them as a collective. Because I can see what popular opinion and general consensus is. And that's important. It's kind of like, like Steam reviews to me are the equivalent of getting an opinion from Family Feud. Okay? Family Feud isn't the end-all be-all of what people think about something. But it does give you a big sample size. And I know that out of 100 people polled, this many people thought X. And that can be valuable. Just use gameplay footage and streamer gameplay to decide? Well, I mean, <laughs> you are here, after all. There is some streamer gameplay to be had here, so I don't doubt that for a second. But yeah, my only fear is it's early access medieval survival game. And uh, to me, that says six hour stream. But you know what? Six hour stream doesn't mean a bad thing necessarily. However, I do value some people I follow's opinion more than others, and Splattercat said... Uh, really impressed with Medieval Dynasty. I expect huge amounts of jank with open world early access survival, and it's actually in really good shape for first build. No crashes, no bugs, no problems, animations look good, world is beautiful, excited. So, I don't know, maybe I'll get this Splattercat stamp of approval to try it out. I'm convinced watching streamers has replaced renting the game to try for a lot of people. Kind of, because honestly that that is an interesting idea. If only because Primo... In a lot of respects, watching somebody play a game does scratch the same itch as playing it, and you get to do it with a bunch of other people at the same time. So if anything, it's more fun than renting a game was, because renting a game was kind of a social experience for me too. You know, I'd go with my friends to Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, or I'd go by myself because I have better taste than them, pick the game and then ask them to come over and hang out. You know, I'm the one that picks the game because I'm the one renting it, which is fair. I'm paying the money. And then we'd all go over and, like, on a Friday night, have an all-nighter into Saturday, get, like, a bunch of pizza, and, like, communally experience the new game. So I can specifically remember one of those games, usually horror games. Condemned Criminal Origins was a fantastic example of that. That game was so scary that I did not want to play it by myself. So getting some other people to come over, passing the controller and jumping when some crazy foaming at the mouth guy jumps out and like swings a, a pipe at you from the darkness. That was good times. I was, I could be pretty annoying though. Like I remember inviting my friends over when I, I got some speakers one time and I made them sit through, this is real. I made them sit through like the THX surround sound noise. I turned my speakers up to maximum and shook the house. My parents were probably like, I'm not gonna say anything, his friends are over. I'm not gonna embarrass him. But I did like the, you know what I mean? Like on max volume, subwoofer turned up to 10 out of 10. I was like, listen to these new speakers, dude. 
And then we turned on fear, and I, I made my friend play fear while I watched over his shoulder, and I knew where all the jump scares were coming, and I just laughed every single time he got scared. I've talked about this before, but it's still true. My favorite jump scare scary game of all time is fear, and it's when, like, the, in the very beginning of the game, you're just walking around, but I was scarred. Once the guy appeared while you're climbing the ladder, and you do the ladder animation, and he's, like, standing right there, because the camera, like, no one's there, and then you guy does the camera animation and looks down and looks back up, and there's a guy right there. And from that point on, I literally will not climb ladders in games without expecting somebody to appear at the top or bottom of it. I just assume there's going to be a ladder jump scare the entire... Uh, the, even if it's a totally unrelated genre, it could just be like an action game. Ladders, though, are the original crawling through, like, a small space loading screen, you know? You know how many games there are? And I'm, uh, obviously we all know the secret of press A to climb through small space. God of War does it. Tomb Raider does it. It's a secret loading screen. Not so secret anymore. Worst kept secret in gaming. But, like, ladders kind of were that for a long time. And you notice how every time there is one of those crawl through tight space loading screens, they always try to get your attention back because they know they're losing you. And they'll do like a grab you on the way out of the, the cave or your character does something and it transitions to a cutscene because they know they just made you walk through a boring enclosure for 30 straight seconds to load. The same thing was like ladders, really long ladder climbing animation. So to get your attention back, they would grab you or the ladder would break and fall or they, they just try to find every single way to try to rope you back in from climbing boring ladder. So it's just advanced to crawling through tight space now. Gaming's come a long way. Hello, Cotton Cuddle, what's up? How's it going? I hate going up or down ladders in Alien Isolation. I didn't really play Alien Isolation. I did a little bit, but it was just so long that I... I think I actually rented it. I know I played it for a little bit. But when I found that it was like a 40-hour game, I was like, mm, I think I'm good. Speaking of Alien Isolation, though, uh, I started watching the new Ridley Scott show. I got HBO Max. They finally got me. So I started watching Raised by Wolves. Watched the first episode last night. Because uh, I kind of wanted to watch it anyways. And Northern Lion was like, yo, it's kind of good. And I was like, oh, okay. I heard like three people that I like on my Twitter timeline said it was good. So I started watching it. Very weird show. Highly recommended. To th <laughs> I've only seen one episode. But it was just so bizarre that I was like right up my alley. I mean, there, there were some things I could nitpick about it. But just in terms of sci-fi show about androids, or rather, um, android wouldn't be the right word, right? It'd be, what do you call hybrid human machine? Is it android? I guess it would be. Cyborg? No, cyborg is like augmented human, right? Maybe, it, I think android is the right one. Yeah, but it's a little too early just to write Cyborg because everyone else wrote Cyborg. But yeah. I'll talk about it more in just a second. I want to scroll up in chat real quick. I'm going all the way to the top. <laughs> I went too far up. You guys are talking about reviews all the way up here. Gamer Deathbot already? Wow, Gamer Deathbot, you're fast. I scrolled up and saw Gamer Deathbot. That's not what I wanted to see. I think, oh, 1RA asks what my computer specs are, and Liuta added the PC. Okay, thank you. I saw that question. Hopefully that answers their question. I just started playing this again, and it's a lot. Uh, Flight Sim? Commandant, it is a lot, but you can step it up as you want. 
ton of fun, though. We're at 25,000 feet right now. Completed our climb a little bit ago. And we are passing CMT. So why don't I figure out where we are. Southeast of MMSC. San Cristobal de las Casas National Airport. Okay. So here we are on the map map. Ooh. We're getting there, chat. So, we should be... able, at this stage... To throttle up slightly. Ooh, too much. We actually had a perfect. We're gonna torque. 322 knots, true airspeed. And also. I think we are now crossing into... I love how this was going to be an hour and like 40 minute flight until I crashed. <laughs> and then started like sightseeing. And now Gamer Deathbot's already here. Whatever, chat. I'm buckled in for the long haul, okay? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, we're coming into Guatemala now. It's a, it is a really far flight. This is the longest in terms of sheer distance that we've flown on the around the world so far. So we started in Tegucigalpa, or we started in Mexico City, heading to Tegucigalpa. So we are, I think, just now crossing into Guatemala, and then we'll be in Honduras. So, uh, El Salvador will be coming up on the right, as well as Guatemala City, and I have no idea how to say this. Is it, like, Quetzaltenango? Quetzaltenango? Chimaltenango? Or Quimaltenango? Guatemala's got uh, some beautiful mountains as well. There's Weiwei Tenango. Chat, this is the coffee! Weiwei Tenango, I've got the gua, you have to trust me on this one, but I can I can bring the beans up. Maybe I'll make a second coffee. I chose the right day for that. These are beans from Guatemala that were imported to Vegas and roasted in Vegas, and I got them with the sample pack. So I'll bring some beans, and I'll give you guys a look at them. I'll give you some close-up, high-res camera bean shots, okay? <laughs> I really don't know much about Guatemala at all, to be honest. So let's learn a little bit. Guatemala's got some awesome sights to see. Ital Air is going around the world, and now you're going to... So... The word Guatemala means, or just Guatemala itself means, land of many trees. Guatemala's been inhabited for 20,000 years? Wow. Boomers, am I right? Hey, what do we got here? 21 dialects spoken in Guatemala. Guatemala is a leader in blue denim production. Well, I don't have uh, blue denim on right now, but I got uh, I got some denim on. Guatemalans invented the first ever chocolate bar. Oh, thank you. Okay. Guatemala just moved up the list towards most important area of the world. They call chocolate the food of the gods. Why was I not born there? There are more than 30 volcanoes in Guatemala. <laughs> it's not a huge place. Um, the 
The most noteworthy is Tahumoko, the highest peak in Central America at a whopping 4,202 meters. There are three active, Fuego, Pacaya, and Santiqua Santia Uito. I don't know how to say that. Okay, let me show you some pictures. I would not want to live... Oh, you got me. Hold on. There we go. Here's the volcano that I would absolutely not want to live under that we just talked about. How come ATC you only talk to me when I'm doing stuff? One, two, three, decimal nine. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, and then... We've got... Some Mayan ruins. And these... Uh, are at Tikal or Tikal, Tikal National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, embedded in the jungle. I think they have a board game about that. Tikal. I've definitely seen one. They do have a board game about this, and I think it's actually supposed to be pretty good. Hey, chat, you guys want to play a board game? <laughs> I can't show you because it's a web P, which should be deleted from the internet. So instead, I will save it in paint. Which is like six extra steps. You guys want to play? Dude, it's got some nice looking pieces. If that's what the base game looks like. Maybe they got like a deluxe edition or something. The Tikal board game. No. That's okay, I wasn't asking you. Early morning stream. Yes, Sonic fan. I actually, we should start over three hours ago. Okay. <laughs> Glad you could finally show up. I saw somebody else. Uh, behind the sofa. What's up? Zard says, I joined this community somewhat recently. Enjoy your brief stay. But have heard tales of playing Gungeon. Do you plan on checking out some other roguelikes like Spelunky 2 or Hades? Uh, I did play a bunch of Gungeon. And I think it's really great. I think it's so good that I put it... Ooh, look at these. I put it in my... Nexus GG shop. Down below. Highly recommended. Uh, I played Risk of Rain 2 a little bit. Not much. I think it's a lot of fun. Spelunky 2 is something that I'll probably literally never play. <laughs> because I'm going to be so bad at it. And I just don't have the patience to learn it. I remember Spelunky 1 kicked my ass. And uh, I only played it a few times and was like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing here. It seemed like well put together, and it seems... I think Spelunky 2's joy, and Spelunky in general, is that it's pleasant. I think the sound effects are really good, and everything is very deliberate in that game, and that's what makes it fun to watch. But I'm not a deliberate person. Well, I am, but I'm also not at the same time. As for Hades, I actually do own Hades, and I'll end up playing it eventually, but I don't know when. I just have to be in the mood for it. Because I know they just released, didn't they? Didn't Hades, like, just actually come out? Dude, Guatemala looks awesome. 
flying through that looks like a ton of fun. It's so far away. It's hard to fathom that it's... Like, cause it looks so close, but we're not only with 20,000 feet up, we are way above the clouds now. The weather is likely to completely change once we uh, transition into the next flight, but that's okay. I did what I could do. We had, even if we crashed, it was worth it. Full release was like two days ago. Have you guys played Hades? What do you think about it? If you have. While you're answering that, I'm going to look at some different little things on the screen. Kind of play with. We got like a little mini map right here. Pretty cool. PFD map settings. Don't know if we're really tweaking this or not. Attitude overlays. Got a little heads up here. Should be a little wind indicator as well. There we go. About four knots at 270 degrees. Just clicking buttons to see what happens. OBS, dude, you can stream on this plane? Streamer plane confirmed. These buttons don't seem to do anything. Sox have any problems with autopilot? Not on this plane. Well, okay, I had one, but it was after I crashed and reloaded, so I kind of blamed that. It tried, it tried to nosedive me. But this is the this is really the first flight that I've done since the new patch. I know I've heard that there were maybe some issues with some other pl like planes that exist, but I haven't noticed any problems on this one aside from what happened immediately after I kind of had to reload. I didn't say it was a bug. I said it was a problem. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> Almost nosedived us into the earth. Torque's at about 95%. Prop is stable at 2,000. Internal turbine temperature is good. Oil pressure is good. Oil in general is good. Fuel's at about 50, a little under 50 gallons. Can actually see amps on this. Oh yeah, someone mentioned this earlier. Uh, you can see your trim here. That's a really neat indicator. And your flaps are indicated here. So this, you all know what flaps are. Up, take off and landing position. This is aileron trim, rudder trim, which I don't even know how to set rudder trim. Maybe I'm setting rudder trim and I don't even realize it. And then nose down, nose up. Right there. Super cool. Anything in particular, Brimo, that you're curious about? Did they implement VNAV in the G3000 in this patch? Hello there. I wish I could answer your question, but I don't know the difference between any of the Garmin. To me, they're all the same Garmin. <laughs> I don't know which one this one is versus the other ones. But they had some pretty cool patch notes. Am I right? Your stream times are adjusting for daylight as you circumnavigate. Tim the Sorcerer, sometimes, yeah, we're just doing a really, you know, unique stream today, starting super early, got some in-flight meals planned. Honestly, it's still, it's only 8.30. I would feel kind of bad doing the in-flight meal already, so we'll, we'll give it a little bit of time. I'd like to eat a regular lunch, maybe at a, like 11 or 12, so we might, I, I had like a little uh, sandwich before the stream. So we're going to do it. Let's do our first in-flight meal at like a normal lunchtime in a couple hours, maybe a few hours. We're going to do a community flight later on. That'll be uh, some time from now. And we should do three flights today, hopefully. We'll see. We might, we might not. Let's do what we do. 
We got a big one coming up. The next one's gonna be huge, dude. What's hilarious is we're going a fraction as far, but it's gonna take significantly longer. Okay, I wanna look at some of the other autopilot selectors here. This is the heading selector. If you don't wanna have the nav mode on, you can custom your head customize your heading. Approach mode. I really don't know how approach mode works if you don't have a, a approach logged in the computer. It may not. Turn back course mode on. Do I need flight director on? Can someone remind me what flight director does? Transfer autopilot to the right PFD. I don't know if that's for your co-pilot. You're asking about vertical nav mode, V-nav mode. I haven't really played with that at all. Played with FLC only once. We could try doing FLC on the descent instead of vertical speed and like play with that again, just as an experiment. It's 1227, can I have my lunch already? <laughs> no in-flight breakfast. We had the breakfast uh, before takeoff. If you guys weren't here, you didn't get a complimentary uh, bite out of my chicken salad sandwich. Can you have co-pilots in this? No, not other players. Um, if you need to go do something, you can pass control to an AI. So you can set control aircraft and they can manage radio comms and help you with the checklist. So in that sense, you have like an automatic co-pilot autopilot person you can pass controls to like if you wanted to play with one of the autopilot settings and let them kind of take it over you could do that and also if you have a plan logged you can skip through time with the travel to map so if i wanted to go to approach final or just taxi you can skip the real time aspects but I try not to do that unless the game crashes or unless I crash. Omega Early Stream. Hello, Dorito. You are here just in time for soon to be our descent into Honduras. Recently crossed into Guatemala, and we are approaching Honduras now. I just woke up, turned this plane around, I forgot my toothbrush. You'll be able to get one in Tegucigalpa. <laughs> but yeah, the person who was asking, who asked about multiplayer earlier? I kind of just gave you, like, someone Someone asked how the state of multiplayer was. I think they recently updated the servers, like, improved the infrastructure. But you can already see your friends in the game. You guys can do coordinated flights. You can meet up at an airport, take off from the same airport, and uh, go wherever you want in the whole world, dude. It's all there. Full multiplayer support. And uh, dynamic multiplayer where you can just see other players flying around. If you want to do that as well. Cheap way to check if your live weather is to set your altimeter. If it goes to 29, if it goes to default, then it's either fake weather or the slim chance that IRL it's 2992. Well, it's 2992. So I kind of knew I wasn't live weather just because of the crash and it being grayed out. But I assumed that it would reload the weather that we had in the flight that was saved. Right? So I don't know. What would it auto-populate? I assume it's still correct time. Yeah, time's still good. 9.22 local. I think... Oh, let's look at uh, how weird this is. We looked at this before. Dude, time zones are crazy. Let's 
Okay, so check this out. We actually we actually gained an hour by flying southeast. Think about that. Look at this. So we started here in Mexico City, where it is now 10.32, two hours ahead of Pacific time, where I am. And we're flying, since we just went into Guatemala, we actually gain an hour back, even though we're going east. So this yellow here is central time in the Americas. And notice how this west northwesternmost part of South America is also in central time, even though it's not even close. Now, mountain time is in the orange, right? Denver time, Salt Lake City time, and some uh, New Mexico time. So what, you have to go from mountain time across central back to mountain. Once you get into El Salvador, and uh, Honduras and Guatemala, which is where we are. So we skip that. We go mountain, central, mountain, central, and then finally eastern. <laughs> so even though normally we only have to go two time zones to get from mountain to eastern, we now have to go one, two, three, four <laughs> time zones to get back to Eastern, and two of them are the same. I don't... It, uh, it makes no sense. But, indeed, we are back on the central... We are back on mountain time right now, where it's only one hour ahead of where I am. And then we're going to go back to two hours ahead, and then finally Eastern. How do I get this to go away? There we go. Very confusing stuffs. But fun fact that I did not know about time zones before. I love just seeing this and being like, nobody lives here, right? And then like, oh, there's a road right there. And like people, oh yeah, people live there. People live everywhere. Oh. <laughs> I like how the, um, the other plane, like Plane Pog, that we've got has its own face. And then this plane has its own expression. that it's got like this big whisker mustache going on here huge nose and it's just happy to be here you know <laughs> wario plane <laughs> it kind of is He's a little bit more purple. Dodo Airlines. Crossing over Guatemala now. Didn't... Okay, so there's got to be some volcanoes out here. Didn't I say there were 30 volcanoes in Guatemala? There's got to be at least one around us right now. Gorgeous day today, though. You are far too north. Far too north of what? 
there's Tegucigalpa right there. We're, we're on a very coordinated flight. So what's the deal? This around the world in 30 planes all in one stream? No, 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 no. This is stream four. Uh, this is going to be a months-long journey. But uh, the premise is, and this is one exception because I literally can't change it, uh, we are flying real-time, real weather, so we might have a, a hiccup here or there because I had to reload a save, and that kind of screwed up the live weather, but it's still live time of day. We're flying real-time, real weather uh, as much as possible. So I woke up specifically early today so we could catch the sunrise in Mexico City, and we're going to be flying all day until sunset. I am flying every single plane in the game, all 30 of them, many for the first time, including this one. This is my first time flying the TBM 930, so still got a lot to learn about it, and uh, a lot more I could probably take a look at here on the dash and on the menu, but there's no rush. You know, you can learn one, as long as you learn in like one new thing every time you fly, you're doing pretty good. No expectations that I'll memorize an entire plane and then switch to another one. So every plane's gonna be flown at least once, uh, some much more than one time. And we are taking a very scenic tour around the world, gonna be visiting all the continents of the world and trying to get a nice sample of the geography, the topography, the culture via some learning from other resources like Google Maps, uh, reading about different, we've been doing some Yelp reviews, reading about restaurants in different areas. That was especially helpful in the United States where I could, you know, all the reviews are in English and not translated. So that's a little easier to do. And just getting some fun facts about the area, learned a little bit about Mexico City on the way out. Probably could stand to learn a little bit about Honduras on the way in would be nice. And just trying to kind of use it as a learning opportunity. We're tracking it in a bunch of different ways. Grugenvich just linked the exclamation plane command. You can follow our trips so far via the Google Earth map, the plane log. I've got a physical map that we're going to be updating between streams. And we've got some other special events planned. Today is going to be the in-flight meals. <laughs> And also a community stream every once in a while. We're going to be doing an art stream. We've got some other specialty dedicated streams that we haven't even talked about yet that are in the plans for later on. And uh, I've actually got another thing that we can start doing today as well. Just remind me, if I forget, after we land and after we get back to the main menu, we've got another kind of cool thing to set up. So I've got two, two new introductions today. And we're just using it as an opportunity to, to kind of hang out, enjoy the world, see a little bit outside of our own box and bubble. Because at least for me, I'm not really going anywhere. And it's it's lovely to just use Microsoft Flight Sim as an excuse to see, you know, areas of the world that I'll probably never be in real life. And also learn a little bit about the people that live there. Because it's nice to kind of put a personal touch and, you know, humanize the map, to some extent. Peepo Company. Hi, Winsor. Where are you at now? We are uh, in Guatemala, heading into Honduras. So, we'll be there about 146 nautical miles. I feel like we're going slow, but we're really not. We're, we're going to be there in about 26 minutes. So what I'd probably like to do is just start a very gentle uh, decline. Now, this would be a good opportunity to learn how to use... Is it FLC? Is that the one that kind of uses your own momentum to go down? Is there anything special I need to know about this? Remind Etal of cool thing. But good morning, everybody. It's 8.42 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. We've been streaming for about three hours already. And we'll be... Good landing. Take a nice little... We might take a couple BRBs. I might take a coffee BRB once we land, and then a in-flight meal BRB at like 11, 30, 12 for lunch. Sound good? 
Well, it's not going to be a BRB. It's you're going to be there. <laughs> but I mean like a pause in the action, right? Oh, I need coffee. Thank you for reminding me. But yeah, I might I might get a coffee refill because it's too early to drink a Coke. I'd just rather have a second cup of coffee. This is going to be a big day. I'd rather save my, my carbonated beverage <laughs> for later on. This is an awesome looking area. Okay, so let me get... Um, how do I do this? Do I just turn on FLC? What, what do I need to select to use FLC, I guess? Just set a new altitude. If we're at 25,000 feet, and we're going 500 feet per minute, and I'm going to go down 10,000 feet, that's 20 minutes. Okay, so yeah, we can kind of need to get this going then. Let's go down to 9,000. Set FLC mode on. So what do I want to what do I want to choose here? Like a speed? What, what should what, what should my speed be? Throttle down to descend. Okay. What's my throttle at? It's being very like sticky like 53% it sticks. Probably it's just one of the designated spots. Throttle down more. Or are we good? Hello, Asha. What's up? Do you have a little fold-out tray on your seat? Or are you an amateur RPer? <laughs> Do you see a fold-out tray? Okay, that's for you guys in the back. Actually, uh, you may not even have one either, but this plane has like some nice carbon fiber right there. Yeah, I feel like I did something wrong. I've only used FLC once, so I really don't know what I'm doing. All right, there we go. So I just need to find a balance. It's hard to do. I'm only at 36% throttle. My speed's going way down, but my FLC is at 220, and I'm not declining, so I guess I'm messing up. Plane's so crazy powerful, you have to more or less descend at idle. So if my speed's going down, shouldn't it be trying to keep 220 by descending? Isn't that the whole goal of this number? How is this tiny plane fitting 400 people? I, I mean, I'm not gonna, I, I probably just have a setting messed up, I don't know. Maybe FLC got turned off? No. It's like, what if I increase the selected airspeed? Well, I don't think we know how to do it. So since I don't know how to do it, I'm just going to go back to vertical speed. We can always um, try again, you know, next time. Because the VS mode works perfectly. And we can speed up. A little bit. Not too much. SPD is the right mode for that, I think. Switch to mock units. Okay, so switch to FLC, mock units. Point four nine three. I assume that's 207, roughly. 
then what? Throttle down? Leave SPD on and not FLC? SPD is just, yeah, it just changes from uh, not to mock. I don't think that does anything functionally outside of just tell you a different numerical. It's like converting miles per hour to kilometers per hour. I think you're pushing all the right buttons. All right, Ace Tech gave me the clearance to just go to vertical speed mode <laughs> and call it a day. Because we know we can descend on autopilot with this. For sure. And uh, we got about 20 minutes. So I'm going to say about 800 feet per minute would be nice. And we will start our descent to 9,000 feet. And while that's going on, if we look at the map... We can see this is the edge of Guatemala, this orange line, into Honduras. So, if we look at a real map, you can see that we are... Well, actually, maybe not. I think it is. El Salvador should be on the right, Belize should be on the left. It's a good plane, though. It's a good thing you don't need a passport for this game. Well, you guys need passports. I'm the pilot, so they let me in. No matter what. You know, because I can do what I need to do. Tegucigalpa is the capital of Honduras, set in a central valley surrounded by mountains. It's known for well-preserved Spanish colonial architecture. Dude, Baroque interior. I remember studying Baroque in... Humanities. Baroque architecture. Let me look up. Some Honduras. Tegucigalpa Airport itself. You guys want to watch a video? You guys want some in-flight entertainment? Okay, so I just want to preface this by saying this video is very blurry because it's from 2007. So you guys are about to see 13-year-old history, okay? this You can count the pixels that are in this movie, all right? However... It's still real. This is a... I think American Airlines landing in Tegucigalpa prior to the May 2009 1,000-foot uh, extension increasing the length of the runway from 6,100 feet. It was 6,112 6, to current as of, I guess, after 2009, 7,096 feet. Combined with further blasting of hill on approach, which somewhat decreases the risk and approach angle. So this is how they used to have to land. <laughs> uh, this American Airlines flight into Tegucigalpa. All right, you guys ready to go back into the past? So it's not going to be nearly this scary for us because we're in a tur single engine uh, turboprop. This is like a, a passenger landing. Check this out. This is the airport we're coming into now. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> they 
there's the runway. <laughs> uh, there it is. And they have to do a crab landing because of the crosswinds. They have to land sideways and crab it on in there. I just love this part right when they go over. Because you think like, oh, they're coming in. The, air, the runway is probably like over there, bottom right. Boom, over the hill. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Like, the camera pans down, there's like a bunch of people just standing on the hillside. How are we doing? We're still at 20,000 feet. We got about 15 minutes. Uh, estimated time en route. Yeah, we should already be well in Honduras right now. I think. Yeah, because, uh... It starts right about here and kind of goes around. So El Salvador is currently to our right. Because we should be, like, directly south of this little inlet heading into the Goose Golfa. So if you look at the map, see that little water inlet directly south of that? We, so we are in Honduras, like right in here. So El Salvador should just be right here to the right. So we take a look outside. You can probably see the not much, but there might be some, like the actual city, El Salvador should be over there somewhere, through the fluffy cloud cover. And then Belize is that way. Kind of just threading the needle right between both of them. Talks may be landing on worst airports ever. Um... Not necessarily, but we have done some of the challenge ones. And we've got some really good airports lined up for this around the world trip. So we're going to be threading in some, some interesting landings for sure. I still think Tegucigalpa is going to be a fun landing, even though we're not a passenger plane. Because it's not the biggest landing strip in the world. And I've never landed this plane before. So that presents its own fun challenges. But um, we've done a couple of those in... Like, the, the game itself has some, like, dangerous or famous airport challenges, and those have been really fun, like, landing challenges where you can get a high score and stuff. Can you pay for different plane models and paint and whatnot? Uh, the liveries, like, the skins are just downloads for free. But they have 20 planes in the base game, which is either $60 or you can get it on Game Pass. Uh, I, I bought it. And then they have two different step-ups. There's like a deluxe edition and then like the super deluxe, whatever it's called. So the first deluxe has five more planes and ten more airports that are like handcrafted airports. They, they still have 37,000 airports in the game. They're just like AI generated. Uh, but they have like all the detailed ones. And then they have the super deluxe, which is like another five planes on top of that and another ten handcrafted airports. But yeah, the, the, the airports that are handcrafted are still in the game, but it's as generated by the AI. So 20 planes by default. The plane noise is freaking out my cat. She, I think she thinks it's a swarm of wasps. <laughs> oh, I see. High code effects. And QT, QT, etc. Is it true you woke up at 6 a.m. to fly today? No silent serenity. I woke up at 3.30 to fly today. And I'm having a great time. 
So thanks everybody for hanging out with me. I'm just in a really good mood. Except for the part where I uh, crashed the plane <laughs> and had to restart the game. That wasn't so good, but it's all right. All right, estimated time, 12 minutes. We might want to expedite our descent here. Let's go like a thousand feet per minute. But yeah, this was a uh, planned stream. I've been talking about it. You guys would know that I was going to start at 5 a.m. today if you, I don't know, went to my other streams or used the stream command in the chat or looked at the title, okay? You would know, fake fans. Or looked at the Discord, okay? Why aren't you even in my Discord? I've been busy! You got a completely different early demographic right now. I like seeing all the new faces. All the VOD watchers, all the people um, who are typically the ones... I love that the, the people who typically people arrive and go, Uptime? Why are you still awake? Are now the regular viewers, and then the typical regular viewers are the ones people arriving and going, Why are you streaming right now? So it's literally like the shoes on the other foot. <laughs> All right, 15,000 feet. So by just using simple math, it would take 10 minutes to get down to 5,000 feet. Now, you see that there's a mountain ahead of us, and that's a good sign because it means you saw the mountain in the video, dude. They're just like buried in there, surrounded by mountains on all sides. Now, we might have to do a pass. And that's fine, it's not gonna count as an error because I don't remember what runway we're supposed to be landing at, which would tell me my heading. And also, we do not have an approach. We are not being guided in by ATC. We are doing, uh, we're flying by VFR. So we're gonna contact Central America Central Center. Central America Center minus 815,200 feet. Since we have no programmed approach. Central America Center, continue as planned. Dude, we got some new uh, Microsoft voices in the game. New ATC traffic control voices. Pretty awesome. It's not just Microsoft Sam every single time now. So we should be going to MHTG. Is it too early to tune them? I guess I could tune them on the other one. And we could probably just request a full... Do I need to request an airspace transition? We've already got a flight following from Central America, so they know that I'm here. But, um... We are only 45 nautical miles out. Less than 10 minutes. Well, now I don't have any options. I would say probably just request full stop landing. Tonkinton Tower minus eight is four four miles. Tonkinton. Request with Oscar to land. Minus eight Tonkinton Tower. Request with Oscar to land. Left base runway two, two zero. So we need to approach from the north. Make left base runway two zero minus eight. We're currently approaching from the northwest. So uh, two zero south is eighteen. So that'd be one eight. So we got eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So the runway we need to be coming from this way, going that way to two zero. You see what I'm saying? So we need to kind of get north of the runway, we might have to just take manual control, which is fine, once we kind of clear this little area. Get a nice little view of the landscape around here. As we continue our descent. Oh, 
look at subs after we land. Thank you, though. I can see right now Masahika Kobe, so I may as well. But those of you who were here before, I'll get you then. Thank you for subscribing. called. <laughs> oh, I'm playing so happy. It's like uh, Thomas the Tank Engine playing. Alright, we're, we're down to 11,000 feet, 7 minutes or so. I'm gonna say, chat, that this is... We can't really go too much lower because of the mountain right there. I'll, I'm gonna say we could probably make it to 8,000. Which we will be at in 3 minutes time. Sorry, I had to turn around for a sec. What are you guys asking? Somebody link a Google Maps? What is this a Google Map of? It looks really cool. I made a pet the plane emote in Discord, by the way, Italics. Oh, baby. I had a weird dream. You were live and took off in a plane, then I sleeped, and now I'm here. <laughs> uh, hi, Kyra Toby. <laughs> Did you wake up, people arrive, then go back to sleep? Instead of just staying in bed? Hi, Nom Nom. Alright, what's, what's this uh, Google Maps that I'm looking at here? I'll show you guys what I see. One sec. I'm trying to pull it up now. Okay, fit to screen. A link of the lake that was bugged. Oh, is this the one that was like raised up super high? That's really cool. Look at these, look, this boat looks insane. Hey, look, it's us. <laughs> is this chat on the back of the airplane? Yeah, it is. I feel like driving this, you're so high up. Look, got the hand on the throttle. Noom! It looks awesome. It's us! It's you! Also, where are you? I can't see you. There you are. Alright. We're coming in, dude. This is basically the final approach. Oh, welcome to Honduras, everybody. Local time is 10.07 a.m. Still before noon, still time to get some tasty snacks. Before your lunch, which will be assigned in about uh, two and a half hours or so. Hope you had some good breakfast before the flight, because we're not going to feed you. Ever. Not on this flight. Local weather. It is uh, 76 degrees Fahrenheit in Tegucigalpa, that is 24C. Looking partly cloudy today, so not uh, not entirely wrong, even though we're not on live weather. Humidity at 72%, wind at about 8 kilometers an hour. 
Looking like a little bit of rain for the rest of the week on Tuesday and beyond with thunderstorms from Wednesday all the way past Saturday. Predicted precipitation today only 13%, not likely. I'm going to consume chat. Oh. <laughs> I feed on you. We're at 8,000 feet, and we probably need to drop this... I would say to 5,000. Be there in about three minutes. So we're going to go pretty fast all the way down. Let's go ahead and zoom this map in. That'd be super handy. And see if we can get eyes on, um, I think the airport is going to be just on the other side of this, actually. I might even be able to make out one of the lights right there. But like I said, we need to approach from the north. There's a coffee gnat in my room. They're multiplying. Brimo, I'm glad you have one and not me. As we are getting ready to come in for final here, let's double check ATC and um, we've already requested a full stop and we got to continue as planned. Are they going to update us or no? Also chat, this is, this is a pretty steep little like, do I need to get any clearance permission? I, don't, I can't announce. I already requested a full stop landing. Minus, oh. To land two, zero. Two, seven, zero seven. 270 at 7. That's different. That got patched. So wind used to be like 3 knots Clear, across the entire eight, world. Zero, minus eight. I'm going to go ahead and disengage autopilot. Start slowing down. Throttle down here so we're not going quite so fast. We are cleared to land runway 20, chat. Five thousand feet right here. But yeah, before it was like three knots everywhere. And uh, some people still said that there are a few issues with weather between flights or like airspeed kind of resets to three knots. Ooh, look at this. I'm going to close this, or at least minimize it. It's nice to have some kind of variation, like in this case, the seven knots. Dude. Jam-packed in here. Full send. That's what we got. One flat city. What do you mean, flat? Do you see the mountains that completely surround this? They're building up on the hills. Look at that, there's a river that runs uh, right through it. Okay, so. I can see uh, the airport is just to our right. We're gonna need to continue to slow down. I'm gonna do like a big loop because the airport should be just outside the passenger and behind us. So we need to be approaching like full south. So we're gonna do a nice little pass. Dude, we're still going 200 knots. I'm gonna continue to slow down. Kind of make a big loop here. The airport should be directly behind us at this stage. Pretty tall building on that hill. Just kind of enjoying the sights. I know where the airport is. All right, let's go ahead and make the turn. Don't worry, chat. You're not even on this plane. It's okay to make a steeper than average turn here. I'm gonna go ahead and get flaps down to level one. Control our speed. And so what we're looking at is we know 2-0. 
which we're coming up on 2-3, two, 2-2. Three, two, two. And two zero. So we can make some adjustments as needed. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, descend even more. Should be just right over there. All right, we got this. Got eyes on the airport. Speed's looking good. That's it. I don't know if we are low enough. We're at like 4,000 feet. I can do this. We don't need that big of an approach. Gonna go ahead and get landing gear down. Chad, do you trust me? Do you trust me, Chad? <laughs> no. Why not? Flaps are full down. Why don't you trust me? Hmm? Easy peasy. Told you I had it. That was smooth. Not a great approach, I'll give you that. But a good landing. Tires popped. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss that landing. Okay, so if I could do that differently, obviously I would have had a better... Listen, flying VFR is tough, because when I don't set an approach, I tend to underestimate how much distance I need to get lined up, level, and smoothen off. My angle of attack was way too steep. We basically dive-bombed the airport. But, like, all we care about is how we end, baby. You know what I'm saying? Who cares about how we almost ended? What matters is that was a soft touchdown, dead center of the runway, uh, no bounce. Nobody spilled their drinks except for, you know, we were turned at a 90-degree incline on the way in. But other than that, nobody, you know, just buckle up. Okay. Can I request taxi to parking now? Ground minus a taxi to parking. We cleared the runway though. Minus a taxi to general aviation parking. Fire taxi way out the cross runway to Bravo. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxi way out the cross runway to Bravo minus eight. All right, Does, do you think I could find this without turning the taxi ribbon on? That looks like General Aviation Parkway. Using taxiway A, cross runway 2B. That plane looks cool. We haven't flown that one before. Get your binoculars out. He did it. Only a mild endangerment to human life. It was a steep approach. But, listen. I had to show off a little bit because I showed you that video of, like, a passenger plane scraping its wheels on the hillside. And I wanted to give you something exciting as well. You know? A, a little roller coaster of emotion there. You had doubts. You thought there's no way it's going to happen. And then when it did happen, and we had plenty of runway left... The thrill of success. You know? And challenge. It's gotta be like right over here. I'm just looking to see. Usually there's someone ready to wave you if this is where they want you to park. But this is definitely general aviation parking. Like there's a pushback battery car, but they're already like all set up there. All right, do I have to turn on the stupid taxi ribbon? Kind of looks like I do. Really neat flyover, though. I enjoyed um, how this is, like, shrouded in the mountains. Really fun approach. All right, fine. I guess I'll just turn it on. 
The reason I turn it off is because it, it sometimes doesn't update, and then it stays on for the entire duration of the flight as just like a beacon that you never can get back to. Dude, I was going the right... What? Oh, around that way! I did not guess that. Okay. I was going the right way, just not far enough. I thought that there was this was the only side. Nope. I guess we can put flaps. Back up. Chat. I have a minor error committed. Because I was too busy talking to you guys. Forgot to turn my landing lights on. Oh, uh, but uh, it's daytime. Remember last time we had this discussion and chat said, uh, uh, you never turn your lights on during the day. It's stupid. Remember that? Oh. Suddenly, I think you probably changed your mind. Makes sense that would be across the runway. He did tell me that. A cross runway to B. But yeah, this is way back there. They want to hide me. They're embarrassed by me. <laughs> Peepo Comfy, did I miss the landing? <laughs> You did, yeah. It was a good one, too. Chat didn't think I was going to make it. I saw all the panic in chat and in the corner of my eye. I asked if you trust me, and you all said no. And then I delivered you safely on the ground. I said yes. It's not that they change their mind, it's that we always have to be in a direct opposition to you. That's true. Interesting taxi here. They're putting me behind the barbed wire. Okay. I see that you don't trust me. Keeping me away from all the larger, faster, stronger airplanes, putting me with these little gliders. Okay. You don't think I'm as good as them? Yeah, I never would have found this without the assistance. Cool, uh, is this an AI-generated airport? Because if so, it's really neat. Or is this a real one? I think it's... It's a real one, right? This is one of the ones that they hand handcrafted. It looks it. Okay, it wasn't far enough yet. It seems like it's just got a lot of details. Okay, we're good. Parking brake engaged. Yeah, because look at all these, like, hangers. I assume more parking, potentially? I like this little, um... The taxi's really nice here. Shipping cargo containers on the other side. Cool airport, dude. Then there's the main where you would actually have your passengers. And we got a couple of gates. Dude, this would be pretty fun to, uh, for the A320 to take off and land from. That's why they have it as one of the challenges. And of course, the city itself, which we'll be able to see again as we uh, take off here. But I would normally say, let's go reverse down the checklist. But I kind of skipped uh, <laughs> a few of these. <laughs> If I skip the before descent, skip the approach. But to be honest, I did all that. Landing gear down, check, check. Autopilot disconnect, also check. I did turn on taxi lights, I just didn't turn on landing lights. And then we can go ahead and turn off. Pulse. Strobe. And just lights in general. Panel lighting off. I feel like one of these is still on. Okay, crash bar comes down. That just turns off the generator. And electric power. Okay. Oops. Is this fine? I think this is fine. 
I need to turn off the heaters. Bleed goes back to off, right? Ignition down. Boost pump down. AP and trims off. I'm forgetting a couple things. What am I forgetting? Flaps are up. We got a whole shutdown page. <laughs> okay, lights. Fuel selector, man. Fuel selector must be set to manual. Oh, well. I guess that works. That's not really what I intended to do. It was definitely more than 56 minutes. I'll tell you that for sure. I wasn't done. Got that. Got that. Oh, that goes to manual. Flight idle for two minutes. <laughs> uh, I might have just killed the engine before. Oopsie. Okay, we were definitely on flight idle for two minutes, though. But I wasn't on low idle for 15 seconds because I forgot that was a thing you have to do. To move that over there for 15. Then cut off. I turned that off. I still don't know what inert inertial separator really does. Ox boost pump off, check. Generator check. I did these all out of order. I'm sorry. Next time we'll do it in the right order. Crash levers down is like the first thing I did. All right. I did do everything, though. I just did it out of order. We're good. Well done. GG, everybody. First flight of the day. Only took uh, three hours for an hour and a half flight. No problem. No problem. You know what? As long as we had fun. And I did have fun. That was a good flight. Got to got to crash once, fly in that canyon through the river. Get to see a little bit of Guatemala and the rest of Mexico. We are now out of Mexico and into the rest of Central America. So we're gonna be taking off from um, Tegucigalpa and this leg of the flight is gonna be big. It's going to be large. Talks are supposed to remind you of the cool thing you're introducing. I know, you're right. But first, Bespin Cop says plane game for 13 months. That was like an hour ago. And also Naruziko says Itawo 14 months in early stream. Lucky day. Welcome Bespin and Naruziko. Good morning. It's only 9.30 here in Vegas. Big stream today. Lots of fun. Midas is on the floor. What? Do you need to go out? He's confused. He's like, what time is it? I don't even understand. Got a bunch more still planned to go. Really good first flight. The dollar TBM 930 was a pleasure to fly, except for the part where I crashed. Uh, easy landing. That was that was maybe, aside from, I think a, approach was bad, but landing, that was one of the smoothest yet. Why does every Jeff know exactly what inertial separator does? It's a weirdly specific thing. Uh, Mango says, when on, it closes an air intake that prevents debris from getting into the engine. It's for takeoffs and landings, as well as flying through weather. Gotcha. Air intake prevents debris from getting into the engine. Okay, I'll try to remember that for next time. It turns inertia off. <laughs> Let's see what the real, real time weather is. Honestly, it doesn't look any different. So our takeoff is going to be from Tonkontin. We had enough fuel the whole time, too. That was nice. I had 80%. I've already got the flight loaded in, but before we do that, we got the special thing, chat. So uh, I've got some show and tell to do. If you guys will oblige, we're going to take a quick Etel Air BRB before the next huge leg of the flight. Um, this next big, 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 big flight is gonna take all day and we're gonna have the in-flight meals and uh we're gonna have some show and tell right now to do first so stay tuned 
I'm gonna go get, uh, I'm gonna make another coffee real quick. It's gonna take about five minutes. Thank you guys for waiting and for hanging out and for saying hello to a beautiful day alongside us here. But um, it'll take a minute to make some new coffee because I gotta grind those beans. Take Midas out and uh, I don't know if I need a snack yet. Maybe just a small snack. The in-flight meal will do around noon. Normal lunch time. Okay. So we'll be back in about five minutes. Thanks for waiting and thanks for flying. Eat Tal Air. BRB.
Hey. The coffee is almost ready. Thanks for waiting. I have to go back and get it. However... I'll let you take a peek. There's my Guatemala beans, dude. Wait, wait, Tenango. They're all gone. <laughs> Where'd they go? Well, they are about to go. Uh, actually, I just heard a beep. So I'm gonna go grab them real quick and uh, come back and show you some cool stuff. Okay, one sec. Now, actually, Beck, there's that fresh cup of coffee. Mmm. Hot. A little too hot. Let that cool off. So, we just left to Mexico, right? Which means we won't be coming back for a, a while. So, I have decided to commemorate our journeys. conquered Mexico in the form of the air we have established air superiority over America to some extent as well don't worry America will be conquered in time the Ameri I mean the Mexican flag is like I think one of these is incorrect because it's reversed does uh verb face red or green which one's the real one I think yeah, one of these is wrong. Which one's the right one? I think bird faces... Isn't it green? Is this the right one? Is it reversed for you guys? Bird face is green, right? Okay, I want to make sure that I put it up the right way. Because I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna put them back there. You guys think I should put, like, all the flags... Like, right... On that wall? That's, that's the goal. So. 
I tried to stay up for the beginning, but I'm here now. Hello, big bussy boy. The airspace of all of our de jure titles. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure how to hang these up. I guess I could just use the pins. Do you guys think these pins are small enough to not leave big holes in the wall? Dude, we're gonna have so many flags back here. Do you think these are small enough? Use tape? I do have, um, three M strips. I do have a bunch of 3M. How many 3M do you think it would take to hold one of these? If I did it from the middle, I'm afraid it'd be too floppy. I could probably do two 3Ms on the back of this. Let me get some 3Ms. Each layer is going around the world, and now you're going to. pulled paint off my wall once. Uh, trust me, I have, uh, I'm not trying to flex here, but I have used, um, hundreds of 3M strips. I only had one bad experience, and the same thing happened at one of my old houses, but it's because the paint sucked. So 3M, under normal circumstances, is 99.9% .9 effective. I've only had one time where it tore paint off. At the old house, I had all the foam. I probably... Remember I told you guys? You may not have been there, but I, I ripped off, like... I would say close to 100 3M strips. And, uh, got to the point where my hands were bruised. Because every time I pulled one off, it would just pop my hand. So it was like... 70 3M strips, it was like... <laughs> uh, ow! <laughs> Stop! And I was just, like, crying. Because I had to pull them off, because there was only like three days left until I was supposed to be out of the house, and I was just like whining every single time it would slap me. And I was trying to like block it with the other hand, and then it would slap the other hand instead, and literally there were just knots all over both of my hands for a few days. Just thought you should know about that again. Okay, we got... Whole box here. These are the heavy duty ones. I wish I could, I wish they were just longer, because then I could just, if I do two per, that's too many, but if I do one per, that's not enough. How, how do I find like a happy medium? I wonder if one could hold it up. But then, it, then this would just flop over to the side. All right, if you're gonna do it, do it right. If you're gonna do it, do it right. <laughs> okay. You guys get a good sound effect out of that. All right, make sure I put this on the right one. Could zoom in on this, but uh, you can see it. You can see it just fine. Okay. So.
over the thin door. Just like start it up there and then start building it across to the other side. He's gonna have like a hundred flags, possibly. <sighs> Hi everybody, that's just people arriving. We're, uh, we just left Mexico, so we're putting up a, a flag in memoriam of our journey. Um, I, I want to move the camera up, but then I have to move it back, and that's annoying. Okay. How am I going to get it even? Sounds like a personal problem. We're gonna have a lot of flags. So, you kinda gotta think about that. And also, of course, we will pan up and look at them. Honestly, I think that's pretty even. I know you can't really see, but you just have to trust me that it is. Ow. Welcome back. More will appear behind me in time, starting with Mexico. Those will be pretty decent echo dampeners. <laughs> Basically, yes. A different form of audio um, studio foam. Early italics and plane stream. Hi, too many errors. You're just in time for the next flight. Uh, before that, though, why don't we do the map? Let's update the map.
Okay, can you guys see Well, you can't really see very well. Hold on. Also, I know it's a little bouncy. There you go. And here I thought you might be getting those little flags on cocktail sticks. <laughs> Dude, the Mexican flag was like thirty dollars. <laughs> For the, I don't know why, but it was. And uh, you know what? I do it again. <laughs> All right, what uh, what color scheme do you guys want to go with? It was Mexican Independence Day last week. That makes sense. Hello, Secret Warrior. Good morning to you. All right, we've already got uh, blue, blue, yellow, and green pins. Blue, yellow, and green pins are already spoken for. So your options are pink, black, red, purple. Oh, we can't do red. Reds are going to be crashes. Speaking of which, I need to go back and add some crash pins. And also, there's a crash today. I say, uh, orange. Orange is my vote. Orange pins with yellow yarn? No. Orange pins with... What about like a light green yarn? Hello? Focus! There you go. T okay. Grab the pins. They are sharp and pointy. Dude, I can't fish one out of here. It's like it's playing, uh, you want to play a game? Yes, grab a pin if you can. They're all pointing upward. The best way to grab one is when the pin sticks into you. Then remove it from your finger. All right, so here's what we gotta do. piece of this off.
There's the first bit. How do we always end up accidentally picking a pin or yarn that matches the place that it's in? Like, Honduras is orange. I didn't know that when I picked orange, but uh, it's fine. You can still see it. Where's the crash? Where did the crash happen? How early did it occur? Actually, is that available? Did any of the mods happen to catch that? For the Google Earth? Because sometimes, sometimes uh, either Ace Tech or Cairo will uh, put that on the Google Earth page just so I can relive it forever. I want to say... I'm just going to kind of throw it on. It was definitely before we got into Guatemala. It was around there. Because it was before, it was pretty much way before we crossed over into Guatemala. Okay. Looking good. Well done, everybody. The map is updated. Now, let me fix the camera. This may or may not look right. Let's see. Obviously, aside from the blinding sun that's going into my eyes. There we go. All good. Color-coded pins! CO2 Blast with the waves is Eta Plane. Just plain excited to see you this early. Thank you, CO2. You as well. What's today's coffee? I finished off uh, some trial beans. So we did Guatemala Weiwei Tenango beans. And it is delicious. Chat, some guy just said boring see ya and then said lol. Like, I thought you were already gone. What's taking you so long to click that X? Like, just do it. Shit or get off the pot, you know? All right. You guys ready for uh, loading in next flight? People arrive, LOL. Hi, Takia. <laughs> uh, wait until you see this flight plan, okay? I'm gonna show it to you. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do a flag. I know you can't see it right now, but you will. I'm gonna try and do a flag for every country that we physically land in. Not every country we fly over, just countries that we land in slash take off from. We'll see how long I can keep that up. It might not be uh, really achievable, but uh, eventually that wall behind me is gonna be stacked. I do USA, but we're not done with USA because we have to go back. Unfortunately, I have to go back. I'm just kidding. It's going to be great. We got a bunch of awesome plans. But I have to make the loop. So no USA flight. USA flag will be the last one we put on. Just because of that. Okay, around the world, flight. 
This one. This isn't even right. <laughs> this one's not even right. Hold on. That, I mean, it's the correct uh, destination. But I think I made two versions of this. That's the next leg. We're going to keep on going down. Uh, well, it doesn't remember all my spots, chat. What do I do? That was the one we just did, and I broke the game. Okay, okay, well, let's just reset. Apparently, if you try and load three flight plans, uh, the menu breaks. <laughs> well, I uh, did painstakingly set this... This, okay, this flight in particular, I kind of can't just do it. That's why I went and painstakingly set that up ahead of time. You know, to avoid this situation. Simcopter, you can't... You can't, uh... Say hi and like you haven't already been on this stream twice in one stream. You were already here. Don't come back into my stream pretending like you weren't already here three hours ago. I was gone for hours. That's not even 50% of my stream, okay? Well, what? You were gone for two hours? Listen. If you were on some other schmuck stream on Twitch, that may be a whole broadcast, okay? But here, that's less than 20% of our stream. <laughs> Hello again, chat me tell. Shocker, were you already here too? You've been here for seven minutes. You've been here for 10 minutes. Already here can't believe this. Hi guys, says real Taylor Swift. Who has been here for over 50 minutes. Hello everyone, I'm awake now. Kyra Toby did the same thing and went back to sleep and then came back. <laughs> Stupid like <laughs> why people arrive really is one of the best emotes on the platform. <laughs> Nations are born and crumble within the span of an average italic stream. <laughs> hey guys, just got here. How's the flight? Bad. I tried to load my save. It wasn't even the one I wanted, and it crashed. What am I supposed to do with that? Well, it didn't crash. It just bugged. Well, it's a good time to continue to... Be grateful for the fact that they improved the loading times. Your controllers look good? Thank you. They spend an hour and a half before each stream getting ready. Just for the camera. So they would love to hear that. Around the world... Flight plan, dude. This is, I mean... It's either this... <laughs> I can't believe you said hello. <laughs> Yeah, listen. Sim, that's just streamer interaction with chat. The fact that I remember that you were already here. Okay, that that's just a... A pro, not a con. Okay? Think of it less like a chastisement and more like, wow, the streamer really paid attention the first time I showed up and uh, really took to heart the fact that my presence was not only acknowledged, but missed when I wasn't here. See, it's a positive. I'm gonna end up breaking the game again. I'm just gonna let you know. This is the one we just did. Let's go back. All right, it has to be this one. I, I named these, it's not like I didn't name them. This is day four flight, no. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Day four, flight two.
What have I done? I did it! I did it! I am just dumb and clicked on the wrong option. There's two files whenever you make a save. Uh, there's plan.pln and .flt. I think I was clicking on .flt instead of the plan. So it was trying to load like a flight in progress. But we got it. Look at these zigs and zags. Whew! Chad, I hope you're all buckled up. Because this says 147. It's actually a complete fabrication because we are flying the Iconathon! We're busting out the Icon A5 for this Each entire going flight. Around the world, and now you're going to. This whole stretch, dude, is gonna be the Icon. Uh, fan favorite. Look at all these uh, liveries that we've got to choose from. Rocking out some colors. I am a big fan of the red and yellow. This is going, I, I, I'm gonna go back to the map and you're gonna see what this the big fuss is about. I like this one, right? Neon green, that's the one. That's two neon. Gotta go lime. Five hour flight? No, I think more. So we're gonna max fuel. Um, and 150. Wow, that's very generous, game. Chat, too thick to fly with this much fuel? How much fuel do I have to shed to get airborne? Oh, all of it. Dump the co-pilot. Yeah, I guess I could just dump the co-pilot. Bye, co-pilot. Are we going to have to refuel? We are going to refuel, yeah. Oh, I did crash on the last flight. Dude, this is... Here's what sucks about this. Can, can I just take, like, one free punishment that I choose because you guys don't understand tail number um, this is day four flight two flight number I think um, nine you guys don't understand this is going to be about a seven to seven and a half hour journey <laughs> Okay, so if I if I turn a failure on, it's the the whole purpose of this flight is that we are going to be landing. Now, I I just want you to understand, this is not going to be 7 hours until landing. This is going to be about a 7 and a half hour journey with approximately 1 2 3 4 5 landings. We are going to land five separate times on this entire journey, but we're not, hopefully, unless we crash, gonna go back to the main menu one time. The only reason I'll go back to the main menu is because I want part of this to be the community flight. Not the whole thing though, because that would be ridiculous. I just don't, that'd be too much coordination. So what I'm probably gonna do is let the, the portion from Tambor to Sirena be the community flight at the end. So we'll probably just go back to main menu from here. And then bam over to Sirena. Because this is even just this will probably take over an hour. Okay, if you guys want, I could just set up the spin the wheel for the next. I could just bank one spin. And do it on the next one. Delay the punishment for one flight. Two <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> but if okay so effectively if I set up a fail state it's guaranteed because this is gonna be like a seven hour thing 
but it's an Iconathon. We're gonna be in the Icon the whole way. I to, to set this up, chat. <sighs> well, you'll see. Okay, you'll see why this flight's gonna be so special, because there are um, like I said, five landings in one go. But I promise it's gonna be cool. Possibly the coolest landings that we've done to date. And also just flying the icon itself is really fun. So let's go weather conditions, real time, real weather. Uh, we're going to take off from Tonkontin, a general aviation small gate. Or ramp, rather. Doesn't really matter where we end up landing. I'll be surprised if we can do this without having to go back to menu. Is there anything else I need to do before we go ahead and push the button? But yeah, we'll, we'll just delay, we'll delay this, the wheel spin for the next one. Cooler than the time you landed on the prison island? Oh yeah. Chat, you're aware that we're landing five times, right? Fuel's not an issue. We've got uh, multiple places that we can set down to get fuel. Also, as Ace Tech pointed out, uh, the icon apparently runs on car gas. So really, we could just RP fueling at any dock or any place that we land, even in the water. It can refuel in the water. So we can just, we can refuel at any landing, more or less. For RP purposes. So it's not a problem. Plus, a couple of these airports do have refuelability. Depend, it's just wherever we want, right? Okay, I think we're golden. So we'll load in. Dude, I'm so excited. Iconathon's gonna be awesome. You're already cool to me, Italics. Thank you, Sim. Okay, your empty words are a stroke to my ego. It's like, if, if I was a lawnmower right now, that would have been like one rip of the cord, but it takes like at least seven to get me started. You know what I mean? I'm like a lawnmower that has like crusty grass all up under the blades. And you have to like turn me on my side to pull the grass out to kind of get, make it work. However, once you do that, the oil spills out of the top because um, lawnmowers are stupid and you have to drain the entire tank before you can flip it over. It's too much work. Like me. <laughs> Look at this icon. Oh, this livery is great. Wow, my eyes are simultaneously enthused and repulsed. I love it. Nice highlighter, thank you. Did you set live weather? I did, I double checked it. <laughs> Green screen plane. Oh, look at these beauty shots. The icon is super fun, and uh, if you want to do some sightseeing, it goes so slow that you'll get a good view of anything that you're trying to get a look at. It's got good cockpit visibility, um, super common, like, in terms of rich guy plane, two-seater at best. It goes like 85 knots. And it has such a wonderful dash. If you've been scared of trying to learn how to fly some of these smaller planes in the game, it's a good one to jump into because the instruments are so easy to interpret. Like, it, it remember I told you it takes car gas? Well, it kind of looks like a car dash. So, it even measures airspeed. Um, this one measures in knots, but it has kind of like that speedometer look. The altimeter... Your RPM down here. All of it looks like just car dials and stuff. Where's the gas pedal? You don't have a gas pedal, but you do have throttle right here. And your flaps. Lights and big, huge, hard-to-miss buttons. Landing gear lever. And a water rudder. So water landings make this very exciting as well. And we're going to be doing uh, some of those today. All right, before we get this on, I got a little snack. This is not the in-flight meal. This is just a little snack. This does look like a flying car. It does, yeah. We'll eat our in-flight meal in like, one of our landings. I'll probably just pause at one of the landing sites. Maybe the first one, depending on how long it takes. There you are. It's so bright. 
Wow, that camera sucks. This camera is awful. Nice auto exposure, nerd. The darker one probably looks better. I am so excited about this, you have no idea. This has been a very carefully planned route. Too carefully. Okay. Five landings, one trip. Let's do it. Step one. Electrical equipment off. Master on and fuel valve on. Okay. Master's here. We got power. That easy. Uh, fuel valve. I actually don't remember. Been a while since we flew the icon. I remember the parking brake is here. That's the one thing I do remember. Fuel valve on. Chat's already telling me. There's only so many... There's only like three buttons in the entire craft. It over my head! It's the only thing over my head. That's why I can never remember where it is. Baited every single time. Got him. Okay. Strobe. Throttle open half an inch. Okay. Ignition started. Set throttle to 2,000 RPM. Okay. Oil pressure check in the green. So, throttle greater than 200, uh, 2,500 RPM until alternator is out. I think that already happened. Exterior lights as required. Turn on taxi lights. Do you need nav lights on when you're on the runway? Power lever idle. And that's it. We're good to go. That's the whole startup. <laughs> compared to, uh... Compared to our last flight, this is something else entirely. Now, also what's cool, the propeller on this is behind the plane. So if you're curious why you don't see it when we're in the cockpit view, that's where it is. Mr. Streamer, I already finished my breakfast. Are there any pre-flight meals? No, but we will have a mid-flight meal. So we will schedule that in about an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. Hopefully we'll get to our first landing point, you know, take a little... Take in the sights, get some food. Now, I would do pushback here, but this plane is so small, like, who cares? Let's just, uh, contact tower. Actually, we can tune ground. And request. Dude, we got a lot here. We got IFR clearance. Let's do... Request taxi to depart... From the south. Icon 4-2 with Oscar, request taxi for takeoff south departure. Icon 4-2 taxi to and hold short of runway 2 by a taxiway. This is going to be a real easy Contact takeoff. On <laughs> this thing doesn't need a lot of room. Taxi to and hold short runway 2 using taxi. It would actually probably be fine to get pushback on this because the propeller is like behind you. So there's really no danger as far as I can tell. So we're just gonna do it. Let's just get ground surfaces, request pushback. Ground icon 42 requesting pushback. Icon 42 pushback request. Wow, this thing just goes, dude. I think I scared him. I kind of rolled towards him. <laughs> okay, you, uh, you can't even get pushback in this. Normally, what you would do, chat, is before the engine even starts, you would just get out and push. 
Like, with your hands. Not with this fancy device. So, this is something we wouldn't even do anyway. But I'm just gonna do it because I have the power. Let's wait until he gets attached. <laughs> well, the closer he gets, the smaller I feel. There we go, alright. Parking brake off. Have him steer us to the right. Ground icon four two requesting push. Full back. throttle, Don't baby! To the right. right into him. Icon four two, your request has been transmitted to the operator. Okay, that's good. Ground icon four two requesting the end of pushback. Alright, you're good? Yep. Icon you're... four two request to end. That's also back. good, thank you. That was very nice. I appreciate it. Put my parking brake on until he gets out of the way. So tall. Let's go back to clearance. Tune the tower. And uh, we already have uh, taxi clearance. We already got our taxi lights on. Getting some good frames here, like 50 to 60 FPS. He seems very contentious in the middle of the road. Hi, Kalgi, what's up? Biddy, you just told me to go full throttle and then hold on. You're not on the plane yet? Are you just yelling at me to full throttle outside just to dare me? I've only got room for one of you, chat. No drinks on my plane or you're going to stain my white leather seats. Is it wrong that if you have white leather seats, I just assume you're a rich asshole? I think that's one of the tells. Alright. Parking brake off. Give it a little gas. Give it a little more gas. I just had a weird deja vu, dude, like we've been here before, because I, I couldn't give it enough gas. Did I just put the parking brake on? Okay, Max, I actually do have to punch it just to get going. <laughs> Vroom, I guess. <laughs> I, got, I got room for one passenger, and then I got room for one person on top. Or one on each wing. Well, here in beautiful Tonkantin today, chat, it is 11.25 a.m., still just before noon local time. We are on mountain time here in Honduras. We're going to be departing to the southeast, heading towards Costa Rica. We're going to see some beautiful Central America today. Watch out for this truck that's just on the road. Weather is in the 80s, I think, right now. Looks partly cloudy. Wind was about 7 to seven uh, knots when we were on the way in. We got a windsock here. The windsocks do actually work. Like, real physics. Actual wind simulation there. Okay, he has cleared the runway now. Let's request, um... Do we have to request clearance? VFR, right? Yeah. Tonkinton Tower Icon 4-2 ready for departure to the south at runway 2. Icon 4-2 cleared for takeoff runway 2 south departure approved. I like the new voices. Cleared for takeoff runway oh, I need to change the title. Thank you, Kyra Toby. Sorry. I forgot about that. Much appreciated. Oh dang, an icon. It's gonna be... Icon for the foreseeable future. Okay, is it bad? Chad, did you guys see those like four pixels up there? I got like Death Stranding flashbacks and thought it was like the floating shadow guys.
Maybe I should change the title to Iconathon. Thir Around the world in 30 planes, Iconathon. Not actually 30 planes, we just only fly the Icon. Around the world in 30 Icon liveries. Did I like turn, did I turn around too soon? No, the takeoff's right there. Okay, I'm where I'm supposed to be. This is not where you're supposed to take off from. So I'm just gonna hope that the taxi ribbon updates. So if you were landing, or taking off apparently, I believe this is where you start from, because you don't want to do it on the arrows. I don't- do you start behind the line? Like, on it? I don't really know what the protocol is, I'll be honest. I'm not a pilot, chat. I just like to fly video games. If you were landing... Okay, you can take off on the arrows, just not... Okay. Just not land on them. You want to touch down... ...where these... ...are, right? If you were landing, that's where you want wheels down, I think. Fake pilot, that's me. Okay, chat, this is gonna be an easy takeoff, because if you, if you crash on takeoff here... Didn't I request takeoff south? They gave me runway two. Chad, do I have a heading on this? I have a nice screen. Take off two, I should start from the other end of the runway. South departure, why did taxi take me here? I'm literally the reverse of where I'm supposed to be. If I was gonna get to that side, where would I go? Because uh, runway two is uh, south, slightly southwest. Not an error, because I <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, but I'm pretty sure the taxi ribbon didn't update. We'll do it legit. It's heading zero two zero. Okay, yeah, because it would be run it would be runway twenty if it was what I was thinking, right? So this is right. What's the opposite of zero two zero? Chat headings are confusing even after eighty hours in the game. <laughs> they just are. It's hard to think about because they all have the same rollover numbers. Yeah, this is the right one. I let a little shred of doubt get in the way. And then you got 202, which would be really, really minute. Go. Well, what the hell do you think else I'm gonna do? I'm on a runway, getting ready to take off. Progressive jazz rock, okay? Sounds like regressive jazz rock, because, um... You're not thinking very open-mindedly right now. You're very, very narrow. No, I think I'll go back to the gate now. It's okay. They won't even be here in like 30 minutes. They just want to see the takeoff. You thought I forgot the flaps, didn't you? Nope. We'll go 15 degrees. Probably be a little easier. All right, we're at 50 knots. Gently pulling back. This thing only goes like 85 normally. And we are already airborne. Landing gear up. Sit up in the seat a little bit. 
Hello, Tonkantin. And we're out of here. Easy. Icon 4 2 continue for staff departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Okay. Acknowledge. Tonkantin Tower, Icon 4 2 continue for south departure. We're going about 65 knots. Let's go ahead and get flaps up. And enjoy the view over Tonkantin, Honduras. As we start angling back to the south to kind of get on our, our trail, we flew over that little hill with the buildings, like the, the tall kind of cone, not cone, cylindrical building on the way in. Beautiful clouds in the sky, weather looks nice. Awesome airport. Mountain Dew sponsorship, I wish. Hey, what's up, Wage? We just took off. And uh, buckle up because we got a big journey ahead of us. This is a really nice plane. It is a really nice plane. They kind of market this as like the commercial for it's kind of weird. They have like an IRL. Um, it, it's it's all, odd to have a commercial for it because it's extremely expensive. Obviously, so only a handful of people are even able to buy it, right? And out of that, you have to be able to fly. But it seems like it's kind of like rich person getaway type of plane. You know what I mean? Foot cam frozen. It's not. It's, it's not frozen. I just saw it move. Why is it expensive though? Because it's an airplane. The commercial for it's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, we we might watch it actually. Because Eaton Air is going around the world. And now you're going to... We'll take a look at it. Goodbye, Tonkontin. I enjoyed, uh... My stay. Say goodbye to Honduras, chat. Lol, their website shows its wings folded up being towed by a Tesla. Yeah, that basically sums up who the market intended audiences all right we got some we got to get some air all right i'm gonna trim nose up now because i can see this mountain dude do you see this we're gonna have to go full throttle for this climb So much fun starting, first of all, this is, like I said, the, the longest, hopefully uninterrupted flight that we, I even have planned, period. So this is going to be an achievement of monumental proportions just to complete it with no flaws. Because I have to land five times. Eatal Air is going around the world, and now you're going to... Well, besides that, I'm just excited to know that we got the whole day ahead of us, because... I wouldn't mind doing a night flight today, but I was just getting kind of, like, tired of having to concede. Like, oh, all right, we did a one, like, mostly daytime flight. Now it's, now I gotta stick to my guns. I said that we were gonna do real time, so I guess it's night now. Like, begrudging. I just enjoyed um, getting such an early start, and I, I can look at the clock and like, wow, it's only 10.30, guys. We still got in-flight meals coming up. Going to Costa Rica. Got some really cool stuff planned for this particular leg. All right, I'll tell you the first place we're going. You want to know the first place? We're going to land in a volcano. That's uh, the first stop on this particular flight. <laughs> like actually in one <laughs> so that's kind of why I'm excited figure I'll just tell you now what's a uh, like good operating height altitude wise for the icon
Part of what makes the Icon expensive is it's a lot easier to get the license for one compared to a normal plane. It does look really cool, though. I agree, Silent Serenity. Is he only flying small planes? No big ones. Uh, stay tuned. You know, the world's a big place. But that's why it's called Around the World in 30 Planes. We're flying every plane in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which, uh, proportionally does have a lot more smaller planes like this than it has larger planes. I think there's three passenger planes in the game and two other jets besides. And then there's a few turboprops, and then the rest are pretty much kind of, uh, general aviation small craft kind of like this one honestly i think these are a lot of fun and i know that for new players especially it's kind of like i want to fly big plane and go fast and i get that but these type of planes really let you get better hands-on experience because like this plane doesn't have autopilot chat so you kind of have to learn it, it, there's more gameplay in the smaller planes you have to manual trim you have to watch your speed. You can't just delegate everything to autopilot. So not only do you end up learning a little bit more about how these different instruments work, but you end up kind of having more to do per flight. So it's more hands-on. And you can take direct control and, like, weave in and out and get in close, fly low. And I'm going slow enough that I'm not just going to hit the side of a mountain automatically you know what I mean? Or yank the uh, yoke up, and then my plane stresses and explodes. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Do I need to request a flight following? Didn't they just pass me off? Of request flight following. Icon 4-2, Tomkinton, approach. Squawk 0-2, point 1. Squawk 0211 Icon 4-2. Okay. Oh yeah, I need to just check my altimeter. We are currently at uh, about 8,500 feet right now. Drifting to the left because we hit a patch of wind. Okay, let's get a outside view. Kind of nose down a little bit and stop climbing. Okay, and uh, we should be able to decrease comms volume so we don't have to listen to those guys. And here we are. This is us, dude. Let's see if we can get a photo for the plane log. Somewhere in here. We could probably, honestly, let's get a photo for the plane log in, around the volcano. <laughs> that would be a good spot. Cool clouds, though. Does this game simulate how much turbulence bullies this featherlight plane? If the wind's strong enough, it will. Uh, they had a bug with wind kind of being stuck at three knots, and I think they got fixed. So I haven't gotten into any super strong wind yet. And this plane doesn't have instruments to tell me exactly how strong the wind is, but there are ways to kind of get that information. Um, if I tune to one of the near airports, can I tune to ATIS? And then I think they tell me. Wind calm. Visibility 3, sky condition few clouds at 1,000 feet, some clouds at 4,100, and then 12,000. So wind calm. There you go. Just got a little weather report. I don't think the volume slider actually works in this. Alright, we are like 10,000 feet. A prob How high can you go on this? I'm just gonna nose down with the trim. I know you guys can't see anything right now, so let me fix that. 
And there we are. 15,000, wasn't it? 15,000 sounds right. Also, I saw another question that I wanted to answer, but I don't remember what it was. Are there other planes flying around? Yeah, so there was, uh, I have multiplayer off right now, but for part of this, I probably will go back to menu and turn multiplayer on. So if you guys, in a few hours, uh, want to fly, we're going to do just a small leg of this. I kind of want to just fly by myself initially. And the reason for that is just, you know, to take it all in, get in the spirit, the RP aspects, but for part of it, we'll, uh, like the last part of it. So that's going to be some hours from now. FYI. So I'm not going to sit here and dangle the carrot in front of you. If you got if you got somewhere to be, you got somewhere to be. But it'll probably be like... Four hours from now? Three, four hours from now? Somewhere around there? Maybe a little longer? Because I'll have to land at an airport. It's probably going to take us like reasonably four to five hours to get to that airport. And then um, I'll have you guys tag along for the last like hour and a half. And then we'll have our in-flight meal in just over an hour. <laughs> maybe like a, maybe also like an hour and a half. All right. So is it bad to have the throttle maxed? If this is in the yellow, is that okay? RPM looks okay. Oil pressure, oil temp looks fine. Figure we should make some good time. We're going about 82 knots. Normal speed should be about 85. That's probably indicated airspeed. I could have got an icon instead of a stupid comm degree. Uh, I also got a comm degree. I'm a communicator. But yes, this is a manual flight chat. That's really what makes me an actual psycho. This is not an autopilot flight. So I just kind of have to keep my eyes uh, on the map over here. And as long as we're staying somewhere around this, we're doing fine. Ooh, I did not know we had this. That is really cool, actually. Because that gives me a heading display. That gives me an altimeter. Speed on the left. And then... That's just kind of like a little map indicator. So you see we hit the chop right there, hit a little bit of wind. Kind of push me over to the right. The one thing I miss about this is uh, map and map. I kind of wish I could have this and that on the same screen. Look at these clouds. They probably want to nose down. I don't want to climb too much higher, and it seems like we're just hitting these perfect wind bursts that kind of just nose up. Ooh, do you see this? Do you see this? That's not me. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, it's trying to, like, push me off. What's the thing on your head? Do you see how I'm looking around and my, my guy's looking around, too? It's called Track IR. Basically, it lets me move the camera with something that basically looks like a webcam that sits on top of my screen. But, yeah, we have the Tiara command for that as well. Well, we could go lower. We're probably flying faster up here. Want to take a quick uh, nose down? The reason I throttle way down is because I don't want to gain so much speed that we end up causing undue stress to the engine. Because we're still, if you look at the airspeed, Trying to keep it around 85 knots, which is where the, the plane itself is very comfortable. So, as we descend, I just didn't like being about 11... I want to be closer to 10,000 feet. But yeah, we're effectively gliding right now. Which is kind of scary in and of itself. Okay, 
There we go. Power back up. Love those noises. Be careful with your uh, speed right there. Manual nose up. So what I'm looking at is uh, the horizon line. And I'm, I would like to get the plane in such a way that that yellow arrow is just at about that two and a half degree marker, maybe even a little lower. Early stream. Hi, Agenator. Yes, we have been live for over five hours. <laughs> uh, over five hours! My power is unlimited. I can do anything I want now. I have so much time for activities. Second gamer death bot ping and I shouldn't even be awake right now. Chat, how many of you guys, don't lie to me, actually woke up to see the stream? Five hours already? I know it's gone by so fast, she has random. Uh, honestly, I can't believe it. Me. Me. I woke up four hours before it. I see. Sucking up a little bit. Actually woke up at 5.30 and fell back asleep. Wow, chat just blew up. But either way, if you actually did... Uh... Or if you didn't, that's kind of the beauty of this all-day event. You guys can just come by whenever, you know? And I'll be here. But I'm glad you did. But I, I've really just enjoyed seeing a bunch of people who are following the channel inexplicably, and I just never even know you're there. Because, uh, misconnection. Because I, I usually am not starting streaming for, like, four hours from now at least. So even if I didn't get to, you know, say hi to you personally or read one of your comments, I do get to see you scroll on by. So thanks for saying howdy. I tattooed the date on my forehead. <laughs> I woke up earlier than usual and saw you were flying. Well, hope you guys are having a good Saturday. This is some good icon flying. So what I'm kind of doing is just occasionally making a small adjustment. You notice if I take my hand... The goal is to take your hand off and just watch and see what's happening. So right now, we're nosing up slightly, but it's an acceptable amount, and we're tilting a little to the right. So I'm just going to tap left and then correct. And then continue to make adjustments as necessary. The natural wind and the changing in the wind is going to kind of shift us because, again, no autopilot on this. You can increase or decrease the brightness. We'll change uh, altitude calibration, but I think it's already good. We've also got panel brightness, which you can do for nighttime flying. You see how we're still kind of going to the, to the right? So I'm going to give it two taps, and then manually kind of shift us back over to try and line up a little bit better with the path. But as long as we're parallel to it, we're good. And we're at about 10,000 feet, fairly consistent right now, pointed right at that horizon line. Hello, clouds. Oh, God, look up. Elizabeth, chill. I don't know what's going on. It's really just like Elizabeth. People arrived uh, after not being here for like two hours, and then incited panic and pandemonium in the chat. Do you realize what I'm looking at? Is this is a attitude? Well, okay, it's not... What's the correct term for this? Because I always call it an attitude indicator, but that may not be technically correct. Either way, it shows me um, the angle that my plane is currently facing. So you can honestly fly without looking at the windshield, just with these instruments, okay? Number one, this is the horizon. So the brown here is ground, blue is sky. Okay, so as long as we are pointing above the horizon line and the altitude is not changing, then we're going in a straight line, right? That's all we need to know. Why 
What about mountains? I'm 10,000 feet up. If there are any mountains over here, I dare you to run into me. Okay? Let's get some sightseeing in. And then, I'm kind of, the only problem with this flight is it's going to be hard to do some research like I normally do to get some flight information. Pretty big mountain ranges, though. Nice river running between these. Yeah, I like this plane a lot. The Icon is slow, but it's a joy to fly. And the water landings. So, Chad, did you guys say do a flip? Nobody said that. Did somebody say that? I'm not going to crash, right? It'll be fine, right? Not, <laughs> not again. It's still too early in the flight for you guys. Um, you know, honestly, I think we should just save that till later because what if I crash and have to reload the... F <laughs> Got him. How many of you <laughs> just like... Totally mislead. Easy. I thought I was stuck upside down there for a minute, I'm not gonna lie. I was I was wondering if I because I was like hard to the left and I was still a little upside down. The icon pilot's manual directly says do not show off in bolt. Sounds like something uh chat would say you know we don't listen to chat okay why does this go I forget that I can do camera stuff on this so there is a cloud and a mountain and I don't know how tall the mountain is I spilled my coffee beans all over Are your flaps down? What do you think, too many errors? Do you think my landing gear's down too? All right, the one thing that actually, does this plane even do landing mix? I honestly don't, or did I say landing mix? See, you guys have uh, infiltrated my brain and infected me. You guys have uh, gear mix? <laughs> By memeing this, I don't think there's any uh, fuel mix for this one. You like the color of the planet, Danion? I picked it myself. Katie Bell, we are currently in Central America. And, uh... I don't... What, what mountains are these coming up? The floor is dirty. The floor is dirty. Shadow Disciple, you been in here? You spill something? What's funny is the plane doesn't have mixture control, but when I set it to zero, it still cuts out. That's what. I, that's why I always just leave it at least on in some capacity, you know? Because Microsoft Flight Sim seems to use that as like a, a fuel cutoff. Spooky. Hey guys, where do you think the mountain is? Surely not 10,000 feet. Right? There wouldn't be like a 10,000 foot tall mountain right there. I assume 3D vision would account for that. If 
feel like this camera angle is not correct, but I don't know enough. Dude, the world is so cool. How does it look like this? Daytime Etal stream! Hello, Hammer Time. Welcome, everybody else is just arriving. You're here for the Iconathon! We're heading towards our first destination now, which I would be happy to tell you about, but I'm scared to alt tap. <laughs> I, I'm terrified that if I take. We're gonna, I'm gonna, like, tap back in and literally be facing the other direction! Like usual. Because I don't have autopilot. See, I'm already tilting to the right. I mean, elevation-wise, we're fine. It's, it's like an east-to-west thing that I'm concerned with. See, look how bumpy it is, too. Very bumpy. Is AI co-pilot in the spirit of the fight? No. Or the flight? Maybe. They do have their own stick. But yeah, I can't alt tab right now because this this is some chop. Flying through these clouds. I wonder what the outside temperature is. Is there a way to get a budget flight sim set up for around three to four hundred? If your budget is three to four hundred, then you've gotten more than you need. The problem is availability of product. I would say three to four hundred is like mid range. Based on what I've seen. Yeah, we did kick out the co pilot to fit more gas. That did happen, yeah. So technically, there is no co pilot for RP purposes. Yeah, I've seen good things about the Thrustmaster 1600 or 16,000, whatever it is. I've seen, um... What I've got is considered, like, probably overpriced. I, it literally was overpriced when I paid for it because I bought it from a scalper. Um, but also, if you know what you want to fly, that can affect your purchase, too. But again, like I said, stock is probably still really hard to come by. Microsoft Flight Sim did a number on the availability of this kind of formerly niche product. Didn't get off the screen fast enough. But there's a couple yokes if you just like flying the civilian craft. Obviously, this one's nice because it's actually a flight stick. Uh, so it matches what I've got one to one. But uh, there are some good yokes from Honeycomb. Uh, SciTech, Logitech makes a yoke and throttle combo that you can get for like pretty cheap, relatively speaking. Isn't that like 200, 250 or something like that? Um, they got the Thrustmaster T.1600. Yeah. That one's one that a lot of people recommend that's not that expensive. So yeah, you can definitely get it for for three to three to four hundred dollar budget is a good budget. You don't need pedals, you just need to either bind rudder or get a flight stick that can twist. And I think the T sixteen hundred can twist, so you can do rudder controls on that. So that's a nice two for one. And then if you really want IR tracker, which I would recommend, that's about hundred and fifty dollars. So you could probably, for 400 bucks, get the IR Tracker plus a uh, good flight stick and throttle combo. And honestly, no regrets. It was totally worth. Would buy again, because it just makes the whole experience feel so much more immersive. Even if it's not an expensive one, just having any type of uh, flight stick is super highly recommended. Flight stick and throttle, big deal. Looking nice today. Looking like an advertisement right now. Okay, so let's um 
nose down a little bit. Real life beckons. Thanks, Ruben Vince. By the way, uh, when I took a BRB, I realized that I accidentally left one of the doors to my house ajar. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but it was kind of partially open for four hours. So that was pretty cool. Luckily, it wasn't open open, because that would be very strange. But it was like, not clicked. You know what I mean? Monka ass. So there wasn't any, like, air seepage. But somebody could have just walked up and, like, pushed it open. Because I'm dumb. And, like, kind of left it ajar. Alright. I was going to do something, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Turn off taxi. Turn off taxi. Oh, I was going to zoom out on the map. Let's see if we can get an idea. Chat, we got a ways to go. But this is, this is it. We can get a little lower and see what's below us. I'm just kind of scared. The real problem is I can't stay in, like, I can't stay on course. Just due to the way the autopilot works. Or it doesn't exist, I mean. Because I want to tell you about where we're going. But I need to alt tap. I really don't want to go any lower than this, just because the mountains kind of hard to see. This thing is getting, the wind's getting a little bossy with it. Oh yeah, I have coffee. I forgot about that. It's still warm. The last of my Guatemala beans. Where is trim on this plane? Like, it's on the pitch up, pitch down. Is there any side-to-side -side aileron trim? I don't think so. Chat owns the house. What, because I left the door slightly unclicked? Chat claims it? So where we are currently heading... Actually, let's just talk about where we came from first. Maybe we'll see some rain today. Okay, here we go. You see how the plane just has a mind of its own right now based on what the wind is doing? I just love that the wind is dynamic in that sense and can just kind of shift and change. I'm looking forward to like dynamic weather. Because even though the weather is, like, real-time and it's getting updated, I saw that there was a mod that's being worked on to try to add shifting weather. So, like, I think right now, whatever you do, it's kind of locked in that way for the whole flight, more or less. But, um... There's, they're working on a mod that is going to somehow translate historical weather as well. So, like, let's say you wanted to simulate what it was like to fly in a hurricane that already existed. Based on the weather patterns and the data and the wind recordings that are already on file, you could queue up and load up that kind of historical event. You know what I mean? Where it would try and duplicate the, the exact scenario that existed IRL. And then change the weather and the wind based on time of day, where you're at, and how it actually happened. Does that make sense? Whereas right now it's dynamic in that it is, uh, you know, based on real time. But this is kind of try trying to take it a step further and make it even more accurate. Yo, Gamer Deathbot. Hey, Potato Elijah. How's it been six hours already? What is going on? <laughs> I don't understand. 
Hey guys, remember this was going to be a 12 hour stream? How, how, where did the time go? I understand we were kind of not flying for the first hour. We were just kind of hanging out with some morning coffee. Um, enjoying each other's company. But still. Where has the time gone? So if I'm if I'm looking correctly, dude, it's so hard to stay lined up. Time does fly, Spooky Carnage. Thank you. What do you mean? I've only been here for an hour. <laughs> I've had two meals during the stream, dude. You didn't even wait for the in-flight meal. You didn't wait for the volcano meal. How could you? Volcano snacks coming up. I really, I don't think there's any side-to-side -side trim here. Volcano, in what sense? In that we're literally heading towards a volcano right now. There's a lot of volcanoes in Central America. We're going to one of them. A very important one we'll talk about as we go. All right, so we just left Tegucigalpa for Honduras. Oh, that reminds me, once we land somewhere, Okay, camera, chill out, dude. Look what I got. I guess there's no reason to take it out now. But even so... Got the flag. He's crashing the plane. No, it's fine. The plane's fine. See? It's all good. Got the Honduras flag. I'll just hang this up soon. Put it on a table. See, we're good. This is why I don't alt tab though, because we're almost not good. What you guys didn't know is that for the last six hours, this entire stream's been pre-recorded. You really thought Italics was going to wake up at 5 a.m.? Yeah, right. Whole thing was staged. All you do is play a video. And you believed it. Well timed. Honestly, that would be a pretty cool trick, though. Get some well timed subs in on it. Have them subscribe at exact specific moments during the stream. <laughs> what do you think this is pre recorded? What's up, Smoke Watch Gun? Yeah. You guys think I don't see what you're saying right now? You're all putting D faces and uh, pretending to be offended and stuff, right? That's probably what's happening, if I had to guess. <laughs> Some of you are like, is it? I don't know. Maybe it is. All right, who was asking if there were more planes, if there were other planes in the sky? The short answer is yes, and one of them is somewhere, should be actually out this side. Oops. Can't really see it unless it's... Those like three pixels right in the middle of the screen, that's another plane. It just happens to be like 35, 40,000 feet up. And that one's an IRL plane. 
So if we got closer, we'd actually be able to see what plane it is and where it's going, where it came from. Uh, we already saw one in the sky earlier that was going to Guadalajara. So. There's also players. Somebody could be around me right now, and I never know. I keep forgetting I'm hungover until Etal moves the camera. Stop partying on Fridays, okay? You think just because it's Friday you have to drink yourself in well into your cups? I'm gonna try being original. Drink on Tuesday. Nobody drinks on Tuesday. Listen, what's today's Saturday? We might have some drinks later, chat. Not now, though. Maybe later. Once we get uh, Captain Chad on board. Right now, Captain Chad just has to enjoy the view. This is such a big icon flight. Okay. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I was gonna look up facts about Honduras and not get off course. Here are 10 facts about Honduras. Number one, they're serious about football. Honduras had a 100-hour war with El Salvador over soccer. What? Actually called the football war. Soccer War or the Hundred Hours War was a brief war fought between El Salvador and Honduras in 1969. Existing tensions between the two countries coincided with rioting during a 1970 FIFA World Cup qualifier. The war began on the 14th of July 1969 when the Salvadoran military launched an attack against Honduras. The Organization of American States negotiated a ceasefire on the night of 18th of July, hence a Hundred Hour War which took full effect on 20th of July. Salvadoran troops were withdrawn in early August. That's hardcore, dude. Uh, the cause of the war go deeper than football. The roots were issues over land reform in Honduras. Um... Honduras is more than five times the size of neighboring El Salvador, but the 1969 population of El Salvador, 3.7 million, was 40% larger than Honduras at 2.6 million. It was like a migration thing, because people from El Salvador were coming to Honduras because they had so much more land. There you go. So the actual war itself, what happened? It just says... Dude, Tonkontin! Salvadoran air raid targets included Tonkontin International Airport, which left the Honduran Air Force unable to react quickly. Well, there you go. We just flew out of there. So they, like, targeted it specifically. The invasion phase was perpetrated by three main contingents. Uh, they had some strategic strikes. They had a large mechanized division, armored fighting vehicles such as the M3 Stewart, and a large amount of artillery such as the 105, 105mm M101. Uh, the Nicaraguan dictator helped Honduras providing weapons and ammunition. <laughs> it's crazy. Honduran bombers attacked for the first time in the morning of 16th of July. When bombs began to fall, Salvador and anti-air artillery started firing, repelling some of the bombers. Uh, they hit a port, oil facilities, and basically a counter-strike. Both sides deployed World War II-era design aircraft. 
So they had like World War II fight in 1969. They had P-51 Mustangs in the air in 1969, dude. That's crazy. Um, they retired their fleet. They had some Corsairs as well. They retired in 1975 and 1979. The war was the last conflict ever in which piston-engined fighters fought each other. There you go. Dude, why am I turning so hard left? Is it just the wind? Like, I'm not doing it. Aftermath. El Salvador was eliminated from the World Cup after losing their first three matches. Oh. So they went all huffy puffy, declared war, and uh, then lost the World Cup. Football solved the war, I guess. And helped create it. Eleven years after, the two nations signed a peace treaty in Lima, Peru... In 1980, and agreed to resolve the border dispute over the Gulf of Fonseca. In 1992, the court awarded most of the disputed territory to Honduras, and then they signed a border demarcation treaty in 1998. There you go. Didn't know that. So where we are flying right now is a lake in Nicaragua. Which, by the way, is a volcano. Uh, importantly about this volcano, <laughs> there is a very important minor detail that you might need to know. It is 400 meters deep. It's a caldera. It's 2.8 kilometers wide at the mouth. And perhaps most importantly... I think that it is the second most dangerous volcano in the entire world, but I could be wrong on that. The last eruption in about 50 BC was one of the largest explosions known in history. It had a volcanic explosivity index of 6. It's called Apoyeque. Apoyeque has been identified as a particularly dangerous volcano due to its history of major eruptions separated by 2,000 years, and the last explosion was 2,000 years ago. Monka S. That's where we're going to land. We'll learn a little bit more about it as we get closer. I'm just trying to stay on target right now. And we're going to land in it, yeah. It's got a water-filled caldera. We're going to do a water landing in, like, what I think is the second most dangerous volcano in the whole world. In an icon in Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> this is why video games are so cool. All right, we're just... We've been holding altitude perfectly. We're at, like, 10,000 feet. It's just the east to west. I can't seem to get a good grip on it, but we're still going the right way. For context, Krakatoa in 1883 also had a volcanic explosive index of six. Fun fact. Just put a big old cork on top. Get you guys outside the cockpit, get some fresh air. So even though we're going to land, um, I don't think I have, we're technically not landing in an airport. The, what flags are you actually going to get at Talents is a little muddy here. Because when I decided to get the flags, we hadn't done the changing of the plan. There was, I, I kind of went back, you can ask Ace Tech. This was going to be a very normal flight, and then I was like, but what if... But what if we just flew the Icon all day? And he was like, I don't know about this. And I was like, do it. 
do it. So I did anticipate, like, actually landing in this volcano, because this is, you know, we're, it's not, we're, gonna, we're not going to land in an airport, Nicaraguan airport. It's going to be in a volcano, so I didn't get a flag. Was the ETA to the volcano? It's called Shut Up Back There, Sit Down, and Deal With It. We'll get there when we get there. Does the volcano have a runway? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Do I need to answer that? So at what point do we cross back out of the mountain time? The only thing I dislike about the icon, there's only like two good camera angles. This is one, because I like seeing the ailerons. You can kind of see how they work in order to shift the plane. It's crazy that a small movement can do that, you know what I mean? There's really, I, like, I think this angle's probably one of the best ones. That's about it. Okay, do you see water? Water is good. Water means that we're getting there, chat. In fact, that's probably a volcano as well. It's just not ours. Or it just might be a regular mountain. I don't know. Do I look like a scientist? All right, let's try and look at, the, let's try and look at Google Maps. Google Earth. Chad, do you think that's why Microsoft Flight Sim official Twitter won't tweet me out because they saw me looking at Google Earth in the middle of uh, my flights? Do you think that's why they pretend like I don't exist? I'm just kidding. I don't think they tweet anybody out. But if they did, they wouldn't tweet me out. Why are you cosplaying as the Reddit alien? That's the other one. All right, I got Teletubbies. I forgot about Reddit alien. That was the other meme. But let's pretend like that was an original joke. I laughed. You just couldn't see it on my face. All right, let's, um, speaking of aliens. Speaking of aliens. Bing maps would be more accurate to what you're actually seeing in game. Air is going around the world, and now you're going to... It's satellite Earth, okay? The cities, locations, and landmarks don't change between those. It's the same planet. Let me set up, uh... Alright, let me make sure we're going the right way first. Chad, I can't see. Are you guys steering? You're doing a pretty good job. Alright, you're doing a pretty good job. Let's just go ahead and line it up. Alright. Take a risk. So, here's the plan. Tegucigalpa. See, if you can see water, we're going to be heading uh, to here. This is where the volcano is. There's probably more volcanoes. This is the big peak uh, right before the water. Somewhere over here. Or maybe we should use Bing, because Google's being kind of dumb right now. No, we probably... Are, actually, we're here. This is where we're landing. My bad. Okay, so we're seeing this peak. Momo. Tombo volcano. So there is a there is a volcano. I was right. And that's it. That's the one. Let's look up that one. 
the first thing that comes up is real estate. Momotombo real estate. <laughs> yes, I would like to buy the pot next to uh, the volcanic ash that's stacked for thousands of years. Is anybody uh, using the crust or the lava flow areas? I could really, like, I think start a small business right there. I would like to buy the whole volcano, please. Alright, I guess I'll go Wikipedia. It's a stratovolcano. This one. Momotombo. Right there. Not far from the city of Lyon. It stands on the shores of the Lago de Managua. An eruption of the volcano in 1610 forced inhabitants of Lyon to relocate about 48 kilometers west. The ruins of the city are preserved. It also erupted in 1886. So yeah, they have Old Leon, where it's, uh... The old city's preserved. The mountain is very symmetrical. And its form is a symbol of Nicaragua. Uh, the volcano was very popular before World War I began. To many tours visited, especially in 1904, one year before the eruption. Oh. I guess there's also a geothermal power plant, unsurprisingly. That's, uh... Welcome aboard, Etal Air. Pretty recent. Here's a picture for you. Etal Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. There's Momotombo. If you wanted to see it with the little smoke coming out the top. Yeah, the plane is just like going hard to the right. Like 11,000 feet. I might nose down a little bit. I'm trying to kind of like course correct my trim right now. Because I can see it fighting me. Is he going to do a water landing? Oh, am I, Chris? Oh, am I? Oh, yeah. Who goes there? Smile for fun gifted a sub to GS Random like an hour ago? Sorry, guys. Uh, Ninyu said howdy for 38 months. Clayman Games is back for 38 months. Two 38 monthers at the same time. Very suspicious. RoboFussin says put the emotes in the bag. <laughs> Are you stealing a sub? Central America is doing great with switching to renewable energy. Costa Rica is already 100% renewable, mostly geothermal and hydroelectric. Fun fact, mostly moisten. Fun fact. Master King is also here with the Fresh Prime sub a couple minutes ago. How's it going? Thank you for sharing for the next 30 days. And then Chargoff is back for 47, says they're erupting into chat at 47 months. Chargoff. I've, I've never streamed this early, and I've never seen you in a stream this early, so what happens when we collide? Congrats on the 30-year stream anniversary. Thank you. It's been a, many years, you know. You'd think I would have a few more sub slots if I had been streaming for 30 years, but <laughs> Twitch is ungrateful as ever. Imagine that, though. Imagine Twitch was actually, like, 30 years old. <laughs> You've got, like, streamers on the platform. Back in my day, when I was a young lad at the tender age of 25, I'm getting ready for my 60th birthday special here on Twitch. 
I can't believe that this year they... They finally got a console that can run games at 60 frames per second consistently. You know, it took... It took my entire lifetime to get to this point. What are we on now? Like 32k? For my, uh, contact screen? Like, what would you even do then? Youngsters are lining up outside the game stops to get their chip implanted in their brain for the PlayStation 9. It's never been easier to daydream in class. You could just boot up one of your old video games there. If you're getting ready for the new launch, GameStop will give you uh, about 10% of the original value of the last iteration of your brain chip. They just need to put you under the knife for a few hours. Don't worry though, you get the laughing gas. It's a very painless experience and you get 5% extra for being a member. Is this multiplayer or no? I don't know what the game? The game is. Am I in multiplayer? No. Think I want to sully my hands with the likes of chat? Yeah, right. Well, this volcano looks awesome. This is the Momotombo that we were just looking at. So, Leon is just right around here somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is. I was looking at the wrong one. No, we were looking at the right one. Why do we... Oh, we have Momotombo Volcano and then Momotombo... Momotombito, the city. Gotcha. A lot of interesting spots in here. There's Leon. And then right around the volcano, we have El Candon. Cuatro Palos with a little San Francisco Libre Airport. Las Mercedes. Eatal Air is going around the world. And now you're going to. Uh, you are going to. You're going this way because this is the direction that the plane turned in the, like, 30 seconds that I alt-tabbed. That's okay, we'll get turned around. The right way. There's gotta be, these. some of these have gotta be volcanoes as well. They're just in the middle of nowhere, all by themselves. So this has gotta be the volcano, and then this is, is this, this is Momotombo, and this is the caldera that we're gonna land in. So we're basically on approach right now, chat. This is the spot. Big volcano, okay, so we have tall volcano, and then we have wide volcano, I think. So this is tall volcano, and that's wide volcano. Forty month sub GG dub. What's up, dude? How's it going? Thanks again, dude. Says GG dub. My pleasure. Thanks for hanging out. It's only eleven thirty here in Vegas. Having a lot of fun flying and having a lot of fun imagining how am I gonna land in that? <laughs> That's my landing strip, right there. Perestroikas is back in the old days. Zetao would never stream this early. True. But you know what? I gotta keep you guys on your toes. Where you don't know what to expect. At any given point in time. I gotta keep throwing a curveball in there a little bit. So here's a question that I think I asked last time we flew this. 
Do I want to turn water rudder on before or after I hit the water? That's a good question. I assume after, because it would probably you probably don't want anything contacting the water at big speed. It would probably just snap off. Can we expect to get bullied? Depends on if you do anything that deserves it. <laughs> Listen, the only people that get bullied in my stream are people who already had it coming. So, yes. Well, you are all... Some of you are miscreants. Some of you are genuinely good people. The, the, the trick on my part is distinguishing who is who. Alright, I say we start like a light descent from 11,000 feet since we can kind of see our target in sight. I just nosed down a little bit. I'm gonna pull back on the throttle, try to stay around 90 or under knots. Clear sky? I mean, it's partly cloudy, but like where we are, totally clear skies. Hey, what's up, Vast TV? We are currently in Nicaragua. About to land in one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the entire world. This is part of our trip around the world. I'm just excited to kind of see some interesting and varied locations that maybe you didn't know existed, chat. You'll always remember, though. You'll always remember the time you almost caught. <laughs> Okay, why does every stream turn into a Pirates of the Caribbean? It's just a timeless movie, though. But you'll always remember the time. You'll be like, oh yeah, Nicaragua. With one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world, and we landed in it. I can remember Momotomba. That's not the one. That one's probably pretty dangerous, too. But this is Apoyeque. Which I might be saying wrong, but I'm doing my best. Uh, but, yeah, exclamation plane is what I was going to say. Thank you, too many errors. If you want to follow along, the goal of the Around the World trip is every airport we end up landing at, we take off from. And I'm also going to hit every single plane, all 30 planes, probably flown multiple times each, maybe with one exception. So it's not going to be 30 flights. It's just going to be a varied mix. We're going to fly... There's only going to be a few times in the entire trip around the world where we do back-to-back -back same plane. And obviously, this is not an exception because um, the goal here is not to, like, really get out of the plane, per se. Well, you may have just wanted to check the flight log, but yeah, hit up the, uh, the two resources that Nightbot has provided in the chat because they are both interesting in their own right. we got takeoffs and landings for each of the planes that are clipped, if you want to see how we did with each different plane, and uh, photos of the planes themselves, their KDR, basically, <laughs> how many times I crashed, versus how long the flights took. It's got a lot of good info. So thanks, Kairotopi and Ace Tech, for keeping up with those again. Much appreciated. I think it's awesome. I really enjoy looking at the plane log. And just seeing as the like line across the globe. I like Air is going around the world. Being the movie cliche of you know like the main characters, they, they skip ahead so they they zoom out to map and they just show like the Indiana Jones plane flying across the map. That's what we are, except we're doing like a whole big trip. An overly long journey. You've been saying it fairly well, to be honest, for an American. Thank you. Who's your hails? What's up? Hey, Tal, I hope you're having a great day. I am. I had a nice early start to my day. I'm just enjoying flying. Now, the... Iconathon that we're on right now is particularly noteworthy because not only is this going to be the longest stretch 
with any single plane that we have had in the... Okay, so we went back to back. This is not the longest distance, but it's the longest flight time. And also, it's the, not only is it the longest flight time, there's no autopilot for this entire journey of this section. So, like, I am going to be hands-on for a pretty big portion, which will hopefully not prove too troublesome. We need to start get, ditching uh, some altitude here. So I'm going to start angling down. What I'd like to aim for is my yellow indicator, definitely not below the 5 degree. So, like, right in there is good. We're watching our speed as well. I really don't want to even get into the yellow. I don't want to cross that 95 if I can help it. But as we change our speed, it's going to change our, um, our nose angle as well. So this is good. That's it, chat. That is, uh, Apoyeke. Apoyeke. I don't know where to put the emphasis. Because I want to put it on Apoyeke. But it might be... It might be... Apoya K. You know, I don't know where if the emphasis should go on the K or the Ye. Apoya K sounds better to me. But thank you for the sub, Hoosier Hales. Hope you're having a good one, too. Except the whole thing without the montage. We gotta get the montage. You get some nice aerial views. But yeah, the no music thing, it's just a personal preference because. I can't play music that I normally listen to anyways because of DMCA, so I don't want to play junky royalty-free. I'd rather just listen to the sounds of the plane because there's a certain nostalgia with, like, flight sounds, the creaking of the plane as you turn, the rotors that uh, I find kind of calming. It lets me kind of focus on... You know, if, especially if there's lyrics or something, I don't have to worry about it being too loud or kind of hanging out, relaxing. I need to hear more plane sounds to help make me less terrified of flights anyway. Well, Nightfall, you're here at the right time. If you're scared of planes, I'm about to land in this volcano right here. Okay, so... We probably need to descend even more. Or at least faster, rather. We can circle it a few times, no problem with that. Thing is wide! Very wide. You can see on the map over here we got a custom waypoint, so that's just a good reminder of where we're trying to be slow down even more a little bit. So, um... I think this is also... is I think Lake Apoyeke is that. It's just in the caldera. There's a few different bodies of water here. We got... Well, let's just look at this. We have Lake Managua is the big one, right? And then we have Lake Apoyeke, which is in the basin. And then we have Laguna de Ziloa right here on the other side. Bosques de Ziloa, Los Brasiles, Corpus Christi, huh? There's a Corpus Christi, Texas that we flew over as well. We found Corpus Christi, Nicaragua. Pretty cool. And that should be right here. What do we what is that? Just a little stretch of land. I think that's Corpus Christi. A little bit blurry because we're not really close enough. Looks like some farms going on over here. You can see the circles. 
watering in a circle. What kind of photo do we want for uh, the plane log? Probably something to do with the volcano. Whoops, sorry. Just a nose dive right into it. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get like an interesting shot here. We could get one like landed maybe. Because the back of the plane is not like as exciting as the front in my opinion. Well, here we are, everybody. <laughs> our our first icon landing. Dude, I came back. He's flying the Xbox plane. That is right. So check this out. Is about did I say 2000 meters across? This opening. This whole thing is the volcano. which is insane. And that civilization just exists around it. So again, this volcano in particular apparently erupts roughly every 2,000 years, and the last eruption was 50 BCE. Which, if you're doing math, is about 1,970 years ago. Wait, no, no. More than that. Two, that would be 2,000 and... 70 years. Right? 2,070 years ago. And it's comparable on the, like, index of volcanoes the last time it erupted, apparently, to the last Krakatoa eruption. So, pretty big. So what's crazy is I thought we were basically low enough and I'm doing this like circle around. And it's just crazy because the closer we get, I can see trees now. And I'm like, wow. Not only are there trees, I'm gonna go ahead and like get the first flap down. I could have done that on my thumb as well. So that way, because we're kind of going at our top speed. We're not really going that fast, but we're going to our top speed, you know? So I want to make sure I have plenty of space. I don't want to rush it. I have only done like one or two water landings before. Getting out of here is going to be fun too. Get, get a little bit more speed. Alright, let's do like one more little pass. So that way I'm facing the right way. Not like a whole pass around, but like... We can turn wherever we want anyway. This is scary, dude. But also awesome. It's kind of cool just like skirting over the water like this. Can you run out of gas in this game? You can, yeah. But it's not going to be an issue for us. At least not right now. All right. Let's go ahead and make one more turn. That way we're facing the right way in order to, like, get out of here. I feel like I'm more comfortable turning to the left and to the right. Hmm. 
This is fun, though. All right, straighten it up. Flaps all the way down. Let's try and shave some speed. Fifty knots looks good. I feel like I'm gonna hit the water. Any second now, there it is. All right, let's get. Uh, we got like a rudder that we can steer. Get a nice turn in there. Oh yeah, that was nice. Avoid collision. And then come to a complete stop. I don't even know how you hit brakes in this. There we are, like a little boat. Play the commercial. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, it's beautiful. Chat, I guess, welcome to Nicaragua. Where's the sun? Probably right in the middle of the sky. I think the, like, zoomed out wide view is better because you can see the whole mouth of the the volcano that we're in. And I think this side's more visually appealing than the other side. Noom doom levels. All right, let me find like a good angle. It's struggling right now, chat. Eh. I feel like there's too much dead space on the left and right of the actual icon. Maybe if I just turn around a little bit. That might change things. That might be better. Somewhere around here is probably for the best. Do an eagle view? Well, yeah, but that this is specifically for, um... I mean, it looks cool for us, but not a great, like... <laughs> like, that's the photo for the plane log. <laughs> Can you go <laughs> below the waterline? I don't think so. <laughs> no, you, you hit the water like this. I think down looking up is best. Somewhere around there is probably good. That looks nice. Because you can see how tall it is behind us. Stranded on a lake with the plane. Chat, you know what time it is. It's almost noon. And you know what that means. It's time for our in-flight meal. Okay? Because I am starving. Whew. I've been awake for, well, I've been streaming for almost seven hours. It's time for Etal Air's first ever in-flight meal. <sighs> Gotta decide what to eat today. Something fitting, I hope. Well, why don't we, uh... Why don't we just take a listen? complimentary for all Italian passengers, provided that you survive the flight. Flight attendants will be around shortly with enchiladas, fresh from the freezer. <laughs> That's right. We are going to be eating enchiladas today. And, uh, those enchiladas... are going to be coming at you. 
All right. You want to be like this, camera? Coming at you. Courtesy of our new on-the-go food airplane personal oven. That's right. You guys are going to get to see the food cooked on the plane by the flight attendants live. This is a specially imported uh, personal oven that, of course, is responsible for the food on each Etal Air flight. I only ask, I humbly ask, that uh, though those each of you are going to receive one enchilada, please, in an orderly fashion, line up outside of the kitchen on board the plane and wait one at a time. <laughs> like 400 people <laughs> lined up to microwave their own thing one at a time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and I'm going to get the in-flight meals and you guys are going to pick w which one we eat, okay? So I have to go retrieve them. I didn't get a freezer for this segment. I, I, I did get the microwave for this segment. So I'm going to go grab it and I'll be back in a sec to show you the options, okay? Welcome aboard Etal we Air. back around here <laughs> we've got four choices uh, some of them are better than others I'll be honest let's start with um, the ones that were two for seven dollars okay these were only 350 each we got bueno chicken enchiladas okay that's option green chili on top of that, uh, the combo pack for the deal was red chili beef enchiladas. And then we go uh, to upper shelf. <laughs> These ones are a little better. Uh, you guys have probably seen Amy's before. Spinach and cheese enchiladas, enchilada verde. But uh, does it come with rice and beans too? Cause that's too much it says enchilada dinner so there's two more I, I i guess it has sides on it as well and then we've got uh saffron road chicken enchiladas poblano with black beans and rice the last two were like five dollars instead of 350. so what would you like for your in-flight meal We got the buenos. And then we got the chicken enchiladas poblano and the Amy's one. What do you say, chat? A poll would take too long. Alright, I see a lot of bueno. You guys, you want the bueno because it's cheaper, don't you? You want me to, like, eat one of the cheap ones. I can tell. <laughs> I 
What a man. <laughs> Honestly, I might take one bite and be like, nah, I'm gonna eat one of the other ones and just throw that one away. Okay. Well. Out of these two, which one? B for chicken, chat. Here's, okay, there was one saving grace about the buenos. It is cheaper, but I think it's cheaper because there's no rice and beans. So like, honestly, it might be okay because if you're paying 350 and you only get the enchiladas, maybe that means they focused on making those like edible. Uh, chicken wins. All right, chat says chicken. Chicken wins. All right, let's open this up. So, okay, here's what we should do. We should see what chat thinks uh, based on what it looks like your rating. Do we have any, like, resources that we could somehow track what chat thinks is going to be out of 10? Uh-oh. I don't know how I feel about that. All right, let me read the instructions. It says... Microwave instructions. Puncture film with fork several times. Okay. Heat for five to seven minutes. Let stand one to two minutes and carefully peel off film. Uh, okay. Five, five to seven minutes. Sure. I can do that. Uh, I need, I do need a fork. I can just puncture it. I have like, uh, some scissors here. Hold on. It's not what, that did not work at all. <laughs> okay, let's try this again with the scissors open. <laughs> I'm trying not to like rip the whole thing off. This is several times. That's enough, right? That's like six times. You think that's enough, chat? That's gotta be enough. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Since it takes five to seven minutes and Midas needs to eat as well, you guys are gonna watch the food while it cooks. Now keep in mind, I have never used this microwave before. The microwaves need like a warm up time. Like, uh, do they need to be, like, broken in? Are you serious, Italics? Okay, because I, listen, I'm just saying, I read a review on when I bought this, and it says, I read a review. I'll read it for you now. Now I can't find it. But basically it said that because of... The, uh, so it heats like slow. I don't know. Well, it's five to seven minutes. <laughs> Heat up water in a mug or something to test it. I'm just saying, dude, it's a fresh out of the box microwave. I don't know Italia if it just works the instantly world. the way it's supposed to. Going to. Your plane is still running. <sighs> you guys are so needy. There. Is that better? 
No, no, I got shh. We're fine. That doesn't count. That doesn't, that's, we're good. All right, plane's off. I was not done, game. Don't take me to heaven. Okay. So, uh, I poked it. It says five to seven minutes. How about we start with five minutes? Because I don't even know what the wattage is on this. And then see how it looks. Okay? What do you think? Puncture film, so leave film on for the microwave. Here we go. We good? There it goes. Okay, I'm gonna go feed Midas. You guys can watch it, all right? <laughs> you can hear music and stuff, right? Yeah, you guys got some BRB music? Okay, take care of the food for me. I'm gonna go feed Midas and be back. Chat, did that just add a whole... How much did that add? 30 seconds? All right, I added 30 seconds. Five and a half minutes. Fear
How, well, how are we doing? Oh, I need to take the other ones back so they don't defrost. 60 seconds, I can do that. <laughs> hey, are you guys, you guys hungry? Dude, like friends come over to my house. Hey, uh, what do you guys want? Like, I got, I got plenty of food. It's really, it's your choice. Do you really like enchiladas or something? What is wrong with you? So, it said five to seven minutes. How should I confirm? I guess just peel the plastic? Dude, it sm <laughs> The smell has infested my office. I can't even pick it up. I don't have a plate. Dude, I need a plate that's gonna be so hot. It said, let's set for one to two. of uh, moisture. Uh, yeah, let's let stand for one to two. Okay, I need um. I need like a I need like text, so people who come in understand what's going on. Okay, this is gonna be text. Why does this one why is this one called Star Wars? <laughs> oh. I don't I don't know how ancient this list is. <laughs> but it's here. All right. Well, it's really it's really hard to do this. But now I can complete it. Team Pop, whatever it's called, down there for sure. I think this one's just called like right. Palpatine. Summons Ghost Armada from Thin Air down there. I think that was the subtitle. Oh, what? I, listen, hang on. There's supposed to be there's supposed to be a text scene here. This okay. Here we go. There we go. Now, now people understand. It's been two minutes, chat. It has been two minutes. Okay. The container for this is extremely floppy.
wrapped in the same kind of plastic that you wrap a video game in. Like it's, it, 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 this is like I, I just bought like a used game on eBay and they resealed it with this kind of plastic. So spicy. Going around it's the really, world. Dude, it's really now spicy for some too. reason. If I had to, I, I don't even know how to rate it. Also, I feel like you guys need a better view of what I'm looking at. Let me let me give you a better angle. Eat oh, air is going around the world. And now you're going to. Having a little trouble getting like the actual enchilada portion. Bottoms up. I give this like a uh, too spicy. You know when you eat something and it's not inherently, like, disgusting? It's really not disgusting in terms of overall. The problem is, as it's going down, I can tell that it's going to upset my stomach if I eat this whole thing. 
And it's not even just the spice, it's like the spice combined with... You, <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> combined with the... well... That, you know? Like, the, the, this aspect... So like, is this an enchilada? Or is this like a chicken bowl? You know what I mean? Where's, like, how, that's not an enchilada. One more bite, and then I'll give it a rating. I would say definitely not a five out of 10. You have to keep in mind it was $3.50, but for like $2 more you get a uh, Wendy's meal. I would say like... Without the spice, it's like a 4 out of 10. With the spice, it's like a 3.5. So I'd have to say like 3.5. I would say 5 out of 10 I would like consider buying again. Just... To put that into perspective. Like, 5 out of 10 is the baseline for might purchase a second time. Welcome aboard, Etal Air. Like, I, I know what I'm getting when I'm getting frozen meals, so I'm not holding this to the... the I, almost <laughs> I almost dropped the whole thing on the carpet. Alright, be careful. Easy. One more bite. And that would not come out. Alright, well this launch sucked. Um, I can't, I'm not gonna finish it. I'm not going to. This is how much I ate. The rest is just gonna go in the kitchen. Midas is in the frame. And he's gone. Do we get it now? Yeah, you guys can eat the leftovers. Honestly, I'm tempted to just do another one. Okay, how about we just do another one at the next stop? We'll just do one in-flight meal per landing, and then I'll just eat like a third of each one, and then I'll have a complete meal. Eventually. That seems like a good plan. Okay, let me reset the cam. Wasting food. You mean... Wasting, like... Listen, I, I'm never gonna get a Bueno sponsorship, but... <sighs> me purchasing that was basically them saying, Here, you throw this away. Okay, because if it doesn't go in the trash, it's going in the toilet. You know what I'm saying? this a little crooked time out I almost just broke everything but I think I'm fine still not quite the same are we good except for the brightness yeah well at least the microwave works it was it was warm. It was like there was no cold parts in it, so five and a half minutes was good. Seven minutes would have been scorched. Chat both calling the food gross and wasteful like they haven't eaten worse and thrown away more. Exactly. Uh, so I'd, I'd say three 3.5. 
3.5 final final score for this i gotta deal with it though it needs to go somewhere i can't just stay in this room all right let's uh let's just plain brb real quick while i dispose of this So yes, the in-flight meal will be a recurring segment in our Around the World streams. Thank you to Liuta for making the, um, the first graphic you saw. And also this one, of course. We're not going to do it every time. It's not going to be every stream that we do planes, but it's going to come up. I got a microwave. <laughs> Dude, if anybody like... Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about this after I get in the air. Speaking of getting in the air. Here we are. <laughs> I paid... For the whole microwave, I'm gonna use it. You better believe it. Dude, that green chili just made my nose start running. Oh man, that was a mistake. Did Italics just eat the rest of that meal? Absolutely not. Hang on, I gotta I gotta blow my nose. Blech, blech. You guys like this 3D virtual representation? You can like see it without actually seeing it. Okay. Ooh. That was fun. Let's do it again in like a few minutes. <laughs> Where are we? Oh no, if I turn off the computer, it should still have my flight plan, right? Yeah, it should. Okay, so all we need to do to get this back on, battery master. I think the fuel valve was just on the entire time. Yep. To start the engine, lights are on, throttle open. Start the ignition. Monitor my oil pressure in the green. Alternator light is out. And we're good to go. Chad, did you guys enjoy? Enjoy your first in-flight meal in the middle of a volcano. For those who got here late, uh, we are flying the Icon for the foreseeable future. And we just landed in a 2,000 meter across volcano caldera, which is its own lake. This is the volcano. And now... We're going to head on out. Let's get flaps to, like, take off position. Pick the water rudder up, I think. Because if you don't want to land with it, do you want to take off with it? Okay, it's in transit. Fixed. 
You guys ready? <laughs> request taxi. Do you have to request taxi to take off from a volcano? Chad, my flight plan is gone, dude. Because I technically finished the flight. Uh-oh. Uh, like, I technically know where I'm going. I think I can go... Can I just add... Do I need to add an origin? Or can I just add a destination? Because I know where I'm ultimately going. MRTR. And that's not even the ultimate destination. Um, I guess I could add MNFC as my origin. Which is right next to us. If I want to add a waypoint, um, does it have to be, like, an airport? Talks, I was prepared for this. If you punch in direct to R-E-N-A-L, that should put you to the next stop. Well, can I just do this? And that works. Didn't I get the best of both worlds? I got an en route waypoint, the destination, and an origin. Done. Okay, I clicked done. Do I need to do anything else before I click off this page? Or can I just go main menu now? Hey, we got it. And we're actually going where I wanted. I wanted to fly over that and land in Renal. Okay, perfect. And actually, that's what I wanted to do anyways, was configure the in-flight, um, or the in-cockpit, you know, programming. So we got to do both. All right, everybody, flaps it down. We're gonna head to another major volcano. We can land in this lake, too, for fun and add an extra stop, because it's literally on the way. Then we're going to another volcano. <laughs> and we're going to have another in-flight meal at one of these two locations. But for now, let's see if we can navigate out of this one, because we got to have a steep incline. We're going to have to go up the toilet bowl to get out of here. Ooh, I just hit a bump. I hit, like, a water bump. Hey, we're at about 50 knots. Let's go ahead and climb. Don't scrape your wings on the water, dude. Landing gear's already up. Flaps are up. Okay, and let us get up on out of here, chat. Just in time for takeoff. You are indeed. Okay, let's see if we have enough room to get some air. Steep incline to get out of here. I am maxed on the throttle. This should be fine. We're gonna steady 80 knots airspeed. Careful, because if I want to go into cinematic cam, it, like, undoes. Well, this is really cool. There she goes, chat. 
there's a little lake just on the other side of the volcano, too, in a city here. As well as an airport. Which we could land at if we wanted to. I always believed in you, Italics, deep down in my heart, past all the doubt. <laughs> and there was oh so much of it, apparently. Goodbye, volcano. Apoyeke. Leaving it behind. A lot of cool land out here. So we need to head a little bit more east. Imagine the heat inside that little glass bubble. I mean, I got uh, I got air conditioning in here. I think that's what this is, right? Maybe. There's got to be an AC in this for sure. All right, we don't need to be like maxed. Maybe we can be maxed. We're only in. Is being in the yellow on RPM fine? I don't know. Altitude. We're coming up on 2,000 feet. We're not going to get too high up in the sky. Maybe just a small climb, like 2.5 degrees. So it's 5 degrees, that's 2.5, so we can get the yellow just to point up just a little bit. Give it a couple nose up trim notches. Reno's a name GPS waypoint. There's a global series of GPS coordinates. Yeah, I know. Isn't that what VO, like, your VOR uses as well. We've already been over this. You tell. I'm, I'm just going to assume you're telling all of chat. Turning didn't occur to me to get out of the caldera. Yeah, anytime that we've made an approach um, flying IFR in game, we always get a series of waypoints that are called out, and uh, as we've discussed before, chat, those are actual places, not just in-game, but in real life. So if we ever get a waypoint call out while we're flying instrument flight rules, those are places that real pilots can uh, take approaches using those exact coordinates. What is the cost of this plane? More than uh, you could probably afford. Okay, Chad, if you're here and you can afford this plane and you're not subscribed to me, then get out. Okay? <laughs> I think that's fair. Three hundred and fifty K minimum. Let me slide on over because there's no co-pilot in here. I, I can just move over to the other seat. I wonder what that is. Three fifty K is why it looks like a Mitsubishi Lancer Evo on the inside. Wow. Take that back. It's made out of pure carbon fiber. And you will respect it. Dude, my lime green deserves your respect. Yeah, we're going from one volcano to the next. The last one was significant just because of how big it is and the fact that it hasn't exploded in a while. <laughs> the next one, I think, is going to be much taller. This one was very wide. I'll tell you where we're going. Pure carbon energy. Okay. Where are we at? 
Hey, everybody. We'll probably do, um, let's see. We will probably do... the chat version of this. Mm. What do you guys think? So we're gonna be landing, okay, let me just zoom out a little more. We're gonna be like, we could just fly by this or we could land. I guess if we just fly by, we're also going to land here, which is in a lake, and then we're going to land here, and then we're going to land down here. So what part do you guys want to do? Because whatever we do, I'm going to have to back out to the main menu, and the whole point of this was kind of the fact that I don't have to back out to the main menu. Kind of wish I could just like go online. Uh, from here would be cool. That would be neat. Welcome aboard Etel Air. Speaking about Etel Air, Monkey Dude, thank you for your Prime subscription. How you doing? Business Raven, as well as sharing it today. Thanks to both of you for the first time subs. Fantas is subscribing for a fifth month in a row. Hello, Fantas. Kenshin Benshin is back for almost a year. Just in time for the uh, in-flight meal. Strange Wolfful is people arriving. Howdy, Strange Wolfful. And Addy Patty with a fresh tier one sub from an hour ago. Sorry I missed you, but thank you, Patty. For sharing that hard-earned organic sub. Thanks to each of you hanging out so uh, we could go let's go ahead and, and do a little climb I'm just gonna throttle up climb and maybe the, a little get a little air and we can go a little faster true airspeed so right now we're on an intercept course I'm trying to take the, the most direct path got another airplane which we should be able to see outside of our uh, pilot side window, but I don't think they're going to be close enough for us to actually get a visual. And not just a visual, but if we get their tag, we can actually see where they were coming from, where they were going. Let's take a look. Drink too much last night, ready for a nice chill flight. Seems like you're not the only one. <laughs> we had a number of people in chat be like, I'm too hungover for this Etal. Every time you turn your camera, it affects me. This is where we just flew out of, over Laguna de Zuloa, and we are now on our way, kind of back to this line. Tipitapa, that's a great name for a city. So we're in Nicaragua right now, and we'll continue to be so, flying over the lake, it's its own namesake in lake form. Uh, passing by, this particular spot is kind of the next point of interest. This is called Concepcion. And we can kind of look that up now, but I'm scared that I'm drifting way off course. Am I? Actually, no, but we're taking too direct of a course back to where we're supposed to be. So we're just going to give it a nice, gentle turn. Concepcion. One of two volcanoes along with Maderas that form the island of Ometepe. Concepcion is a great volcano. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty famous. It's a stratovolcano that forms the northwest part of the Isla de Ometepe. It is 5,200 feet tall. So, uh, you can probably see it from here. <laughs> It's that way. Just head towards the big spike. For reference, we're not even 5,000 feet up, so it is currently taller than us. Like, as, as high as we are above the ground, we're going to have to go higher if we want to go above it. For reference. It is big. 
since 1883, so like 140 years ago, it's erupted at least 25 times. The last time was March 9th, 2010. They're characterized by frequent, moderate-sized explosions. Adventure seekers all over the world travel to Ometepe Island to climb Volcan Concepcion. There are numerous trails in the tropical forest that surround the volcano's ash-covered peak, so big climbing spot. I think it's gaining mass. It grows in mass and exerts pressure on the crust as it grows from additional magma flow. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Dude, maybe it'll explode while we're flying over it. I'm curious if it includes volcanic ash and live weather. I doubt it. I'd be very surprised. I think um, the best it can do is dic like dictate haze. So if the sky itself is like hazy, I think it knows, but that's about it. You definitely would not want to fly directly over it. Yeah, but what if I just flew into it? You know, nothing, not a big deal. My mother's maiden family name is Concepcion. Is your mother's family a volcano? Something, something, uh, as big as one. I don't know. You know, it was there. Did I hear explosions? Leo Malaska, not yet. <laughs> Mostly lost. I think you know exactly what I'm implying. But yeah, I don't, I don't really know... Concepcion means, I mean, is it just what I think it is? Like, conception? Or is it something else entirely? Who's this? That almost looks like it's supposed to be a tiny airfield. Got some crop circles over here. Spinning them around. Doing the little water wheel technique. Funny how some do it and some don't. I guess you have to have a big enough plot of land. It's a common first name in Brazil, really. With the Portuguese version. Hmm. Did not know. Dave Concepcion was an all-star shortstop for the Big Red Machine in the 70s. I have no idea what any of that, what you just said. Rogantic. But I believe you. A nickname for the Cincinnati Red. Why you call them the Big Red Machine? Huh? You think we're all gamers in here? They dominated the National League from 1970 to 1979 and is widely recognized as being among the best in baseball history. Combined record from 1970 to 1979 was 953 wins and 657 losses, an average of more than 95 wins per season. Well, there you go. Now we're on the same page. Now I understand. We can land in that. I'm not going to, but I could. Let's figure out where we are. We haven't done, like, a map reference in a while. I mean, I know vaguely where I am, but... And I can see where I am, but I want to see what I'm flying over, because that's kind of fun, too. We're at about 6,000 feet. That's fine. I'm just going to nose down now. Kind of just hang out around here. Okay, it should correct itself. We're going pretty fast. I mean, I'm running the engine, like, as fast as I can, basically. So, this is where we're heading to. 
um, from there. So boom to boom. So it's a pretty short leg of this flight. And that's kind of the intention is to break up this flight with just a lot of different points of interest. And then we're going to head to a third volcano that I believe is right here. Arenal. Or Arenal. Is it Arenal? That sounds more correct. Arenal sounds very like American. That's why I called them that. Because that's what you can Google. That's why I Googled it. What was I going to talk about? Dude, something I was like, well, wait until we get into the air for that. Um, Chad, remember, do you remember what I was going to say? What was the thing I was going to talk about just before we took off? I was like, I'll wait and talk about this after we take off. You're supposed to know these things. Was it food? I don't think it was food. Somebody clip it. You were going to say Pog. True. Pog. Um, unrelated to whatever I was going to say, I met one of my neighbors yesterday for the first time in a month. They probably thought I was a ghost. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, it's COVID. I'm not going to go knock on your door. Second of all, the burden of introductions is on the current neighbors, right? Like, new neighbors don't go knocking on their new neighbors' doors and be like, Hi, I just moved in. Like, that doesn't happen. It's, it's, the burden is on the new neighbors if they care. And if they don't, that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't mind if we, I've lived in places for years and literally never even met. In fact, I lived in one, uh, it was a, a duplex. Like a house split into two with a wall down the middle. And as I lived in that house for almost two years, and I never not once saw my neighbors. Like, I didn't even know what they looked like. They lived on the other side of the wall. I just knew that they were there because every time they went into the kitchen, they would slam the cabinets. And because those walls were connected between our kitchens, I could tell whenever they were in the kitchen. And if I put my ear up to the wall, I could hear them having conversations. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I knew they were talking in the other room. And that's when I was like, well, if I can hear them, they can probably hear me. So I'm just not going to talk. Unless I'm in my office where I was making YouTube videos. Creep. I couldn't hear what they were saying. How is that? A, I, I can... I live on the other side of the wall. We share a wall. But you tried. Yeah, because they were raised voices. I wanted to see if they were having an argument. Obviously, I want to know what they were saying if they're having an argument. I want to know what they're fighting about. But anyway, I have no idea what they what they look like. And it's just weird knowing that I live next to somebody, like literally next to them. I could reach out and grab them through the wall, right? And I just, I don't know, never spoke to them, never, never it, one single interaction. Anyway, so I met my neighbor and uh, she's a very sweet old lady, very nice. Um, said hi while checking the mail and it was like kind of endearing because I was you know trying to be the good neighbor who's like you can call me for anything you know if you guys need something you and your husband feel free to reach out you know I, I work really weird hours so feel free to leave, a, leave like a note on the door if I don't respond and I was like you know what um, would you like to have my phone number because she was just very nice, and I could tell that she, from from my, like, armchair psychiatrist perspective, just wanted to, like, talk to somebody. Probably hadn't been talking to a bunch of people, beaten, you know, a bunch of people. Just wanted to have a nice chat. So I was like, you can have my phone number in case you need to call for some reason. Like, some sometimes, especially that generation will do it because they're always, you're talking about creeps, they're always looking outside their window. They're always watching to see what other people are doing. I don't know what it is, but if you live near somebody who's like 70 plus, they're always looking out their window to see what's going on. 
And also, in my opinion, if you live next to somebody who's older, it's nice to for them to have somebody that they can call who's right next to them. Because if I got an emergency call, I would absolutely come over and, like, help, right? If it was like, I I need help opening a pickle jar. No. If it was like, I hurt myself or something, I don't, I don't like the idea that somebody could be just one house over and not be able to, like, get in touch with anybody that can help them out. So... Anyways, the second part of the story is not to tout how uh, good I am of a person, but rather, it was so cute. Um, she didn't know how to add me to her phone book on her phone. And it was adorable. I was like, if you have your uh, cell phone, what I can, I can just give you my number, and then you can add me to your book. She's like, I don't really know how to do that. And I was like, okay, would it be easier if you called me? Or no, no, if I, if I called you, because you didn't know how to input my number. So I was like, she's like, that's good, that's fine. So she gave me her phone number, I called it, and she's like, is this you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm calling you right now. Like, I'm standing next to you, and that, that was why we did this in the first place. And so she's like, do I answer? And I was like, no, um, just hang up. <laughs> and if you go into your recent calls, you should be able to, to see my name if you click it you'll see that there's like an add to phone book option or add to contacts. And she's like, oh, okay. And she kind of like acted like she knew I was talking about, but she didn't. It was very clear as you'll soon find out why. So she went to go check the mail. And then as I'm getting in my car to go to the grocery store to get frozen tacos and uh, enchiladas, which I of course did not mention that I was going to the grocery store to my new neighbor, uh, like a psycho to get five different types of enchiladas. Uh, I got a phone call. And I was like, that's weird. It's her. She's calling me right now, like less than two minutes later. It's like maybe something happened at the mailbox. So I answer the phone. No, nobody's on the line. It's like, that's strange. So I, I, I kind of like get out of my car, go out of the garage. And I'm looking and I'm like, and she's like, hey, and like waves back. And I was like, you call me for some reason? She's like, no, but I can see her phone's on top of her mail, and the screen's lit up. So, apparently she had called me on accident, because she had, she didn't know her phone was unlocked. So I was like, okay, no problem, I just wanted to, to check to make sure everything's alright. You know, we just talked two minutes ago, but just in case <laughs> something went wrong in that period of time while you're outside. So, uh, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, and she was like, very clearly embarrassed because I had caught her on a, like off guard and she was trying to act like she she knew what the kids were into these days, what with their phone books and their like ad people by calling their phone. And uh, she walked back to her house and then literally as soon as I got home from the grocery store, I got another phone call from my neighbor and I was like, at this point, I'm like, is she the type of neighbor that, like, once she gets your number, she calls you for literally every single reason? Because I've met those people before where they get one number. They're like, ah. like, I, I really thought for a second it was going to be like, hey, I just saw a car pull into your driveway. Like, I just wanted to make sure it was you. Like, I was hoping that wasn't the type of call I was going to get where now I was just going to start getting random phone calls anytime there was movement outside my house. Like, the, the security um, focused and obsessed individual who's always checking to see if anybody's breaking into somebody's house or stealing a package. Um, and anyway, it was her again. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, this is so embarrassing. But I was just telling my husband that I was going to accidentally call you. I was trying to just add your number to my phone book. It was like an hour later, and she was still trying to figure out how to add my number to her contacts list, and it was so cute. So she apologized profusely again. It was like, I'm so sorry for calling you and wasting your time. And I was like, it's okay. I just wanted to answer just in case, you know, better safe than sorry to answer and make sure nothing's going wrong. <laughs> so she called me and I looked and I had another missed call from when I was at the grocery store. So after I gave her my number, she accidentally dialed me no fewer than three separate times in an hour trying to figure out how to add me. And I'm not saying that to make fun. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it because it's funny in like an endearing way, you know? I'm not laughing at her for being like stupid or ignorant. The, the thing is like it's so easy to forget that there's a lot of people out there, especially older generations, who just 
things that we totally take for granted, like, give me your number, I'll send you a text, add my number to your phone. Done. That was like a one and a half hour affair for her to, like, figure out. Because she's never done it before. It's like, everybody's got to have a first time to learn stuff. And it's just like kind of like a, a nice reminder that it's never too late to learn something that you're maybe ashamed of not knowing. And, you know, I would have like helped her in person, but given COVID and all that, like I, I don't have it because I, I'm not at risk. I stay in my house like a hermit, dude, every single day. I venture to the grocery store, get my groceries, and I'm home the rest of the day. I don't go to work and have like an office job with a bunch of other people or anything like that. But she doesn't know that, so I'm not going to be like, Here, hand me your phone, and like, get really close to me, even though you're an at-risk person. Uh, come on! Like, I don't... I'm not going to do that, so it's kind of like, Well, sorry, you gotta gotta figure this one out yourself, because I'm not going to look over your shoulder. You know what I mean? And, uh, maybe she just got that kind of cell phone recently. Because I, I have a couple grandparents, one of which is into Facebook. And I remember visiting years ago, trying to teach her how to use an iPad. And that was fun. The funniest part that uh, there was, uh, to get to Facebook, what she would do is, instead of like, she didn't understand how to use the apps... So, like, I, she had Facebook, obviously, installed on the, um, on the iPad, but didn't understand how the concept of, like, opening it as an app worked, because it had a, a different UI than what she would do was open her email, and anytime she got a notification, it would pop up with a Facebook email, right? And she would click on the email, because the only app that she knew how to use on the entire iPad was her email. And it would open, like, an in-email browser. And that was the only way that she knew how to access her Facebook. So going through the app, the app has, like, a different UI, a different layout, a different login prompt, whatever. And literally any change whatsoever from that one specific way that she knew how to open up Facebook was, like, not going to do it. Sorry. Not possible. You have just changed the rules and the dynamic of my ability to interact with technology. And I cannot follow you down this road. And it's like, well, you just have to push... There's only one button on the iPad. It's the big one at the bottom. And that takes you to the home screen. I already lost you. It's gone. You know? Can't... You can't help me anymore. Home screen? And if you double tap it, it opens up recent apps? What? Okay, sorry. You double lost me now. I assume either she figured out how to add me to her phone book or she finally just gave up. I don't know which. Maybe after the third time she accidentally called me, she's like, eh. Whatever. For all I know, like, she got a notepad out and just jotted down my number and stuck it to the fridge. I'm not sure. That, that could be a likely outcome as well. Invite her to an in-flight meal. I'd be too embarrassed. Hey, you guys want to come over to my house? I got a table. <laughs> That's how my introduction goes. I got a table. Nobody's ever going to come over to my house, okay? I don't want them to because it's just like... I'm not embarrassed. There's just too much to explain. I'll go over to somebody else's house, but you ain't coming over to mine. Because it's just not worth my time to have to, like... Oh, what do you do? Hold on. The only place that's furnished is your office, and it seems you've got a map of the world and a microwave in there. Can you explain a little bit about what that's all about? <laughs> that's, just, that's just a conversation I'm not able or willing to have. So I think uh, this first one right here is Concepcion that we're coming up on. 
And these two comprise the same, uh, what's it called? They form the island of Ometepe. Maderas is the other one. But yeah, the, like uh, explaining why there's not much stuff in my house is one thing. But, oh, you want to come take a look around my house? Yeah, come to my office. No. No, don't look in there. Because then I have to explain why I have lights, like camera mounts, the map. You can stay on the table. Just stay right there, seated at the table, okay? Nowhere else. Just right there. Because, again, I'm not embarrassed. It's just like... I don't want to, I don't want to, exp I'd, I'd be more embarrassed to explain streaming than why I don't have furniture. Oh, you're on the YouTubes. I know YouTube. Okay, great. Can I have your channel? No. Sorry. You can't, okay? Because not only uh, do I not want somebody to know exactly where I live and where my channel is, but also you're going to watch me now. And you can't just, I got, you can't give a neighbor the, it's basically like letting them hack into your webcam. You know what I mean? The fact, like, you guys can all see what I'm doing, and it's fine, because I can turn it off. But if my neighbors know exactly what I, I do, it's like, well, my neighbor is doing some shenanigans. I can hear him through the wall while I'm outside. Let's tune in and see what he's up to. Wow, he's pretty weird. Like, that's, that's too strange for me. Hack a man. Hey, tell it's me, your neighbor. She's worse. Were you the, you're the older lady who can't add me to the contacts list. It's the only explanation. I love how this uh, volcano is so big that the longer this conversation goes on, the more I can't believe we haven't already passed it. To the point where I'm not even sure if it's getting closer. We could just be frozen in air. We're not, we're not, but we could be, and I wouldn't be able to prove it. The, the real thing is that the Earth is huge. That's the real thing. The Earth is absolutely massive. And even going, we're going nine, we're not going slow. I think the recommended airspeed is 85. We're going like 91. And we're probably going even faster than that, because we're going 91 at 8,500 feet. So if somebody wants to math that out, uh, 91 knots at 8,500 feet, and find out how many miles per hour that is. Where on the map are you now? We're still in Nicaragua. And we're heading down to Costa Rica. We are about to pass around... Volcan Concepcion. Which somebody asked how tall it is. It is 5,280 feet tall and rests on a one kilometer thick base. So it is one kilometer like edge to edge, here to here. It's considered a pristine volcano because there has been no influence of other volcanoes on its growth. The growth of the volcano comes in phases based on weaknesses of the crust that it rests on. It says about 105 knots. So 105 knots converted to miles per hour. is about 120 miles an hour. So we're still going way faster. We're going about twice as fast as you'd be going in a, in a car. Like if you were going 60 miles an hour. So let's get a little closer. We're doing a flyby, right? So we may as well get a nice view. You can see true airspeed on the third person HUD. Like this. Uh, 
Um, it seems like it's matching. Where's true airspeed? Because this is indicated. I don't know. Does anyone else feel like the camera is like off? See, that's even. But the default is like off to the side for some reason. Big volcano. Nice propeller view there. No press end. End. Chai, you guys are terrible at directions. Do you know that? Absolutely atrocious. Just press... It's E... Wait, what? Press any key to continue. Just press end, chat. Don't you know where that button is? I could tell you where it is, but I'd rather watch you squirm. Like, on my keyboard? Alright, forget about that. Who cares about, uh... True airspeed when you have a volcano. <laughs> really puts that into perspective. Well, the trees um, must have burned off on this side. Can we see the top? Yeah, it's right there. Do you not see it? Look at those clouds. <laughs> Land uphill. A rainbow! Is it raining right there? That's cool. Climbing is hard, chat. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Your angle of attack is too high. I like getting a combination of views so you can see what's going on. Alright, who's that one guy who asked me to go to the top? Here you are. There's the top of the volcano! We gotta land there. <laughs> I can't land there. How would I take off? Now dive. Alright, if you want me to try to land there, I have to save first because I'm not gonna do this whole flight over again. This is flight day four, flight two. There we go. You probably flew into an ash cloud. Is it erupting all the time? Is it just smoking all the time? I feel like that would not be livable. 
speaking of livable, I don't even know where the stupid little landing spot is that you guys were daring me to land in. All right, for the record, this does not count as an error, okay? Because I'm gonna crash. Just chat, like, Kyra Toby sabotaged this flight and is gonna screw up the live weather, among other things. Why are we speeding up? Flaps are all the way down. Alright, I can probably land right here. No. Where was the spot? around minus four two <laughs> imagine trying this IRL well IRL there would be an indention in the volcano it's just kind of flat because of the satellite Heat now air is going around the world that's how you're going Chat, there's no way, dude! Are you serious? Did you see how tiny that was? I can't land in that. And literally no way. That was just a dimple. I could do. There's definitely a spot here. Oh, God. All right, well, I can't land in the middle. That much is for sure. Didn't expect the backward roll crash. <sighs> that one got me. Why do I listen to Chad? Why do I listen? Almost pog. I actually did throw the parking brake and the handbrake on, but this, this, the hill was like 50 degrees. <laughs> Where am I? Is it? Hang on, did it just restart us at the exact spot? How? Is this where I saved? Where, where are we? Where's my flight plan, though? Again. This is a different hill, isn't it? No, it's the same one. How did I get a quick save? I guess it's just where I saved. Oh god. It's actually impossible to land in the middle of that.
it! I was try. I couldn't slow down. I was holding the brake the whole time. Dude. That was pretty smooth, though. Do I have- I guess now third time's a charm. I should just go. But now I gotta, like, stick a landing. That was the best one, though! How am I gonna outdo that? Where did I even do that? I think I did it coming around the other way. Oh, I wanted it. I wanted it, but it wasn't there. It wasn't there. Were the clouds this thick before we crashed, or did they just become this thick? do it the first time none of these count we already said that these are this is just a chat this is just a free challenge mode now this is Kyra Toby's fault we all know it Kyra Toby was the guy who single-handedly delayed this entire flight Now it's shrouded in fog. The game is forcing me to move. What? <sighs> 3D vision isn't even showing anything. There's a big potato coming up on the screen, dude. <sighs> Alright, that's the spot, but it's too late now. That was fun. That was really fun. Whee! As a premium <laughs> member, you are highly valued and will be used as a flotation device in the uh, event of an emergency water. Who landing. subbed? <sighs> to overstress the aircraft, how fast was I going? All right, let, can we just hit the rewind button, chat? Can we just hit the rewind button real quick? Undo all this.
Okay. All right. I got. I'm getting a little antsy. Obviously, I think we can all agree that I'm really not giving this the care and attention that it deserves. And might be trying to force. Uh, where the first, I, okay, really the second one was the main one. That was the one. The first one I technically did wheels down. Heat Pal Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. But like, I can still do it. I could still do it. All right, what last one? This is the last attempted at landing on a actual round volcano, okay? Win or lose, and then we leave. Why am I gaining so much speed? Oh god, he can't do it again, there's no way. I actually touched down, but I couldn't make it through the trees. Alright, one more try. La last one. One more. The fi this is the final one, win or lose. This is it, okay? I mean, that's the spot. You did it once, and you screwed it up. Wow, the wind is fierce. stupid little rich person plane, okay? You're too fragile to stick a landing on the side of a volcano in Nicaragua. <sighs> Alright, this is the last one. That was it. That was it. I tasted success and I couldn't hang on to it. He's addicted to stunt landings. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty fun, dude. Did I put landing gear down? Okay, that one, there really wasn't anything I could do. Like, I was going almost... I think I was just so steep that he just rolled over. I was at a complete stop almost. And you can go back and watch the clip, and I... I mean, this doesn't do anything, it just moves the aileron. I just fell over. Chat just says it counts so we don't have to do it anymore. Which is exactly why... We have to do one more. Because I can taste success. Oh. Uh. Okay. So. As I was saying.
Not again, dude. Not again. Not again. The same song every single time. <sighs> Keeps tipping that way because we're on like a 40 degree incline on the side of the volcano. <laughs> it's just the angle of the earth. Unfortunately. <laughs> There's really only so much I can do. Here's the only way to do it is basically to in oh god to end up perfectly vert instead of like horizontal We got to go hamburger instead of hot dog, you know, you know what I'm saying That's the only way Uh Chat, do you believe? <sighs> I tried to turn into it. I actually touched down. You shouldn't have believed. It was a mistake. Alright, I'm seriously... Seriously done. Because of the fog. It's like bad weather. I have to go inside and stop playing basketball with my friends. Because I'm serious. I'm like in a storm. There's like... E Chat is summoning clouds. Just to try to prevent me from doing this. You know I'm having fun. So you're just trying to stop me. Right? Well, these are just trees. Woo! <laughs> yep, okay. That was a uh, good run. Good run. <laughs> uh, send it. <laughs> send it, dude. All right, can we just not tip over? That was, I mean, that, that counts. That counts. What, I don't, there's not another way to do it. Who's gonna go pick up all these, uh, pilot bodies off the side of this volcano, you know? Epic Ecatch says, you got this. Spiralot says, well, ain't that a hot landing? What up, fam? You didn't expect to see this for the whole time you were here, huh? Del Medico says, highway to the danger zone. Thanks to all three of you. That's very nice. Thank you for putting up with these antics. But also, this is just fun. But that's what I mean. You make your own fun in Microsoft Flight Sim Chat. Sometimes your fun is A to B flying. Sometimes it's landing on the side of a volcano, you know? Sometimes it's landing on the side of a volcano in fog. Sometimes it's... Not remembering where... Oh, that's where it is. I'm gonna tip again. I'm gonna tip. Brakes are hard! I got hard brakes on! <laughs> uh, I give up. I give up. I, I, I rolled into a tree. Nothing I can do about it. Oh, uh, bonk. <laughs> and then I says to him, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> hey, hang on. How come I can hear myself now? All right, but what if... Listen. But what... Chat... Okay. Listen, I can't even see... The cloud is... Too, this is extra difficulty.
I can't. <laughs> I can't stop. All right, that one counts for real because I tried to hit the brakes and I almost flipped over backwards. So I thought maybe if I just roll far enough, I can do like the matrix whip around in the car and like take off. That was the one. Let's call it a day and keep going. I got the, the thing that actually sucks is I have to put my uh, flight plan back in. I know that I'm going uh, east. And this is, uh, Kairotobi's like, I'm never gonna joke again. <laughs> no more memes. Watch your speed. All right, so everything from this point on is for real. So while we're up here, I think we have to do a direct to select waypoint R E N A L. Enter and activate. Okay, that should take us exactly where we want to go. We out of here, chat. Onwards. Let's turn on the 3D map. That way, we can fly a little bit lower. Without freaking out. Because this is, is this another volcano right here? It might be. I missed the in-flight meal. Don't worry, we're going to do another in-flight meal. Because I didn't really eat that much. <laughs> Probably need a second one. Dude, it's hard to see right here. But thanks again, Epic CAJ who gifted a sub to Lux Sizzle as well. Much appreciated. Thanks for the gift. Another landing on a volcano. Yeah, there will be a in-flight meal sequel. These clouds are only 3,500 feet above sea level. That's what's insane. Like, we're really not that high up off the ground, but if you only looked at the clouds, you would think so. It looks like, uh, another rainbow, dude. Is it just raining over here, or what? What I did learn, uh, during that was that the landing gear on the Icon is actually pretty stout. Because it, it had some bounce. But the thing is, the icon itself is not that heavy. So, we're able to come in a little harder on some of those bounce landings. The rainbow's pretty awesome. I'm gonna find chat on one side of it. I know you guys are out there. Well, uh, the other part of the Concepcion Island, which is Ometepe, is right here. This is the Maderas, which I think is another volcano directly ahead of us. Of course they have rainbows. Yeah, they got the whole weather system here. I think we're still in live weather. The good thing about not having to go back to main menu and load the flight plan is we still got live time, live weather. But yeah, I don't mind taking a like half hour aside to just do something silly like that because we're just it's it's important not to take the game too seriously, you know? If you want to do something like try to land on the side of a volcano, do it. <laughs> You'll still learn something. You know? I I feel like I still got better at controlling the plane by attempting to make an absurd landing. 
I figured out what it's capable of, um, how far it can go before it stresses, how hard it is to come to a stop on a 45 degree slope, you know, things like that. Everything is daylight. Yeah, and I can waste time without actually wasting daylight, which is nice. It's only 1.44, that means local time it is, like, what, 3? 3, 3.40? We should still have a nice four hours of daylight, basically. And that's just till sunset. this mountain chop hey uh you want to land up there guys you guys want to try and land right here dude no <laughs> The emergency landing plus takeoff on previous streams was so much fun. The extra stuff makes the rest of the flight more interesting. Yeah, I agree. I like the... It, it's fun to do because it's like just a challenge that you put yourself through. Because it, it was doable. Like, I really think that there was a world in which we did come to a complete stop there. And get out and admire our work, right? I couldn't exactly get it. I think with a few more attempts I could have. If I'm reading this correctly, do we just want to line up that triangle with the middle, or what? I don't understand how the, the like GPS works. So we got purple here, purple here, and purple here. So we got a speed, altitude, and a heading. Yeah, we're just way off. Okay. So I think I had the right idea. It should just move. I don't really understand. I, I don't really get the. how to, like, maneuver just by using that screen? Very much? But yeah, we're going the right way now. It's all good. Got some wind up here, though, chat. You see this bopping me around? Wow, chat, the pink line shows how far on or off course you are? Are you guys scientists? That's amazing, dude. Hang on. Is that what this is? It, this is, wait, this is me? And then the pink line is how far on or off course? Thanks, guys. That's why I keep you around. <laughs> Peepo G. <laughs> it's weird seeing these clouds like three, two, one to three thousand feet up. There's just water below us. I mean, yes, technically there is water, but it's in uh, gaseous form while it's in the cloud. And it will take physical form through uh, a technique called precipitation. Then it'll become a liquid. And if the temperature drops far enough, it'll become a solid. So yes, there is water beneath us. Has anyone told him this plane has autopilot? Epic, really? Would you like to uh, describe the process for turning on the autopilot? happy to uh, read that guy. And use, yes, yeah, complete sentences. The only autopilot on this plane is this one.
and he's doing a very bad job, so I'm gonna take control back. <laughs> uh, that's because I deleted the autopilot. He's about to flip me around going the other way. Also, I have to move the throttle. Cheating! He's cheating! Okay, so... What I'd like to do is fix the trim. Which I've basically already done. Cool oh, clouds. Autopilot's not done trying to land on a volcano. I'm the guy that was trying to land on the volcano. Las Vegas pilot found cheating in Central America. You'll never take me alive. They're not gonna extradite me. I can just live here. It's fine. Dude, it's not even time for the normal stream to start yet. That's unbelievable to me. If this was just a regular Saturday stream, it'd still be like, yeah, I got another hour and change. Maybe like an hour and a half. Maybe two, if I was going to start at four. Nope. It's already been eight. Didn't, I shouldn't have looked. How has it been eight hours and 45? How long did I spend trying to land on the volcano? Didn't I just see GamerDefBot 2 and we were just memeing about it? <laughs> like three hours. It was not three hours. It wasn't even one hour. Go back and look at the VOD chat. How long was I trying to land in the volcano? I'd say 40 minutes. I, I guess 40 minutes. That's my guess. Listen, what if I told you that trying to land on the volcano is the same as trying to get to your destination, okay? Because you create your destination either way. It's all in your mind. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. They're both made up. We could have gone anywhere, but we chose to go this way. But this is awesome. I wish I could hide the UI during this, but it's fine. So I see 50% fuel here, but uh, fuel indicator inside is right here. Okay. Got it. Looks like we're so high up. We're not even 7,000 feet. Still kind of climbing. We can throttle up a little bit, get some speed. So if we can get lined up, I'll show you guys where we are on the map and kind of where we're heading next. Because we're, we're on like the volcano tour right now. Uh, we're gonna, the water landing is coming up next. Actual landing. Probably gonna save again once we get there. Okay, so we just, um, this is Concepcion and Maderas. We're crossing uh, Lake Nicaragua right now, and we are actually heading a little off this line. We're going to go here. So there's another lake. It's called Lake Arenal. So once we get out of the water here, it's just a short hop over the land, crossing an airport. 
And then the lake itself is positioned and named after the volcano. So it is uh, also Volcan Arenal. And we're going to be landing like at the foot of that volcano in a really cool looking lake. Hopefully we can actually see what's going on here because these, these are some clouds. Can my toaster run this game? Absolutely not. Unless your toaster is an Xbox One and you wait until they release it on Xbox One. That's about the only way. Streamer man hasn't told me to stop writing in complete sentences, comma, help. Well, that's... That's not, that's not even a real sentence. That's not even grammatically correct. Professor shit post. Okay? So if you're going to have to write in complete sentences, at least do it right. Rip Dandy Kitten's channel points from earlier. These are some intense clouds. Is that thunderstorms going on down here? Hold on, that's a good question. Let's look at the weather. So where we are heading, uh, not like immediately, but where we're going to land is... 82 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Thunderstorms are predicted Sunday through Saturday all week long, baby. Uh, today we only got a 19% chance of precipitation. Wind 11 miles per hour. Humidity at 81% in Costa Rica. So we are not yet in Costa Rica, but we are kind of like heading that way. Be in Costa... Actually, we might be in Costa Rica sooner than I think. Where are we? Once we get out of the lake... It's a big lake. <laughs> yeah, once we cross over the lake, this is essentially the border into Costa Rica. That's where we're at. But yeah, we are going to have to get some fuel at some point here. The plan is this is the lake so we can go um, into Lake Arenal and then yeah, and then we're going to get gas unless we need to get gas sooner. We'll see. But no, toasters cannot run this game. Panda Buffs, good afternoon. How you doing? Chat, how you guys feeling today? I got some like cold coffee I should probably drink. Next time we take a BRB, I'm going to get a, a nice Coca-Cola beverage. Some good coffee, though. I don't want to waste it. That was the last of my beans. Of the Guatemalan variety, at least. Get some scenic shots in here. This makes the icon look like it's way up in the sky. This plane's so cool, though. I know it's slow, but it's been a lot of fun. You can micro you can microwave the coffee. I could, yeah. But I'm not gonna. All right, legit, one of you could sit out here. One of you could sit right... Well, the propeller would get in the way. One there, one there, two in here, two on the other side. And then one right there with your legs going down over the dash. How far do you... Okay. If I gave you as much money as you could possibly want, how long do you think you could hold on
on top. Let's say, let's say there was no dan- uh, <laughs> Okay, let's say there was a danger of death. You have to say right there, in this little cubby. <laughs> on the air intake. How long do you think you could actually hold on before you let go? Do you think you'd make it into the sky? Like, do you think you'd make it airborne? Before you lost your grip? Or do you think you'd lose it before we even got off the runway? <laughs> 30 seconds tops. It's so peaceful up here, though. Oh, anyway. I was going to continue what we were talking about earlier. Dude, I've been watching some TV finally. I finally got in the mood for live action. Does anybody out there have HBO Max? I signed up for the seven-day free trial, and I think they're going to suck me in. Ooh, that looks nice. Wow, just getting here. Cool, bro. What's up, Greg? I knew I'm Firewood. Which is a totally different username. I'm Firewood. But I would have guessed that you did, yeah. Talix Raised by Wolves sucked me in two. I just finished the first episode. And I would recommend it. It was like... Very... Eccentric is not really the right word. What does eccentric mean? I mean, like, the actual definition. Deviating from conventional or accepted usage or conduct, especially in odd or whimsical ways. Okay, it was eccentric. I would say it was eccentric. Uh, very kind of... bizarre. There, there's definitely some suspension of disbelief. But that's just going to be true of any sci-fi. The main suspension of disbelief is like... So, the premise is, chat, that, uh, without spoiling anything... Humanity's not doing so good. Right? Humanity, pretty bad. As far as we know, there was a big war. And, uh, some ships were sent off to try and basically preserve human life. So... Two androids... Basically raise these kids without going into more details because you'll see when you get there it's called Raised by Wolves and um, because they're androids they have like some human characteristics and some like robotic characteristics right so they're very matter of fact very you know by the book programmed specifically to raise these kids, like maximum patience. Um, they never, they never get angry or upset. And obviously, this is just like episode one, no spoiler territory. Things go off the rails fairly quickly, um, even by the first into the first episode. But I'm just, you know, trying to set it up. But what the suspension of disbelief comes in? I don't know what year. It's really supposed to take place, but there are I, just some actions that they do that I'm like, do you guys still do that in the far-flung future? Like, do you guys still knock on doors? Wouldn't androids just be like, I'm coming in? Like, there's, there's one point where, without spoiling anything, the an android, like, kind of knocks on a door for dramatic effect. Like, kind of smugly. He's like, how do you even know how to knock on doors? Why wouldn't you just oh, just go? I don't know. Small things that it would be nitpicking that did not affect my enjoyment of the of the show. And then some of the phrases, like the turn of phrase that they use, were common like idioms that we say now. And it's like, you guys still say that? Like 500 years in the future? Do 
So there were a few things like that. They said Pog. <laughs> they go, dude, this child in particular, Pog, am I right? My fellow androids? I watched the HBO miniseries with Mark Ruffalo. I know this much is true. A week or so ago, it's pretty good. I have no idea what that even is. I haven't even really heard of it, to be honest. By the way, welcome to Costa Rica, everybody. We just crossed out of Lake Nicaragua and into Costa Rica. We're there. I know it doesn't look like it because it's all big poofy clouds, big mushroom clouds. That was kind of like, that was kind of a whoa moment in that I had to remind myself I was playing a video game for a second. Damn, we're bot too soon. But yeah, I'd recommend it. If you like kind of weird sci-fi, um, it has like, just from, ep I only know what I've seen in episode one. It has like hard sci-fi. It has mystical elements. It has religious elements. It has cool backstory and honestly it was like in a really beautiful location I can't believe it's been nine hours Liuda it's best it's best to not not like this and just enjoy all the time that we've spent together you know that was the intention I told you guys this is gonna be like a 12 hour stream today We're just gonna hang out and chat and talk and land in volcanoes and eat frozen dinners and stuff. Don't not like this because it happened. Smile because it's happening. That's right, some of that. Pog, I can't believe it's been nine hours. See, it's a totally different mentality. Like, it genuinely doesn't feel like it's been that long to me. I think it's just because I slept so much overall yesterday. So we should be coming up uh, soonish. We're gonna be passing. You know what? What I might do. You guys want to land in Imrup? Go back to menu, turn on multiplayer, and then you guys like community fly with us the rest of the way. It's gonna be. It's gonna be like another few hours still. We got a. Oh, dude, we got a long ways to go. No. <laughs> okay, fine then. Be that way. Seriously though, do you guys want to? Or no? How fast is the A5? Uh, about 90 knots. Pretty slow. We did this so I could get in close and see the sights, but I didn't realize there were going to be clouds at... 3,000 feet today. So we kind of can't see anything. We're well over 10,000 feet up in the air, but the clouds themselves are extremely low. I'm still too sleepy to fly, but multiplayer is fun. Well, why don't we just push it off into the... I mean, we're still going to do the community flight. It's just a matter of where I'm going to start it. So instead of making an unprompted landing, we'll just keep flying, and uh, we're going to land here and then we're gonna let's do a community leg from here to Sirena that'll be good so we're still gonna get a community flight it's just a matter of when so we'll just keep doing this one solo so I don't have to go back to main menu I would but steam deleted my game two hours ago how did that even happen <laughs> androids in chat Smiles are androids, basically. But yeah, it's the uh, the show is basically. I'm I'm not really sure where it's gonna go because it's set up a lot of threads that it could absolutely act on with the mystical elements, the religious elements, and the sci-fi. It's kind of like a not everything is as it seems type show, where not only do things unravel in fairly predictable ways, but 
it doesn't mean that it's not entertaining. And there are some threads that I would say I didn't necessarily predict. But I can't, I can't talk about it though. The actual, the best part about it, I think, is just the way that the people who are playing the androids act. It's kind of this surreal, some, some of their movements are super exaggerated, you know? And it gets to the point where it is very, um, like, I did not have to suspend my disbelief that these were, ac they, they felt like they were actually androids. They didn't feel like actors, like, if you told me, it's Alex, be a robot. Okay, I am a robot. You know, like some lame, shitty, <laughs> like, guy that they just got on set and told them, Hey, uh, act robotic! They they have really believable mannerisms, I mean. And they're really heavy. I like how heavy they made them. Like, there's one, there's one section where the kid is trying to, like, drag, um, somebody around, and they're so heavy he can't. I was like, are you, is this little kid really about to pick somebody up on his back? And they're like, no, he's just dumb, and he tried. He's like, oh, okay, cool. There were, there were a number of segments like that where I thought the characters were going to do something really stupid just to move the plot along, and then the show was like, actually, I'm not going to do that really stupid thing that you thought I was going to do. I was like, oh, thank you. You have a little bit of respect. Is this game on Steam too? It is, yeah. Can we fly beneath the clouds? No, shut up. Just kidding. <laughs> As I've mentioned, the clouds are like 2,000 feet. There's not room. It's clouds all the way down. Can we talk about how ridiculously good this game looks? Yes. Have you seen the UK show Humans? I have not. Any other questions? But yeah, we were talking about Raised by Wolves. It's on HBO Max. Max seems like a pretty good deal. It's $15 a month, but like, I watched another show. This is TV time chat, okay? Just indulge me. Because I'm hoping there's somebody else out there. You guys didn't have much to say about the last one. But that's understandable. These are pretty new. Like, I, I really haven't seen any hype about them. Uh, it's okay, Xena fans. I'm just messing with you. But the other one I watched, also HBO Max. I didn't even know this show existed. I haven't seen a single trailer. I watched the third day. Uh, it only has one episode right now. And it's got Jude Law as, like, the main character. And I was like, wait a second, Jude Law has been in some HBO stuff recently. He's been in the, the Pope show, too, right? And they just hooked him back in. They're like, oh, you were the young Pope? What is his name? Is that what he is? Was he the young Pope? Yeah, you were a pretty good young Pope. Do you want to be, like, guy in uh, this main character other HBO show? And he's like, yeah. I think Jude Law's awesome. I haven't seen young Pope yet. But uh, maybe I will, because I like Jude Law. So going in the complete other direction, talking about mystical stuff, the third day is like folk horror. So uh, if you like shows that feature people acting generally abnormally while pretending to be normal and possibly sacrificing people to ancient gods in secret type stuff, then you might like the third day. It starts out really messed up. Basically, that's not a show that you want to watch with young kids in the room. Neither of them are. <laughs> but this one almost... Eh, I'd say both of them. Yeah, I haven't seen Midsummer or Midsummer. I don't know how to say that. Is it Midsummer? I haven't seen that. But folk horror, same genre. Um, okay, so imagine, chat, if you took Hot Fuzz and removed the comedy element, made it more edgy and takes itself very seriously. That's basically... 
what the third day is. If that's your thing. So you might want to check it out. English only, please, Vikus. Thank you. Thought Raised by Wolves was only HBO. Turns out it's on Sci Fi, CTV in Canada. What a description. It does fit. <laughs> the greater good. It really is like a the greater good show. Like, you can tell there's this community that's kind of in on something, and it's kind of like main characters figuring out actually what they're supposed to be in on and what's going on behind the scenes. And it's one of those shows that it's totally predictable in where it's going, but also has at least like three plot threads. I have no idea um, where they're going, and that's enough to like keep me interested. That looks like you could just go in there and like dive right into that pit. Get that HBO sponsorship, Eta, because I'm going to scope third day thing. Super weird show. I've never seen this series, but if you've ever seen Utopia, it's by the same people that did Utopia. I know that's kind of a cult classic that I just, I know of, but haven't seen. And people think very highly of it, so I think I'll just toss it out there. In case you guys maybe have seen it back in the day. The best part about, okay, so like, the best part about the third day was camera work color correction, beautiful color schemes, and like very purposeful where different things are highlighted, different hyper-saturated colors due to like behind the scenes English class subtext and meaning like, okay, the color green means this and the color red means this. Like it has that type of onion layer and really good just camera work in general and the acting is awesome. Um, I wouldn't say the camera work in the Ridley Scott one, Raised by Wolves, was, like, particularly excellent. It was good. And the acting was good. Slightly more hammy in a couple places. Like, the religious dudes are kind of hammy. But just still super... They're both enjoyable for totally different reasons. And then there's more shows on there, too. I'm, Chad, I'm, I'm pimping out HBO Max. I didn't even mean to. It just kind of turned into it. I just didn't realize how much stuff was on there that I actually wanted to watch. That's all. You guys want to watch a show right now? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so... I want to see... Uh, there's three other shows. I want to see The Outsider, Lovecraft Country, and Watchmen. Those are three other ones I've got on my list. If I started one of those three, which one should I start next? In-flight movie? Let's get banned on Twitch. If you could only pick one of those three, which one would you pick? Dude, Prime. Uh, I guess HBO kind of is on Prime, but it's also kind of not. All right, we kind of need to start A Descent because we're 12,000 feet up and we don't have a lot of like overhead room in terms of what this plane is capable of. Isn't it like 15,000? Chat says Watchmen. Those are some good looking clouds. They are, yeah. What's Watchmen about? It's kind of like a successor show to the the movie slash comic book Watchmen. Zack Snyder did the movie and kind of got a lot of critical acclaim for it. I rewatched it recently. It still holds up pretty well. I watched the super mega director's cut, which is like three and a half hours long. It's insane. But I didn't really tell you what it's about, Sheepy Cat. Because honestly, I don't really know what the TV show's about. And that's kind of fine. All I know is I trust uh, Damon Lindelof implicitly. And uh, he's a showrunner, so I just know it's going to be good. I 
and I kind of know just enough about Watchmen to fill in. I really haven't read the comic. I think I own the comic, but I don't, I'm not going to pretend to be like an aficionado. So we're going to like just throttle off a little bit, kind of nose down. Big dude. Not big dude. <laughs> big, big cloud, dude. <laughs> Look at these. I like this little uh, snaky cut. <sighs> I feel like once some, some of these points, I can just take a deep breath. So this is how low the clouds are. Those are mountains. That's kind of one of the reasons why we're not flying in the clouds. <laughs> in the off chance that we were to, you know, strike one. What's underneath you? Costa Rica. We're heading to eventually Sirena Station. Which is interestingly a marked spot in the game. Like it has a star next to it. As in the developers particularly noted it as an area of interest. But apparently it's just like a ranger station in the forest with a short grass runway. Okay, from this point, chat, we already got the volcano crashes out of our system, the funsies one. So let's just take the rest of the flight super serious. And actually try and stick these landings the real way. So this is uh, Lake Arenal. This is our destination, so we're going to kind of like veer off the course, and we want to land right about there, because the volcano is right there. Super serious time. No more fun, okay? Enough fun. A little 3D visual. Kind of get an idea. You can see the lake up ahead. Through the cloud layer. Probably need to descend a little bit more. Still at close to 12,000 feet. Just going to keep an eye on the speed. Eye on our fuel. Looking good on both. Take a deep breath as we look outside. And uh, get ready to plunge through the cloud layer. And possibly just... not be able to see anything, I guess. So, this is actually the volcano right there going off screen. And this is the lake that we're going to land in just in front of it. So, if the clouds are too thick, we're not going to be able to see it. But that's okay. Try and make a water landing with low visibility will be its own fun reward. Feels like we're totally nose down, but we're not. We're only like two and a half degrees. And even then, we're going to be picking up so much speed nosing down that trim is just really difficult to ma maintain while going down. Because as you nose down, you pick up speed. As you pick up speed, you pick up lift. So it's like constantly trying to find that balance. trip to Jurassic Park. Where even is the Jurassic Park supposed to be? In the real world. Besides uh, Disney and Universal. It is Costa Rica? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, uh, hmm. Chats figured out the real reason we're here. Are they gonna have the DLC for writing a pterodactyl? Hmm? Microsoft, you call yourself 
Microsoft Flight Simulator and you're not even simulating pterodactyl flight? <laughs> you peasant. <laughs> I think that's how people treat it, though. I saw some, like, big streamers. I don't even know who it was. I'm not going to call them out, even if I remember. But they were like, dude, Microsoft Flight Simulator? I thought it was going to simulate all types of flight. Like gliding, wingsuits, airplanes with no propellers, helicopters, blimps, air balloons. It's like, what do you think? This is steep? Did Ubisoft make this game? It's like an ancient and venerable franchise that's been around for years. I know they've had helicopters and stuff in the past, and I know they will again, but helicopter is the one I can understand. That's pretty much the only one. All right, we need to slow down a little more. Going a little too fast here. Thick clouds, man, and we're about to just plunge. I actually just lost my stomach a little bit looking around. That was too immersive for me. Like, I felt a sense of vertigo, and, like, I sucked Deep in my stomach. Is going around the world, and now you're going to. I think it's because we're pointed so far nose down. All right, we're under 10,000 feet. Still dropping, trying to keep my speed out of the yellow. Sorry for leaving, I'm coming back now. How come Ender's Mr. Parker is not banned yet? Sheepy Cat? Hello, Sheepy Cat, with just a smile in the chat. Welcome back. Thanks for popping back in, saying hi, and subbing for a second month. Glad to have you. All right, 8,200 feet and still dropping. Clouds are getting scary close. Pretty good angle. Careful you don't go too fast here. Does it have VR support? Uh, no, but I'm using Head Tracker right now. So I got the next best thing. But I think they're working on VR support. I don't know. I think they're going to work on impro improving performance a little bit more before that's uh, a thing. And uh, they confirmed development on the Xbox One version, so as they develop that even more then I think they're probably going to find other ways to optimize because they're going to have to cram this into an Xbox One somehow. We look crazy with a couple 49 ultra-wide screens. 49-inch, that's too much for me. Uh, I think the problem with ultra-wide is, especially like Head Tracker, it does look cooler, but to the point where it doesn't bend like playing Quake Pro. You know what I mean? I think ultra-wide is better if you don't have head tracking. Because you're not moving the camera so much. Like, right now I can just turn and look at whatever I want. And it's sure it'd be nice to have some peripheral vision. But if you get too wide, then I think the super-wide is better for a camera pointed mostly forward. And you occasionally change the angle with the mouse. Because if I was just constantly looking around, fisheye lens the whole time, it'd be very disorienting to me, I think.
All right, we're at 5,000 feet now. Big cloud. Uh, if you look down here, you can see the volcano. That's Aranal, and this is all Lake Aranal, and we're going to try and land up there. I'm just trying to get a little bit lower so we can fly, hopefully, near the water. But we may not be able to see anything. I have normal aspect ultra-wide, ultra, ultra wide, and it's fine. Friend has super ultra-wide, and the lens distortion's pretty bad. Well, there you go. A couple 49-inch ultra-wide. That's a bit... <laughs> it's a little too wide. 49 inch though that's like a, that's like two TVs those aren't monitors anymore those are just televisions why stop at 49 why not 50 at that point why not 70 okay so I'm all the way down here and I'm afraid I'm just gonna crash into the water before I mean to land um, I also need to change the altimeter that would be very helpful too and this is why we are not we were not flying below the cloud at this point. Well, there's the actual ground. If you were curious. A little spooky chat. But that's why we got this 3D map up right here. Hopefully I'm not blocking it too much. With my cameras. But we're coming up on our landing. Another landing. Don't think we're going to be able to see too much, though. <laughs> um, this is a bit foggy. So, how uh, high do you think the ground is here? Nothing like a surprise mountain? Can't be a surprise mountain. I have a 3D image right here. The water is the only thing. Here's the mountain that we're trying to land in front of. So, what we can't see is water. out the window to see if I can get a visual. I got nothing. Vaguely see the direction of the sun. This is some thick fog, chat. This is what the stream looks like when Cox cuts. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. All right, we're at 2,000 feet now. Still can't see anything. 2,100. Volcano's dead ahead. There's the volcano. There's the land. Water, I guess, is the scary part, but... I think we'd be able to see it. Oh, I can see it. There it is. All right, let's pull up a little bit. That is water, dude. We got, uh, we got a little ways. <laughs> Not by much. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> so, uh, here's the question. Where do you want to touch down? Heat Al Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. You see that land right there? We're going to be coming up on some land real quick. Well, I want to see the volcano. It seems kind of pointless to just land 
we can just skip this landing if you want. Do you guys want to land just for the sake of it? Or what do you want to do? Because this is the edge of the water right here. I was going to just... Good <laughs> screenshot. You want to land. All right. Well, we can't even see the volcano. The whole point of this was to land in the lake right in front of the volcano for like a nice scenic screenshot. And the screenshot is currently just gray blob. We're playing like limbo right now. This is actually very disorienting, as you might expect. Okay, flaps are down. I feel like I'm flying into the sun. Here we go. Here we go. Hello, trees. Hello, trees. Oops. This is not smooth, but it's fine. Alright, I want to turn, but I also don't want to tip this over. Let's put down the water rudder. And then we can steer. And get a little closer to the land. Well, we didn't crash. Splish splash. <laughs> Splish splash, we didn't crash. <laughs> Volcano hit. I thought you said a hitbox. Like the volcano hitbox is so big Air is going around the world and now you're going that just trying to land near it is going to somehow block us from the water this is the suspenseful content i sub for is this it pro casual landing in fog outside a volcano that you can't even see okay chad is anybody going to be mad if um i flip the wet uh Chad, is it legal to flip the weather just to see what it could? Nah, it's illegal. That's an illegal move. I don't think we can do that. They would ruin it. Because then if you, if you cheat once, then you may as well just do it all the time. We just have to use our imagination. You know what it feels like? I feel like, um some extremely rich businessman just invited me to his island after like kickstarting my business and me and one of my associates uh, are showing up to his extremely remote secluded fog island and once you land on it there's no way to get off and he ends up like actually this is just the plot to Deus Ex Machina well, not they just Ex Machina isn't that Ex Machina Don't want to get too close because of the shore. But here we are. Let's come to an actual stop. Ex Machina was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, but I really didn't like it, and I have no desire to watch it again. I can understand why people like it. It just wasn't for me. Too much uh, suspending of disbelief. I was questioning it at literally every turn. 
there were, there were just too many, like, it was a series of unfortunate events, and I just couldn't buy that somebody as smart as the guy that made all those creations could allow everything to crumble so easily. Like, that, that, there were some circumstances in there that were just like, there's no way he doesn't have a backup plan for this. Well, chat, here's our icon, Lime Green Fog Island Landing. The part that I remember the most from Ex Machina was this segment where... Um, I'm not gonna, like, super spoil it, but... Suffice to say, they figure out the, like, alarm scheme. And, like, use that as an opportunity to whisper. And it just keeps happening. And then he does it, like, three times. I'm exaggerating. It felt like he did it, like, three times. And the final time, didn't they do, like, a flashback during one of them? And there's, like, this 20-minute aside. And then when they bounce back from the flashback, the alarm's still going off. And it's like, you told that whole story. During, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. But they were just... It was well shot, and it was cool to watch. But, like, the plot was not the strong suit. Not a big fan of the green, but that plane is a beaut. Well, how does it feel to only have okay taste? Hmm? Gotta work on that. waiting for T-Rex to charge out of the trees and eat that plane. It's okay. T-Rex is a carnivore, and I am currently camouflaged for herbivores. It's actually nice to stop here because we need to direct to the next waypoint, which is MRTR. And also, you know what time it is, chat? It's time... ...for another in-flight meal. So we're flying from Lake Arenal... ...down to MRTR, and then from there to Sirena. Because I need some food, dude. But first, I want to hear a little bit about this volcano. They actually have their own website. A trip to Costa Rica isn't complete without a visit to Arenal Volcano. Okay. It's not complete without one, chat. Did Okay. When I say we're going to plan a trip to Arenal Volcano in Costa Rica, what is the first thing that you think of in terms of adventure, okay? I want you to I want you to picture in your mind's eye what's the number one thing you think of when they say an Arenal volcano number one destination for Costa Rica must have. Was it horseback riding with blue helmets in front of some hedges in some water? Didn't think so. But you're horseback riding with blue helmets in some water in front of a volcano. Uh, it looks like part of their hotel is sinking into Lake Arenal. I mean, there's water on the steps. It's flowing all over the place. That looks nice. Big waterfall. Some swimming. Dude, they got white white river rafting. White river rapid rafting? <laughs> I don't know, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. And then the volcano, of course, 
They have like a big uh, drawbridge, not drawbridge, a rope bridge. <laughs> drawbridge. You can like siege the castle, dude. White water rafting, yeah. Dude, imagine putting a, a McDonald's on that volcano, though. Evil cat, that'd be pretty cool. There probably is like a McDonald's inside the volcano. Okay, before the next leg of this trip, we got plenty of fuel, I think. So let me just leave the plane on, because I don't want it to think I'm ending the flight again. And it's time for another segment of Italia Prusis. The in-flight meal break provided complimentary for all Italia passengers, provided that you survive the flight. Flight attendants will be around shortly with enchiladas, fresh from the freezer. Dude, fresh from the freezer enchiladas, man. That's a deal. Okay. Let's go grab that. I'm I'm picking this time. You guys chose last time. I'm not going to let you pick the grossest looking one again. I'm going to pick the one that looks the best. And we're going to see if it actually is. Okay. And when I return... Momentarily, let's get this set up. Ugh. A BRB. No, you... <laughs> the end flight? Yes, we know. <laughs> it automatically started again. All right, I have chosen... The Saffron Road Chicken Enchiladas Poblano. Let's open it up and take a look at what we got. see the enchiladas and a few beans, some black beans on the right. Okay. Let's see how it looks. It actually does look fairly similar to the package. We'll see how it looks at the end. Alright, so I have to peel one corner. Remove tray from carton, peel back film at one corner for venting. Cook on high, six minutes. Let's stand one to two. Okay, let's see.
Now, it says... Roasted dark meat chicken. Wait, what? Are enchiladas traditionally served with dark meat chicken? Spinach? And oaxaca? Cheese wrapped in corn tortillas? They've got like a whole history thing on here. <laughs> Journey to better. <laughs> Explore the vibrant originality of regional Mexican cuisine with our chicken enchiladas poblano. Did you know that enchiladas are probably the most well-known of all Mayan contributions to modern life? Originally called chilipetzali, these rolled tortillas have since become celebrated for their unique regional fillings and sauces. Our chicken enchiladas poblano meal features the mild but famously smooth poblano pepper indigenous to the rich volcanic soils of Puebla, Mexico, complemented with leafy spinach and oaxaca cheese. <laughs> okay. Dude, maybe by the time this food is done, the uh, the fog will clear some. This is my favorite enchilada review stream. All right, based on how it looked, what did you guys did you guys vote or something? What was the deal? Rate this enchilada chat. What? This is this is just rate it what you think it looks like. Only 20 people cared enough to, <laughs> to vote. You guys voted 10 out of 10? Turnout was 98 last vote. Karatobi, um do better. Okay. I might need to take Midas out. There's only three minutes left. It has to stand for two minutes anyway, so let me just take Midas out. Okay, and I'll be back. You can see his tail just in the bottom right of frame.
All right. We're in. Looks better than the last one already. Let's see. I gotta let it sit for a a minute. Hold on. Gotta wash my hands. Okay, hands are washed. I think it should still sit for like a, a few seconds at least. What's up, chat? Take a vote on whether italics will finish the serving. Why do I have to eat the whole thing? What are you, my parents? If you don't eat all your food tonight, you can't have a cookie for dessert or play your video games. Like you guys eat yours. Yeah, right. Okay, let's see it. Okay, so the middle one turned out uh, questionable. I'll show you. Why does it have so many holes in it? You guys, you see that? the best like color coloration <laughs> it's a little uh muddy looking I don't know.
piece of rice on the floor. So far, so good. Hmm. Let's try the beans. Yo, I gotta say, tastes better than it looks. I, I think I'm gonna finish it. I think I'm actually gonna eat it. give this a very edible would buy again I mean the beans the beans are a little not great they're, they're good they're fine they just there's not that many of them I mean this is the cubby hole they're in like right in there there's not a ton of them but Look at this. That's like a clearly defined enchilada. You know, like that's enchilada one, enchilada two, rice, beans. It's not like a mess. You know what I mean? Like the first one was. If you think this one looks bad, maybe, maybe I set myself up with the bueno. It was like unidentified. The first one we did today was unidentifiable. Like, this is just a bite of food. It's got some rice, some beans, and like an actual piece of enchilada that doesn't like fall into just goop on the floor. I give this one... It actually tastes pretty good. I would say for frozen dinner scale. Surprisingly high grade here. I would, I don't know, I'm deciding between a 7 I would say, um, if it, if it wasn't I, I, I'm gonna go 7 If it looked better 7.5 If it was a little bit more presentable I would say 7 would actually buy again Next grocery store visit Little on the pricey side it, it, This was like $5 But it tastes like $5 like, you could eat this from an office freezer without being embarrassed about it. It looks a little messed up now that I've kind of been taking some bites.
Midas is the in-flight meal. He's just a sausage. <laughs> He's just a hot dog. Are you a hot dog? Where's your bomb? Where's your bomb? Did you find it? <laughs> He's like, yes, I did. It's right here. See, I found it. Get it? Good job. Well done. <laughs> He's like, what? Now what? All right. Get this back where it was. soon uh hang on i gotta i gotta like i screwed up the boom arm Okay, there may, there may be some issues. Uh, like now you can see this, and you shouldn't. But you might just have to deal with that. Anyway. The uh, camera's a little lower than it's supposed to be. This boom arm is only able to support two pounds, but it can barely support two pounds. This is like a pound and a half camera. And uh, it still sinks. Like, I don't understand. When you make like a $180 product, or like $150, and the only thing you have to do, like same thing for this, like a, like a mic arm, um, I've seen this happen. In fact, I have an example of another product. But, like, when the entire crux of your product relies on one screw to be tightened to support weight, don't you think you would make that one piece, the fulcrum of your entire creation, really well? Instead, it seems like every time that it comes to, like, screwing things in, they make them as small and as difficult to, to turn as possible, to the point where you have to over-tighten it, to the point where you strip the screw, you have to tighten it so hard. You know what I'm talking about? Dude, this is like, this is pretty good. But it's like, if I spend $150 on like a, a metal arm, how about just make the screw good? Yeah, I'm just gonna like finish eating this. Because, uh, the inside's actually pretty good. It's what, chicken and spinach? <laughs> Mechanical engineers, no. Can you rig it with a counterweight? Not in this case. 
Uh, what you can't see, it's basically like three segments. There's the metal segment that's connected to the desk. Then it's got one articulation point that goes over, and it's got another articulation point that goes over. So really, it's the fact that, like, the weight isn't very heavy, but it's really far away from where the support is actually coming from. You know what I mean? So just physics-wise, it's like supporting weight here, but the base is way over there. So the fact that it's, like, dangled this far before it weighs down, like, increases it. To the point where it can barely even stay up. It's 6 p.m. Time for stream. Thanks for being patient while I eat. I'm actually just famished after being here for 10 hours and only having a chicken salad sandwich. You didn't see that, right? But see, this is why this got like a 7. This is just a piece on my fork. That's just a piece of enchilada. You know? And the corn tortilla actually tastes like corn tortilla. I can, like, taste the spinach. I can taste the corn tortilla. I can taste the rice. And I can taste the beans. They all actually have flavors and not just one big mush. So I'd recommend it. It saddens me that all the other ones that we're gonna inevitably eat will be lucky if we even get anything that's as good as this one, even though it's just a seven. And we just started the in-flight meal thing. That was surprisingly solid. I'm glad that I picked that and didn't let chat pick the crappy one again. If I don't dispose of this, I'm going to have coffee gnats. Well, too bad, I guess. Future retail can deal with that. All right. GG, everybody. That was solid. Next, back to where we were. We got uh, places to fly and things to do. Amy's isn't crappy. I didn't... I, I was... It was either that one or this one. Maybe Amy's is pretty good. And I had one more as well that's like a taco bowl. Maybe we'll do that one later. <laughs> I don't know how if there will be a later uh, in-flight meal. But if there is, this is a frozen dinner kind of day, chat. Okay? It's part of the shtick. Yeah, streamer refueled. We were just chatting uh, for a little while. Doing a little just chatting eating stream. All right. And we're back. Actually, before we're back, let me just blow my nose real quick. Old man streamer has allergies and eats on stream. As we were. As we were. Hey, how'd you go taking off from that emergency landing last week? We eventually got there. Uh, as Kairutopi pointed out, if you check the plane log, we actually have a clip of it if you want to see how it turned out. Among other takeoffs and landings. Oh, okay, chat. That was a nice little break. Good breather. This is why this uh, leg of the flight was I was really looking forward to, because it's kind of just relaxing to do these water landings. And I think before, when we were kind of landing and taking off, it was like, okay, we did it. Time to go. 
But it feels like, hey, we landed with a purpose, you know? Stretch our legs, uh, open the door to the side, stand out on the edge, and take a piss off into the lake. I mean, relieve ourselves. Have some nice food, enjoy the foggy scenery. We actually have, like, a purpose behind the landings instead of just popping down. Okay, that was fun. Bye-bye. <laughs> have a little water, yeah, a little boat picnic. And now we're back. So the goal here... ...is basically just take off... ...head directly south? Yeah. Head directly south and west. It should be reasonably quick. This is a short little hop, skip, and a jump, but this is a proper airport. And once we land there, we're going to start the community uh, portion of the stream. So that's actually, this is good timing. I'm going to go ahead and water rudder up. Get takeoff flaps also in position. And then we're just good to go. Almost no warning there, chat, so watching the airspeed, we want to get up to at least 50 knots, really, before I start pulling up, so I'm going to kind of nose down just a little bit, just to try to keep uh, the plane from rising on its own. And then right there, go ahead and take it up. Genty, gently, easy does it. Gent, genty. Genty, easy does it. And then I want to kind of get the 3D vision map on so we can see if there's any land coming at us. Try to use our instruments properly. Go ahead and flaps up. We don't need landing gear up because that wasn't a thing. This is a seaplane, right? You missed the, uh, the joke for the last flight because we were actually flying Dodo Air. <laughs> Isn't that the thing that he always says? We're coming in for landing, but that's okay because this is a seaplane. I was typing that joke. We'll type it no more. Somebody already did. Yeah, we're, we are now good to go through the fog, and uh, I'm trying to figure out if I want to make any changes over here. Because it is kind of hard to see. Yeah, we're basically en route. Going to zoom in a little bit. Check the 3D vision, continue to climb. I would say it's about 5,000 feet. Would be nice. Thank you, Kyra Toby, <laughs> for uh, getting that information out there. <laughs> it was the first thing he did. <laughs> it was the first thing. I even announced it. Dude, Jeff with the PH. Rudder, flaps, all caps, fuel mix. I like the uh, in-flight meal segment because it means I actually get to eat. And for, honestly, we've been live for 10 hours. I needed some calories. And also I need some water. Wasn't even Jeffing, was just wondering. Okay, we're we've got some Jeff backtracking currently in the chat. Uh, I can confirm with visual eyes on that there was indeed a one-word question mark, and now I'm being told that was not in fact a backseat, but was just a genuine question. What says the jury?
Are we going to Jeff Jail? Let's send him to Jeff Jail. Guilty as charged. Bop. Take him back to Isla Maria Madre. We got an escapee. <laughs> One got out. <laughs> Must have been stowed away in the cargo hold somewhere. turn as we come up out of the low-hanging clouds. We gotta clear those trees, dude. Some tall mountains up ahead. That must be a volcano or something. We're already at 5,000 feet. Those trees are coming at you at like 6,500 feet. Forgot to turn on the bilge pump. We're full of water on the back. <laughs> uh, normally, I'd believe you, but I just happen to know the bilge pump is not operational. Ow! Sorry. I didn't mean to punch you, chat. That, was, that really didn't hurt. It just scared me. But yeah, bilge pump is in-op. Confirmed. Hey, you think I could land in this? You guys want to go for the landing? Oh, that's a scenic shot right there. Ow. Is that a waterfall? I mean, that's got to be, like, obviously in the game, it's just kind of a river at the top of this volcano. Or whatever this is. You guys can just pretend this is a volcano and it's currently smoking, but really it's just a low-hanging cloud. But yeah, that's got to be... Cause that, the game knows that's supposed to be water. It's got to be a waterfall up there. Now this is a view. Um, why am I not? There we go. It wasn't attached to the plane. Kind of just like removing the camera for a moment just to admire the landscape, the clouds. You know what it looks like? This, these clouds are so low, it looks like somebody accidentally put too much detergent in the laundry mat, you know? You came back in to get your clothes out of the dryer and it's just suds overflowing. Trying to take like a bubble bomb bath, and you left the water on too long. That's <laughs> these clouds are so low, and they're so dense. All right, we really don't need to climb anymore. Seven thousand feet's good. We don't have far to go. That's the thing. It's gonna be a pretty short little hop to the actual uh, airport. And that's where we're gonna get some gas. And that's where we're also, we are gonna back out to menu even though we don't need to and set up the community section. So if you guys, um, if you want, 
to load up, I can go ahead and tell you where to meet. I would prefer you guys all use icons, and we just have the flight of the icons. But I, obviously, I'm not your mom. I can't make you. But if you guys want to fly along for the last little bit of the Costa Rica segment before we start heading uh, further towards the end of Central America and the South America, then you can go ahead and start booting up the game and stuff and get ready to jump in. Because I promise you, if you pick anything that's not an icon, uh, you're just going to have to reset your position every five seconds because I'm going 85 knots. <laughs> There's only a handful of planes uh, that at almost max throttle peak at 85 to 90 knots. You are actually just going to be struggling to stay aloft at this speed. Are the earlier streams due to the time zone of the regions you're flying over? Yeah, to some extent. Also, I kind of just wanted to get an early start. I thought it would be a fun stream idea to just do, like, super early breakfast. It's a good excuse to see a different side of the community, a lot of uh, new people popping in, get to actually hang out while the stream is live, who maybe normally can't just due to their time zones. So, it's been cool to see all the different angles and sides in the community. Meetup Airport is MRTR. Yep, that's where we're heading right now. And it ain't that far away. I mean, you got time. You don't need to load in, like, right now. But we are almost halfway there, and we kind of just took off. We're, like, over a third of the way there right now. About 8,000 feet. Gonna try and top out there. I'm gonna max the throttle until somebody tells me not to. RPM is just right there on that yellow threshold. I think that's okay. You probably wouldn't want to do that if this was a real plane, you know? You probably want to just chill. You've got a pretty big green zone here between 50 to 85 knots, so... This, normally, there's not really a rush. A squad of icons would be cool, too. Yeah, exactly. But the plan is... Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the... the real map for you. Eaton Air is going around the world, and now you're going to. So, we just landed uh, over here. So this is, don't ignore the lines. The lines are just kind of guidelines. The, um, look back at Arenal Volcano. A lot of things to say about this. The volcano was dormant for hundreds of years and exhibited a single crater at its summit with minor fumaroles activity. How do you, fumaroles? Covered with dense vegetation, in 1968, it erupted unexpectedly, destroying the small town of Tabacon. Due to the eruption, three more craters were created on the western flanks, but only one of them still exists. Since 2010, Ar Arenal's volcanic activity appears to be decreasing. Explosions have become rare. Huh. Pretty cool. But yes, we are going uh, across the Gulf of Nicoya to Aeropuerto Tambor. Take a look at this again after I confirm. Yep, we are flying literally <laughs> perpendicular <laughs> to the direction we're supposed to be heading, as I do. Hi, Italics. Hello, Alfred. Thank you for 30 months of sub. Glad you're able to pop in and say hi. Welcome to the skies. We've only been streaming for 10 and a half hours before Alfred already deigned us worthy. What server are you on? None right now. But I will be on US East. But I... Trust me, chat. When I back out and get into a game, you will literally see it on the screen. Do not fear. So I'd like to go low and actually see the places that we're flying over right now. But that cloud cover is so spooky. 
that I'm actually just more comfortable up here, for now at least. Hey, theme. Hello. What's that? I love long flights. Many rabbits stick around and you will see quite a few. This is a long series of flights, but we always learn at least something about uh, the areas that we're going into or coming out of. I really enjoy just looking at all the volcanoes. In particular. Let's go ahead and nose down and uh, find out a little bit. Specifically, about the area that we're going to. Uh, actually, let's just look at the Google map. Let me just line this up. So we're going to be flying over Lepanto. And this is going to be kind of the larger area. There's a lot of beaches here, a lot of tourism especially. Uh, you can see we got a little peninsula on Punta Rinas, Costa Rica. Cute little waterfall there. Got a tropical forest, trails, suspension bridges, eco lodges. It is a peninsular port city. Huh, this is its own city, just this peninsula. Hotels, a university. Ooh, okay, maybe we'll take a little look at that in a second because that was gorgeous. All right, we're still going basically the right way. I want to see a larger picture of that. I can see, uh... I see the water, chat. The Golfo de Nicoya. Alright, Punta Rinas. Let me see a big picture. Here you go from the sky. I'll give you a couple different angles. Still going the right way, yeah? Okay. There's a couple different angles. There's a sky shot of what we're going to be flying over. And then here's one going the other way. Really cool photo right here. Punta Rinas. The place looks awesome. It looks like man-made. That's what it would look like in ideal conditions. That literally looks real. Uh, yeah, because those are pictures of <laughs> the actual city <laughs> uh, from the internet. How long did it take you to get your pilot's license? You know, about 100 hours. That's all. <laughs> That's why it looks real, though. Because we're flying over the actual world. Video games are crazy. We're flying over legit, real-world locales. So I would like to go, you know, I would like to descend. But I think visibility is going to be pretty harsh down there. Also, uh, because of that, you know what we haven't done in a long time? Make a save. We have not shaved at all. In quite some time. <laughs> Microwave food. No. We just did that. I ate moments ago with the in-flight meal. We're only at 9,000 feet. We're not that tall up here. So, MRTR is in sight. This is Punta Rinas right there. I'm gonna go see it. Let's go see if we can see it, chat.
Easier said than done. Because I really can't descend all that fast uh, without overstressing the aircraft. But we're already under 8,000 feet. Malus Bixie, what's up? Have we crashed yet? Uh, once or twice. Yeah, once or twice. Technically, the crash was not uh, official capacity crash, right? Chat told me to uh, land on a volcano. We landed in a volcano. But, uh... We also tried to land on a volcano. And that didn't work out so well. But I went on the record and said, this one doesn't count. Because Kyra Toby just dared me to try to land on a, the top of, like, the tallest volcano in the area. So as I'm descending here, basically all I'm watching is my speed. If my speed goes past 95, I slow down by nosing up. I already have the engine on full. I Dude, I can see it. You can see it through the clouds, peeking through. That's it. That's not where we're landing, but I just want to check it out because we were just talking about it. I like to put uh, places with faces. We looked at the actual IRL pictures. Now it's cool to just go see it like in the video game, you know? Should be right below us. Literally through this poofy cloud. How does that angle of attack indicator work, or does it? It always seems to be pointed in the same direction. Which one? The third person one? I kind of don't... Oh, this one? Uh, it's basically like... Green is good. Red is bad. You know what I'm saying? Green is good, red is bad. Ooh, look at this. Here she is. Puntarinas. What's up, Brady Monkey? You're just in time for a little sightseeing. Look how far it goes. That is a thin bit of land connecting it, you know? All right, now the fun part, uh, not crashing. So I think this is the part where I want 3D vision. And to just keep an eye... God, I can't see anything. There it is. Slow down, getting a little too much speed. So spooky and dark under here. Going a little too fast. Slow it down. Get a nice turn. Okay, I've just been kind of like weaving back and forth. Dude, they got like a whole resort pool at the very end of this. Peninsula? That's a fantastic place for it. You can see where the AI, like the satellite images, took pictures of the huge boats and stuff that are docked there and just like kind of printed them in. It's crazy how like narrow this actually is. Some marinas there with the boats. Fell asleep at the start of the stream and we still haven't landed? John, please. Okay? This is an amateur hour. We've landed about five times. Alright, 
slow down. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, my bad. I forget that you can look camera shots like that without even turning. Super convenient. That's a pretty good shot. This one's probably the best one. Or just, you know, free cam. Free cam's nice also. Especially with the sun in the background. Peeking through the clouds. Kind of gone now. So what you're saying is, uh, land on this land bridge. Just kidding. I could do it, but I'm not going to. Maybe I am going to. Touch and go, chat. Touch and go, okay? Not a full stop landing. Just gonna touch and go. Flying over these cars on the way. Get a little beach landing in. It's raining here, dude. Touch and go. Wheels up. Rainbow! It is a blessed touch and go. Look how huge that rainbow is. Goes all the way across the entire peninsula. Huge rainbow. Stretching all the way out from the water there. Smooth. Imagine seeing somebody drive by and like land like that. All right, back to our destination. It's fun to get sidetracked sometimes, you know? Go wherever the wind takes you. Sometimes you just gotta land on the on a land bridge. On the peninsula in Costa Rica. Just to say you did. Okay, so going back to regular map. Laps are all the way up. We're at about a thousand feet, so we're still pretty low. So we're heading towards GPS line and landing at MRTR. So I'm just going to kind of angle the plane to intercept instead of trying to go like direct back over. And then we'll get some uh, some gas, get fueled up, and get a community flight going. nice shots while we're on the way. I love all the, di the flying in all the different weather conditions is so much fun. Like, you guys can do the same flights that I'm doing. You could follow the exact same flight plan, do it at different days, different times, and it'll be an entirely different experience. 100% different. Let's look at, um... Let's look at time zones again. Because as we go into Costa Rica, we go we started in in Pacific time. We go Pacific Mountain Central back to Mountain. And then Yeah, San Jose, Costa Rica is still Central time. No. It's mountain time. And then Panama goes back to Central. Because that makes a lot of sense. So 
So this is all real-time flying? Yes, Alfred, welcome to the wonderful world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've only streamed this 10 times. Where have you been when I explained it the first two dozen times? Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator um, is the entire Earth satellite imaged. So we are in actual Costa Rica flying over the real time distance of Costa Rica. I'm also in real time, so local time in Costa Rica, we can confirm, is 4.24 p.m. local time with live weather as well. So it is just super overcast, low hanging clouds today. If you were to go outside in Costa Rica, you might see something resembling this. Obviously, it's not like it's tracking every single cloud and putting it in the right place, but in terms of just raw conditions, this is probably not inaccurate. It's a, it's a, it's on a slight delay, like a couple hour delay. And if you see any planes in the sky, those are real planes. Unless we're turning on multiplayer, then it'll be multiplayer. And then we'll have real planes and multiplayer together. So occasionally you'll look up, you'll see a plane, you can look up the actual flight path number and see where it came from, where it's going, and it tracks that in the video game. And then the AI air traffic control will communicate with them and you. So we are doing a real-time flight around the world, chat. We are taking the scenic tour. We are not going for speed. We're going for elegance. We're going to just see if something interests us. We're going to go check it out. That's pretty much it. Get a nice sample. Like, I'm going to remember that peninsula on Costa Rica. I may not remember the name of it, you know, but I'll remember it, and I'll remember how to find it again because I know it's going to be just north of MRTR. It's going to Sirena. The actual name of it is Punta Rinas in the Golfo de Nicoya. So that's what we're flying over right now. The water below us is the Golfo de Nicoya. The little peninsula we checked out is Punta Rinas. I probably won't, I never remember names, but it's nice to just repeat. Been wanting to go to Germany, guess I'm gonna get this game and go myself. Well, uh, what I'd recommend for anybody who wants to get it, yourself included, since I got you on the spot, Check it out on Game Pass first, if you got Game Pass. Uh, grab it there. If you don't got Game Pass, I would recommend a trial. This is a very resource-hungry game. And if you got a potato PC, you're probably going to find it doesn't run super well. So check it out first, and if you like it, then buy it. How long do you plan for this series to take? As long as it takes. The goal is to try to keep it interesting, keep doing new fun stuff, and kind of just drip-feeding different things to do during the flights different in-flight entertainment. We've got at least two special streams planned, uh, plus an art stream that we're going to be doing in the next month that's going to be part of the Around the World journey. So we got some events such as that planned. If you guys got some art, get that going, dude. Art stream coming via Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to chill, we're going to fly planes, and we're going to admire the talented people in the community. There's already a project going to Discord that Liuta is heading up for sort of not related to Flight Sim as much as it is Crusader Kings mixed with Crusader Kings X Pokemon. So if you're interested in drawing some po Pokemon that you make up, there's a whole thing going on. And I'd recommend looking at the pins. Is it pinned in art? Wait, what? Okay, so basically in Crusader Kings, I've been naming all my characters odd and first word that comes to my mind names. So a bunch of people are getting together. They're going to pick the, some of the different names that sound like Pokemon names. And based on the name, you're going to create your own Pokemon. But they're the names of my children in Crusader Kings. And it's going to be like this whole portfolio of different ones. It's pinned in art. There you go. Pinned in art. By the way, are you guys getting 60 FPS? Or like 50? What, what's your frame rate right now, chat? It looks a little crusty over here on the... Like, on my screen, it's fine. All of a sudden, on, the, on my other monitor, it looks a little crusty. 
So, uh, what does it look like to you guys now? All right, well, let me, uh, let me just look. I don't... I'll just look myself. Are you guys... Someone said not unwatchable. <laughs> what do you mean not unwatchable? All right, I'm looking around at what you see. You guys are getting like solid frames per second. What do you mean not unwatchable? This is exactly what I see. I thought, okay, because when I'm looking over on my monitor, my second monitor is getting like 10 frames per second, like egregious. You guys are getting basically the exact same thing I'm seeing, which is like 45 to 50 FPS. Uh, it's not unwatchable, but I've seen better. Okay, Microsoft Flight Sim streamer. Oh, here comes like technical chat online. Well, well. We all know and agree upon what not unwatchable means. We all know it means it's not quite shite, but you're approaching the boundary, beware. Okay, we all know that's what it means. You guys are gonna come at me like, well, he's, he's right, I am watching it, so it, if it was unwatchable, I wouldn't be watching it, check me. You all know that was not the intention. Streamer doesn't understand how words work. Oh, what's that? Some of that? Being a pedant? <laughs> no. Say it's not so. Trying to score brownie points on technicalities? Uh-huh. When I see comments like that, I imagine you're putting on your reading spectacles and busting out the Encyclopedia Britannica. And you've got a page number ready to cite about what the word unwatchable means. You know, you know how I know that's the worst kind of debater? It's because that describes me, okay? Because I'm speaking from experience. Because that's how I win arguments, too. So I, I call it when I see it. It takes one to know one. It's basically like, um, it's a, it's a really good tactic that everybody uses because it basically moves the goalposts to the point where we're not even arguing about the thing that was in dispute. We're now arguing about the definition of a word that's tangentially related to the actual, like, crux of the argument. That's right, Dorito. The definition of unwatchable means I physically can't watch it, which if that were true, then nobody would even comment on it because if it was unwatchable, by definition, you wouldn't be watching it and therefore would not be able to respond to the question. So... On the basis of that fact alone, your counter-arguments that it's not technically unwatchable are baseless because that's implied by the fact that you're watching it at all. Therefore, it could not have been what was meant by the original statement. By the way, I have no idea. I see the airport is here. Uh, we should just talk to ATC. Request, uh, flight following. Central America Center icon 4-2 is type icon no. 853 miles southeast of Mike Romeo Tango Romeo. K-1-2-3-4-5-6-7-8-9-10-11-12-13-14-15-16-17-18-19-20-21-22-23-24-25-26-27-28-29-30-31
cancel that. Select the runway. Do, um... You thought I was going to hit the water, didn't you? Nope. Uh, what heading are we right now? 282. Let's do 30. Announce full stop. I didn't announce it. Announce on final. Mike Romeo Tango Romeo traffic icon 42 is on a final runway tray zero to land. Okay, I don't think anybody's home. But I announced that I'm on final and it's kind of up to them. We're actually at a pretty good approach right now. It's really hard to see. But we're going to start slowing down. Wow, it is really hard to see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, trust in the 3D map from here. Dude, is that it? Is that it underneath me, dude? That's it underneath me. Okay. Visibility is real bad, chat. Real bad. Okay, we're gonna make a little loop. Let's grab landing lights on. And then come in for another approach. I can see the rain just gliding off the windshield. Oh, that's crazy. Have we landed in rain before? Maybe once? I got flaps at first position. Where is it, chat? Oh, that's it right there. Oh my god, I can't... Okay. That's it right there. I see it. Alright. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna... I'm tired of doing these, like, super steep approaches. Let's, uh, get some distance. A little bit of distance. He sees it, it's watchable. <laughs> Alright, now you just like. Now you just cheese it. I am not gonna hide the camera. I was going to just for the view. Still a nice view. Look at this wall of clouds, man. This looks like a. Uh... Like I'm about to attack Godzilla or something. Okay. Let's power down, throttle down, get a nice turn in. We got plenty of space, got plenty of room. I see the river again. I know the runway's to the right of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and flaps down the first leg. Start reducing speed. I think we're almost dead on. I can see it on my 3D map right there, so that's very helpful. Uh, I believe it's this little... Do you see this clearing? That's it right there. Okay. I got, I got eyes on. I'm gonna get landing gear down. See those wheels dropping? Gonna go full flaps. Back into the rain we go. We got one rogue tree directly <laughs> in front of the runway. Uh, so let's make sure we clear that 100%.
There we go. Dude, this is a pretty cool landing spot right here. Very gentle touchdown. Very light kiss on the cheek. Dead center like butter. We're just gonna coast all the way to the end. I assume, uh, parking? I see cars. Yeah, it looks like there's parking down here. That felt good. We had to come make a couple passes, but that's just because the visibility is so terrible. Kind of had to learn how to use the, the 3D map in order to see where the runway was. But we're here! Those of you in chat that have been patiently waiting here, thank you. Uh, I do have to back out to go to the lobby, but this is the fuel pump right here. So if we park kind of next to this. How close do you have to get in order to use the fuel pump? Well, we have to back out to the menu anyway. So let's just say I know where the fuel pump is. And we're good to go. There really wasn't a time to turn on taxi lights. Because we were just on the runway <laughs> until we weren't. I guess I would turn them on as soon as I got control of the craft. Okay. Let's back out and uh, get chat online. So chat, you can go ahead. I'll, I'll just tell you the settings as we load in. Okay. Okay. We're just gonna pop back out. Actually, I can just turn this off because it's super easy to do. So, we're gonna grab, turn off landing lights. All the above. Flaps up, just to reset the position. Fuel would probably be the last thing that we do. I assume we just, well, I'll just look at the checklist. There's only three things on it. Throttle down. Um, ignition off. Okay. And then, I think you just turn off fuel valve and electrical equipment. Okay, fuel valve off. Boom. That's a, this is technically not multiple flights. Uh, the only reason that we're separating this is to get chat online and get the community aspect going. So if you imagine this is part of the same flight, we're just getting some friends. Do you have any interesting simple recipes Air is going around the world and now you're going to that you'd recommend for people starting to cook for themselves? No. You don't want recipes from me. <laughs> I am a extremely lazy cook. My best listen, I only make good simple recipes if I'm cooking for other people. I really don't spend time cooking for myself. Uh, I'll usually buy a pound of beef and use it to just make tacos, sloppy joes, worst case hamburger helper, and um, maybe I'll buy some like hamburger patties. The most hands-on I'll get if I'm cooking solo is just like pork chops or chicken strips and then like get some seasonings. Usually like salt, pepper, paprika, um, garlic, onion, and a few other things. Maybe mustard, mustard powder. Taco rice? I can make rice, but um, I don't have any simple recipes. I think when someone says simple recipes, they mean more than just like a bag of powder in meat. Because <laughs> that's not a recipe, that's just follow the instructions on the back. Hi friends, what's up Princess Kitty? Uh, so those of you who want to jump in, this is where you're going to do it, okay? So we're going to go to first things first. You're going to zoom in to, or you could just search in the search bar, but it's here. MRTR, if you put that in the search box, it'll come up, set that as your departure. I'm gonna set just a ramp that we just, one of the ones we just parked at. And your arrival airport is going to be Sirena Station. 
but we're gonna set some waypoints. So starting from the back, just kind of set like a, a either a custom waypoint or just zoom in to like whatever this is. We're not actually gonna stop there, but I'm, we're gonna fly along the coast and just kind of do a low flight all the way down, okay? And then maybe just another spot right there. So the goal is start in Tambor and then kind of follow the coast of Costa Rica down to Sirena Station and then land. So if you take a straight line, you'll get there faster, but you won't see us. So we're going to be using the icon. Still, pretend it's, like I said, pretend it's the same flight that we just wouldn't have gotten up on. You have to be live weather in time, live traffic, live players, okay? So live players should automatically override weather in time. So these are mandatory. And then... Uh, to change server, I'm going to be on East USA. Okay. East USA. With all live settings. So we should only need... I'm keeping the line. Same plane. We should need less than 50% fuel. But I'm going to ditch my co-pilot again. Because I just don't need you. And it should be it. Live, live, west or East Coast USA. Have you cooked dinner for chat yet? Well, you missed both in-flight meals today, Alfred. I have. I cooked uh, for you guys twice. Midnight Droid, thank you for the three months of sub. Appreciate your prime. Thanks for hanging out. What version of Mega Pack? I don't know, the one from a week ago? The drag and drop one? I guess so, yeah. I'm back where we at? In Costa Rica! It looks like uh, the sun is going down ish. It should be. Well, it's probably just because it's so overcast. It's like orange hazy. It is only 5 p.m. local. What is... Sunset in Costa Rica chat is 5.34. Oh, okay. I thought we had a little bit more time. So uh, we kind of need to get in the air, chat. Sun is already going down. I thought we had to like 7.30. I guess it's the weird time zone nonsense. Okay, so we're gonna boot it up. I should be able to see you guys. We want battery on. Fuel valve on. Okay. And we're gonna get taxi light, strobe. I'm gonna turn landing on anyways, just because it'll help us see. I don't know when you turn nav on. I think now's probably good. Okay, then we want to get the ignition on. Throttle open, 2,000 RPM. Looks good. And then alternator light is out. Check, exterior lights on, power lever off. Good to go. <sighs> Luckily, the great thing about uh, jumping back into a flight with the Icon is that it's super easy to boot up even from cold start. I've watched Twitch for a long time, but never made an account until 2019. Well, that was a year ago. So what do you been, why do you wait so long to show up since then? I'm just kidding. Well, I see a couple people here. I see a lot of people at the other side of the runway. You know why? Because they don't know how to spawn at a parking space. So they're all pointing the wrong way. Good job, guys. They just clicked on the runway and said, Yep, that's the space. I want that one. I see you all. So we'll give you guys like a minute to get in. 
Hey, get over here. I totally forgot you were doing this. 11 hours is a proper slog. It's nothing lucky. We got plenty of gas left in the tank. All right, chat. Um, you guys, I like that these two are just sticking to their guns and aren't going to move. Here's what they're probably doing. He he, won't it be funny when he takes off and I take off and I'm in a 7-4710 and I'm going to go right at the camera and it's going to be scary and everybody in chat is going to megalol. Probably what it is. The good news is a 7-4710 cannot go... Uh, 70 to 80 knots and stay airborne. So they're going to have a real fun time. It's effectively impossible. Alright team, who's on my side? Why are there only two people over here? Oh, there's three. Okay, I know there's more of you that are loaded in. Are like 10 of you stacked on top of my... There's only one spot on the runway. There's at least... Oh, the jackasses are on that side. I see. Kairotobi, I bet their username is the same on Microsoft Flight Sim as it is in Twitch chat. You know what to do. They forgot that I could see them. Let's see, is is Prince 10B in chat? Yep. Got him. Soccer Axel just did the same thing and respawned. And we know you're here. You guys have the exact same username. I know who you are, but guess what? You will have uh, zero notoriety momentarily because it probably still lags when traffic nameplates are on. There. Also, it's just ugly to look at. All right, line up on me. You guys are taking forever. Like, I'm on the runway. Two of you are facing backwards. Uh, at least three of you are on the wrong runway at the other side of the strip. We've been here for five minutes. All right, you guys ready to go? We've been here for like 10 minutes, actually. How do I turn on uh, panel brightness? There we go. The runway isn't that big. No, the runway is not that big. It's not, no. My game crashed. Need to reload. Chad, did I or did I not ask everyone to get in the same plane? So what would uh, what would the people do if they can't see the funny LOLs in chat for the duration of the time that they're in the wrong plane? Hmm. What do you think? They don't they don't give me the satisfaction of flying with icons, so they don't get the satisfaction of seeing chat. What is he doing? Nothing. I just banned two people. Temporarily. You know, not permanently. Just for a little while. I, I just thought it was funny. All right, let's go. Jesus, stop whining. Mackie, you're whining about me. Hang on, did I accidentally time you out? I'm sorry, was that your friend? 
Aww. It's so cute. Defending strangers on the internet. Listen. If you come to my stream, you're here for the gameplay, you're here for the bitching, okay? But, they go hand in hand. Welcome to Etal Air. Can't have one without the other. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Here we go, everybody. It's on. Follow me. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. I love clicking on somebody's username and it's their first comment ever in the stream. And it's just counter bitching. That's my favorite. Nice to make your acquaintance. Is that a head tracker on your head? No, the camera just happens to turn when I turn my head. It's purely a coincidence, though. How many of you guys actually are here? I count five. I'll slow down and not go, like, max speed, so you guys can catch up. AI tracking, Pog. But yeah. I'm here in chat. Hello, useful idiot. What's up? Chat, if you don't, if, if you're new here and you're just in chat and you want your first comment um, to be a complaint, I'm just going to save you some time. You can just not type it, never come back, and I won't even notice you're gone. And you won't remember me. So it'll be mutual. One day you'll see me again in passing. Maybe Twitch will recommend it because you accidentally clicked on my stream once and now I'm in your feed. You'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. He was a bitch. And I'll be like, who are you? <laughs> but it's okay. Sometimes you gotta get it off your chest, I guess. But so do I. See? It's the same It's the same principle. The same principle that makes some rando in chat type, Jesus, stop whining, is the same principle that makes me complain about some other person on the internet I don't know. It's... You gotta look in the mirror, though. Like, I know what I am. You don't. Self-awareness is necessary. Because you're just like me. And you just don't realize it. <laughs> like ships in the night. We are the same. Hi, I'm new here and hate you. K, thanks. She's the worst. If I had an actual message count, it caps out at 999, so we'll never know. But you haven't hit double digits timeouts yet. <laughs> people arrive. Ooh, people leave. All right, I'm not even at full throttle right now. So if you're in an icon, you should have already caught up to me. Unless you guys have co-pilots, in which case it might be heavier. So I might slow down a little bit. Yeah, 
And also, I want to check um, two things. Number one, I don't want to crash into the water, so that'd be cool. Number two... We gotta cross... Listen, I can't afford to s slow down too much for you guys. Okay, or else we're not gonna make any time. Like, the sun's already setting. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and climb at full throttle. You were in my recommended playing Seven Days to Die, never watched it, clicked on it out of interest, stayed because you were tearing the Batman movies apart. I can't believe my Chris Nolan tirades netted me one new viewer. Maybe I we should talk about Batman some more, chat. Any more, like, uh, Chris Nolan fans out there? Real talk, uh, besides COVID, the reason I decided not to go see Tenet, even though I wanted to, is because I... If you saw, listen, there, there's been a theme in Chris Nolan movies, and it's been it's been happening since Inception. Inception was when it was the most calm, and now is when it's at the most exaggerated. And I would say that um, the last movie that he did, what was the Tom Hardy World War movie? It, he was it wasn't the Tom Hardy movie, but you know what I'm talking about, Dunkirk. Dunkirk was the last one where I was like, hmm, something's weird here, guys. And the thing is that and I looked it up after the movie. I was like, wow, it was really hard to hear the dialogue in this movie. Super difficult to tell what's being said without subtitles. And I was like, it must have been a theater problem because I saw it in IMAX and it was just really rumbly and loud and kind of just had to strain most of the movie to hear what's going on. And then I looked it up afterward to see if anybody else had the same problem, because I was like, by the way, nice formation flying right here from my party on the left. Um, I looked it up, and he actually had an interview, and it said that he mixes it like that on purpose, and he, he intentionally leaves certain dialogue ambiguous that you're not supposed to hear it, because he says it makes it more realistic, because the dialogue um, can be inferred based on their emotions, how the actor is conveying what they're supposed to be saying, combined with, like, the lip reading, combined with, like, the, the loudness of the action would obscure some of the dialogue naturally and make it harder to hear. And he was, like, kind of leaning into that. Now, I might have embellished some, so you may want to just go back and kind of reread whatever he said about it, but it was about Dunkirk specifically. So after I read that, since then I've kind of had in the back of my mind, like Chris Nolan is intentionally making his movies hard to hear. So when I'm thinking about Tenet, so this is true. Um, what movie? I think me and Jerma went to go see. It must have been Star Wars. That's the only movie I've been to the theater to see in like over a year. I think we saw Star Wars and like the last one. And they had a, they had a special segment for Tenet before the movie. It was like a seven minute long segment to the point where um, we leaned over and was like did we go to the wrong movie? <laughs> like it just, it started playing in the middle of nowhere. It was like uh, pre-movie trailer rolls and you're going by four minutes later you're still in this like tenant viewing. I was like wait a second. I thought this was was this Star, did we go in the Star Wars one? I don't know where we are right now. But we, I could not hear half of what was said in that, like, short tenant, uh, six-minute cutout. I had no idea, uh, what most of the dialogue was or most of what was going on. I was like, wow, it's well shot. It's, like, fun to watch. But I generally don't understand. So based on that and what I remember from reading about Dunkirk, I was just like, eh, I'll just wait till it comes out on home video. Even though it's not as good of an experience because it's made for IMAX... You know? It's just like, I don't feel like spending the whole movie wishing subtitles were on, and I'm the kind of person that always turns subtitles off. Anyways. Did any of you guys see Tenet? And if so, can you confirm or deny the thing I just said? I got an 11 gig patch to download. 
That is true. We did- they did just do a big patch. Also, I am struggling to keep this plane going straight, as you can probably tell. And it's not because I can't see. It's because the plane is just, like, doing its own thing. I'm kind of trying to climb above the clouds, but the whole point of this journey was to fly low and, like, see the landscape, you know? But I guess if we go up, we get a little bit of sun. It was indeed really hard to tell what people were saying. Like, I know it's hard to understand in general just because of the nature of the movie, Tenet, but I'm, I'm just talking about dialogue only. Hold on. Slow down. Alright, I just wanted to get above the clouds, dude, because I couldn't see. I'll slow down. I'm trying to fix my trim. Okay, so I watched a clip of Tenet. You're right, the music is really overbearing. Yeah, because that's kind of the thing. A lot of it is to do with music. Some of it's sound effects that obscures it. But it's like, okay, I get it. Mr. Nolan, you want it to sound more realistic. Not everybody always understands what somebody else says IRL, but they get the meaning. I get it. But you're also just pumping music over most of the action, and that's kind of one of the main factors stopping me from understanding. Those people IRL are not hearing the music I am, though. Going on movie rants is a common cause of plane crashes. No, trying to land on volcanoes is a common cause of plane crashes. Look how little my plane is. And then, only... I see two people. Actually, I see three people. If I go high enough over the clouds. I'm really not going very fast. I'm going like 80 knots, chat. You guys can catch up. I'm coming! Alright, uh, I'm gonna start going back down through the clouds and see if we can see any of the land. Because I wanted to fly around, the point was to kind of fly around the coast. That was the idea. I'm going to see if I can get underneath the clouds. <laughs> Suddenly, there are people. When you said slow down, I hope you meant, like, really slow down. Look at the sunset. Because we're not definitely not going to see it through this. 100%. Does he do it to hide the bad dialogue? I don't think so. I've never really noticed, like, dialogue bad. You're trying to go around the world in that? Rage. No. For now, yes. But what does the title say? Does it say Around the World in the Icon A5? Watching Tenet was kind of frustrating with how complicated the plot was. And not being able to hear the characters. Gotcha. By the way, whoever is in front of me, your landing gear is still down. But maybe that's a local thing on my screen. That may just be me. It'd be pretty funny if my landing gear was down, though. It's out just in case. That's true, we are flying through the fog right now, and uh, it could just be a mountain out of nowhere. <laughs> Thank you. 
There should be a sass emote. I think we've already got about 15 emotes of my face. What more do you need? Written out alphabetically with letters. Listen, chat. Uh, a nice couple cups of coffee, a good breakfast, and early start can only take you so long. If you think of, if you imagine that I'm at work, and you're 11 and a half hours into the stream, you're, you're not getting me at my best right now at 4.30 p.m., you know? We started at 5 o'clock this morning. So if you imagine it like that, I'm already like past lunch break a long time ago. Uh, dealing with the other people in the office that I don't want to deal with. See, that's, that's the thing, though. The European crew was like the nice, cool guys today. Now the filthy Americans jumping in at normal stream time at 4 o'clock. Those are the real people I gotta be careful of. On a Saturday. The group flight already kick off? It has, yes. We are in it right now. However, conditions are tough. Conditions are harsh. But, you know what? Dude. Conditions are harsh, but... We got a sunset. We still can see it. Alright, slow down a little bit or else I'm gonna crash. This is gonna be really embarrassing. It's cool seeing other people too. Alright, you guys should be able to, uh, hopefully see us and catch up at this point. I know there's at least two people next to me. I know there's at least three people next to me. One, two, three. We started with about ten. Um, I don't know where the rest of you went. And there goes the sun. One, two, I only see one icon. Only one of you is brave. Also, Kyra, you can <laughs> unban the uh, first two people, if indeed they still exist. <laughs> Hack of names. I can see some... Uh Lights way back there. Oh, speaking of lights. I guess I don't need landing or taxi on anymore. Watch out for this hill. Could be a doozy. 